Hi, everyone. Welcome to this Facebook Live update. It is Monday night, and we've got a lot to talk about as we have that potential for severe weather. It still remains. You might be thinking it's over and it's done, but, you know, we still have the threat. And, boy, they're really getting rocked in Springfield right now. Yeah, just to our north, um, 80 mile per hour winds. Yeah. Confirmed tornado. And uh, baseball size hail. Yeah, and that's too. all on the same line. It's about to move through here. Yeah, so let's get right to it and show you what we've got. First of all, uh, as we look at Mega Doppler, now we got the Mega Doppler loaded up for the ri uh, River Valley. This is the Fort Smith radar. Look at this multiple tornado warnings, a confirmed tornado, according to the National Weather Service out of Springfield. Now, of course, the radar doesn't look impressive, but I will show you on a different view what it looks like. I understand you want to go to bed and I totally get that. Uh, the problem is, is that these storms are going to be a little noisy. And as you try to go to bed, there's going to be a lot of lightning. In fact, you look at the activity, there is a lot of lightning with that, with those cells. Now, yes, the Southern end of the line is starting to weaken. So there's still is some uncertainty exactly where the severe weather potential will be. Maybe the river Valley doesn't have it, but why is Northwest Arkansas not seeing it? Because you know, it's just a little bit, it's a little bit early. You know, one of the most difficult things with severe weather forecasting is timing. And that's what everybody wants to know. What time does it move in? What time do the storms move in? And rightfully so. Of course you want to know the timing. That's exactly when, you, you know, you're planning your day. That is the main thing that impacts your lives is the timing. But the problem is, is that timing very difficult. Now, we're saying, what happened to the 7 to 9 o'clock? Well, why don't you go 6 out? Okay, you're drawing a line. That's good, Zach. You can do that. I'm going to do this on weather, too. Um, I'm going to show you what happened at the 7 to 9 time frame. When the energy lagged back, guess what? There were a ton of storms, including confirmed tornadoes, between the 7 to 9 time frame to our northwest. And so this is why we have that threat at the time and the time window that's available. So I'm going to bring this up on weather too. And so you're looking at a satellite and radar, Brian, uh, from six, seven o'clock. And yes, Northwest Arkansas did not have the timing for these storms. However, just to our Northwest, where that energy was supposed to be a little bit farther South, look at this. You've got at seven o'clock, you've got confirmed tornadoes that are happening a little bit after that right here, uh, tornado warnings. There's the confirmed tornado. There's the tornado damage that occurred uh, close to the Bartlesville area, multiple tornadoes. And that was all from about seven to nine. Yeah, oh, mother. Yeah. Okay. Confirmed large, extremely dangerous tornado. This is the type of environment that we have. I'm going to go to Mega Doppler here. So there it is. Let's switch radar, shall we? Yeah. Sure. Let's do that. Let's look at Springfield. We'll look at Springfield on Mega Doppler. And while that's loading up here, um, this is the type of environment. Uh, so what time is it going to be moving into northwest Arkansas? That is a great question. That timing is going to be approximately about midnight. In fact, Zach has an updated line track. And you see 1220 uh, Springdale, uh, Fayetteville, uh, maybe what time? How fast did you have those mo those storm motions? Fifty miles. Per okay, hour. yeah. Just 50. based on the southern extents. Okay. So we're really, really close to the radar. In fact, that's a 0. 0.2 degree tilt. Look at how they drop that tilt so low. Wow, on yeah. Mega Doppler. So, so there's a look at the line and the timing. Um, so the tornado threat is very real. In fact. I think the QLCS tornado threat really needs to be watched. So let's go to Mega Doppler here and take a look at what we've got with this cell. So Peyton's running Mega Doppler right on the leading edge, just to the north of Fair Grove. You can almost see the hook appendage. Let's go back a few minutes uh, in, in time frame. And that's that QLCS tornado potential. The low-level winds are very, very strong. And you can see those little appendages. And there's the energy. And another thing, too, is this is riding a boundary. Well, guess what? This boundary is also draped across northeast Oklahoma as well as northwest Arkansas. As these storms move in, we're going to have to really watch. Um, and so, yeah, Peyton's running, uh, obviously, all this stuff with, uh, with Megadop. We're looking at multiple things. But uh, it's kind of tough to see exactly where this tornado is. Why don't we go up a tilt? Because that's only looking at 800 feet above the ground uh so we're going up in tilts and 
Yeah, you don't see a CC drop. That's interesting. You do a I was going to say, I think you slightly see one. Oh, right there. there. there yeah, go. right there. And it could have been a, yeah, zoom in a little bit on that for that storm in Fair, Fair Grove. So it's probably up here. Yep. At the top of the warning. Well, no, there's another one right here. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Watch oh, that move. But then there's another one right here. Yeah. This will move to the northeast. It's that. Wow, it moved pretty quick. Yeah. I wonder if that top TCE is tail. Yeah, there's no velocity couplet. Now that's the base velocity. Did we set the storm motion from the warning? Yeah. It's only 34 good. knots? Okay. Yeah, there it is. So large and extremely dangerous tornado, according to the, the report here from Mega Doppler. No, it's not radar indicated. If we hover over it, this means uh, uh, confirmed. Uh, it, it's the only source is radar confirmed. So. It's radar confirmed, so it's yeah. a CC drop. Yeah. Interesting. So that's the kind of environment that we've got. Going back to Max 1, I'm going to take control over this here if we can real fast. Yeah, it's just so looking at that. this is what I want to show you. Our high temperatures today were still very, very warm. 77 in Bentonville, Fayetteville, 80 degrees for the high in um, the uh, River Valley. Look at that. That is extremely warm. Our dew point's now in the mid-60s. We've been there the, really the whole afternoon. And then you'll see on, uh, again, how heat and cooling mega dump, we got those storms. So, first of all, a couple of things. We can actually see this boundary that's dropping south. See this green line on the screen? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the reflectivity so you can see that boundary a yeah, little bit just, better. That's what I was just saying, that boundary dropping south. Boundary dropping south right along the leading edge of the line. That's going to be moving into, in fact, you can see the way that this line is starting to orient itself straight north to south. This means tornado potential could be ramping up in terms of QLCS tornado potential. Almost exactly what we have with a drop in the reflectivity core on the backside of the storm. It's just now moving over the radar. Wouldn't be surprised if a severe thunderstorm warning gets issued for this storm as it makes its way closer to Delaware County. Um, and when we look at the velocity signature, you're going to notice here that uh, there's definitely some rotations along the leading edge of this line. So um, you see one down here just to the north of Henrietta. Uh, you also see some other areas of circulation. If we look at the radar from uh, there you go. So you really see right here. 129 gate to gate. How about that, uh, Peyton? Wow. 101 miles an hour. 101 mile an hour velocity. That's up there. Yeah. I might have hit that almost exactly where. Let's see here. Go to INX and again and S SGF and go to the uh, INX sweep. Or excuse me, SRX. So we're looking at different radar sources. So 129 gate to gate. That is uh, that could be prompting tornado potential right there. Now keep in mind this is elevated. This is uh, high up, but it shows that circulation that's starting to ramp up, which is the beginning signs of this cell, as that line is 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 looking pretty healthy, mm -hmm. and that's getting closer and closer. So southern end of the line might be might be dying off because it looks like it's uh, kind of cold pool dominated. So the northern end of the line is what we'll really need to watch. So let's track this northern end of the line as it makes its way northeast. And over the next hour, uh, there you go, call cord uh, at about midnight. So Bella Vista a little after midnight, Bentonville a little after midnight. So those are the areas that we really have to watch with this cell. Crawford County, by interesting enough, it's uh, not as much, and uh, I think the energy is lagging back. So we're going to show you all that. We're going to kind of dive into all that activity. Looks like Josh is in the <laughs> middle of uh, of chasing. So I thought he was going to bed, but he actually just continued to <laughs> can continue to pass north. Next, a second ago, I was like, Josh is in Southwest Missouri, and Anderson. Is he actually? <laughs> yeah, you see him. Uh, no, that's oh not God. what you're hearing because I'll tell you, believe me, you're going to hear quite a bit of activity, Brittany. So we're getting asking a question. I mean, here's the deal, Brittany. It's not over yet, okay? It's not over yet. And I'm going to show you why it's not over yet um, because we still have the energy off to the west. 
we have very strong low level winds. We do have the instability, and not only that, the low level instability will be creeping in as we go into the overnight hours, as I'll demonstrate here, looking at uh, several things in terms of the storm prediction center risk, as well as uh, uh, other things here. So um, we also have that tornado watch that's been extended until 3 a.m. for southwest Missouri. Um, but uh, yes, the energy is 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 lacking over northwest Arkansas at the moment. So let's dive into this. Let's check out some of the mesoanalysis, and we'll look at if these storms are going to strengthen or if they are, in fact, going to die off. So let's check it out as we look at uh, the mesoanalysis. So first of all, we're going to start off with what's called the supercell composite. I'm going to shrink this down a little bit. So you can see what exactly we're looking at. Supercell composite, and over time, storms moving in, it still remains over our area. So the supercell composite is definitely there. If we look at when we're talking about QLCS tornado potential, 50 knots to 60 knots in the lowest uh, zero to three kilometers, that's some serious wind shear. Those are some very, very strong winds. And so all that we've got to continue to watch, essentially. Actually, yeah. A little bit of that cap and the cap is uh, starting to weaken, too. All right. So there's a look at the, 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 the low-level southwesterly flow. So that's one of the ingredients for QLCS tornado potential. If that line runs from north to south, which is what it's doing in Springfield, Missouri, and look at that, 60, 50 knots. That's exactly what we have over our environment. The only difference is we don't have the storms right now. Let's take a look at the zero to three kilometer cape. So the zero to three kilometer cape is definitely in place over southwest Missouri. But watch what happens over time. My goodness, that ramps up dramatically at about midnight, which is exactly when these storms come overhead. So zero to three kilometer cape around 100, 150 kind of just like what we saw with the Springfield tornado uh, and uh, also with uh, the Springdale tornado as things really ramped up along with the um, the uh, tornado that happened at uh, uh, Cincinnati. All that energy is swinging in and the instability is cranking up as we start to get the upper level support. So there's the zero to three kilometer uh, cape. And if we look at the vorticity, that's coming in. We even have some difluence aloft. So all those ingredients are starting to come to fruition. And I know you're thinking, oh, I heard, what did I eat? I don't even know. I said something. But look at this. All those blue lines that you see on the screen, that's the vorticity at the surface. And it's just to the west of the low-level cape. If we dodge a bullet, I will be very thankful. And I will be... Uh, Let's just say elated that we did not get hammered tonight uh, due to this due to the storm potential, and then you could see it drop off. But there's a pretty dramatic increase and then a pretty dramatic decrease. Well, guess what? Typical Northwest Arkansas. Let's take a look at some of the probabilities here on the significant tornado potential. So it shows up. We looked at the significant tornado effective layer. You can see it kind of ramping up right over Northwest Arkansas. Uh, let's look at the violent tornado parameter. So that shows over south central Missouri. And um, they don't have any severe thunderstorm warnings on that line. So it, we'll continue to watch that and see if the, the winds are going to increase. So if we look at, uh, again, surface based Cape, one of the things we are lacking, even though southwest Missouri is having the same energy, they barely have any instability. And remember, they were capped according to the uh, sounding. We'll take a look at that sounding too. But the shear is very impressive. And that's what we're talking about. So let's look at the zero to one kilometer shear. We're looking at 300. Uh, so that's zero to one, uh, three kilometer shear. We look at the zero to three kilometer and it's, wow, look at that, 450 over us. And then you look at the um, more, the effective storm relative elicity. It's a little less. That's just because the storms aren't in place. Once the storms start moving in, all that energy starts swinging in. So another thing that we like to look at is called the comp map, the composite map. And so we go to forecast tools. We scroll all the way down to the composite map. This will give you the reasoning why we didn't see any storm activity throughout the day. 
So it's all about this energy lagging back. And we mentioned that positively tilted troughs are slower. Probably should have accounted for that in the forecast, Zach and Peyton and Josh and, and Wyatt. But one of the things is you never know if a piece of energy will come in, a Baja blast that will fire off thunderstorms a little bit farther um, farther southeast. So all that will have to be watched. We've got more energy that's swinging in. You look at the vertical velocities, and uh, right now pretty quiet over northwest Arkansas, but we still have a lot of jet stream energy. So you look at the Cape, we're still – very much unstable and uh, that energy swinging in hey i hope it dies off i hope we're capped and i hope it kills the storms but i'm just saying as far as meteorologically as we represented uh we're not done yet so we'll continue to watch that anything you guys want to add uh i don't know if you may be interested in this dan but uh if you look at the observed sounding in spring uh yeah springfield I did want to look at that. Uh, and then now, you know, we were kind of talking about the cap, me and Josh were. Uh, that didn't, yeah. So the cap's not super strong. Let me show you what I was talking about here. Let me bring that up. Um, so we'll go back to here, add this to the stage. So here's a look at the Springfield sounding. Um, and you'll see here, there's a look at the shear. Uh, shear very much in line. Critical angle at about 100. And the low-level shear is very intense. Mm -hmm. So it, we're talking, well, not very intense, but sufficient. We're talking maybe a 15-knot low-level mm -hmm. shear vector in the lowest um, 150 meters. But then there's that little cape robber. So here's what happens. You have an air parcel that's rising at this point, and it starts to cool, and at this point becomes saturated. When it becomes saturated, it's going to rise moist adiabatically because it's uh, well, saturated. It's not dry adiabatically anymore. And now you're running into this. This is a layer of the cap. Well, that cap was in place, but then the storms came in and killed that. And you can see all of the upper level energy and the instability. This is the cape for thunderstorms. Notice, too, that even though the analogs, this is a unique experience where the analogs really don't have it clear cut in textbook. So. Um, also, too, another thing is you're looking at this line here on high heating cooling mega Doppler, and I see you're looking at that, Zach. Notice how it appears. Whoops. Well, new mesoscale scale discussion. Oh, sorry. I was just about to mention that. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Well, I pointed out to you to let it well, that's good. No yeah, worries. I was about to mention that. Yeah. Well, we're going to get to that and see what that says. So that is over northwest Arkansas. Let's see what happens here. The threat or the probably damaging winds. Yeah, the meso spin ups. Uh, a severe threat continues across uh, several or severe thunderstorm launch. 70. Damaging wind gusts are the main threat. The tornado cannot be ruled out. Okay. So, um, as you can see, Timothy, River Valley not getting anything yet. And uh, let's take this off here. This is what we were talking about. So. Here's a look at the uh, mesoscale discussion, and you'll notice that covers everything east of the line. So we're not done yet, uh, like I said, and we still have a lot of energy. You just can't, you just can't shut it down until the line comes through. Trust me, as a storm chaser, as a meteorologist, if you say we're done and the storms are over before the line comes through, you can really nip yourself in the butt. It always happens like that. Yeah. It happened on October 21st, 2019. Thankfully, I didn't say it on the air, but I was thinking it in my mind. Um, and that wasn't necessarily the case. So that was the, of course, 31.4-mile tornado that was on the ground in Benton County. You learn something new every day, and you learn something new with all these different storms. So so here's a look at uh, – we'll look at the severe thunderstorm watch, and we'll break that down for you. But um, – Cincinnati, Ohio, okay for tonight. Yes, Cincinnati, Ohio is fine, but this energy will be becoming more neutral and negative tilt, which, by the way, will be doing a lot more for uh, the amount of energy that swings in. And they already have a moderate risk hatched area for tornadoes at 15% above climatology. It's got a new tornado We'll get wash. to that. Okay, really? so here's a look at uh, adding to the stage. This is the... Severe weather threat for the mesoscale discussion. Look at the low-level flow. So what that is is a zero to uh, 
850, 850 millibar winds out of the southwest at 50 and four. Well, I don't see 50. I see 40 knots. I see 35. I see 30. And then you'll notice here that uh, we'd still have instability. We've got theta E that shows out ahead of that line. Um, so there's your uh, 2Z 850 millibar theta E and then MRMS uh, radar that shows that line. And there's going to be these little kinks in the line. That's what we got to watch. And look at that near show. That is coming right towards Benton County. So if we take a look here. Who was that issued? What is that tornado watch for? Oh, are they extended Barry and McDonald County till 3 o'clock in the morning. It's still southwest Missouri. MD. The MD came out like 15 minutes ago. Yeah. I know. I, they're, they're not having Benton County in there, and yet that's where the most dangerous portion of the line is coming in, is to Benton County. And they've done that about three times tonight. Yeah. We're going to get like an April Fool's, and then they finally add them to it. They're going to add them to it. I just yeah, don't I understand so that. True. Yeah. <laughs> they're just waiting until next day. I think the line is holding together pretty solid. Yeah. I mean, this. all right. High terrain in Benton County. That's right. Uh, should I park the whip in the garage? <laughs> well, you're going to be out storm chasing anyways. Oh, wait. That's a different Zachary Hall. Really? really? There's another Zachary Hall. <laughs> How about that? Unless he just changed his profile. I don't know. So when can Siloam go to bed? Well, here's the deal. So there's the risk. You can see the Storm Prediction Center showing that. Let me go back to Mega Doppler and give you an idea of what we have ahead of us. Uh, so I'm going to remove this from the stream. There's Holly and Cooling. Mega Doppler will bring that up full. And there's a one-hour track. Here's what we've got. Yeah, one-hour track. I'm going to put lightning on. You're going to see it's going to be a noisy one tonight, folks. A lot of lightning with these storms. Yeah, do the lightning counter. Yeah. Let's do that. Uh, I didn't make it for nothing. But I don't know if we have it on this. Uh, we do. It's at the very bottom of the internet. There, there we do. go. And sorry for all the dog owners out there or cat owners. I don't know how they. Uh, that's a lot it. of lightning. Is this, is this with the radar or is this with uh, the composite radar? It looks like with the composite, right? Yeah. So there you go. Currently 1,000 in the in the window 1275 strikes over the last uh was that 15 minutes yep yep 611 positive strikes and 660 b <laughs> uh there we go 664 <laughs> negative strikes <laughs> um so so here's the deal guys it's not over and I know some of you are doubters, and I get that. So are you saying the biggest flop of 2024? Uh-huh. Brendan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Brendan Chuchi. <laughs> I'm going to call you out. We ain't done yet. <laughs> here's, what, here's a look at Megadot. This will probably go severe here pretty soon, to be honest with you. Yeah. That's what and that's, that, that's, that's starting to rotate here. Josh and I are talking right now. This looks like uh, tornado Where's potential he right here. Not yet, not yet, but it's the beginning stages of it. It's got that look, folks. And I'm not trying to, you know, make you nervous or anything. Um, I'll track these storms. We'll continue to monitor them. Uh, so let's see, storm track here. There's a look at the storm track. Is that really the way that it's headed? East, northeast? Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little bit more to the north. Of course, there's no warning yet with that cell. But uh, but look at the hail. Hail's the threat's increasing along the line. The energy's swinging in, and we still have the potential for some storms. So, um, and then you look at the watch. Okay, you look at the watch, and you'll notice that. Well, April Fools. <laughs> Benton County isn't even included. Nor is Carroll County. It's kind of odd. Though. I just, I'm they really confused there. about that. Yeah. Like, I, what? 
the whole thing has been confusing since yeah. the MD that hinted at the tornado risk, and then that significantly downplayed, and then they didn't include. That just doesn't. Th th this cell looks like it's increasing, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Peyton? I think it's holding really solid, maybe slightly increasing. Yeah. But uh, definitely holding together really solid. Yeah, the DBZ is coming up. The whole night's been confusing. And and welcome to Positively Tilted Troughs. Yep. I don't know about Gorilla Hail because it's just not an isolated cell. No. Mm. All right. So let's break this down for you. Here's the bottom line. we got a line of storms that's moving in. We've got 50 to 60 knots in the zero to three kilometer range, which is, by the way, 30 is sufficient for QLCS tornado potential if it lines up. So that's double sufficient of what we have. Zero to three kilometer cape is ramping up dramatically as this storm comes in. And uh, just because it's at midnight, in fact, we got a TBS now that's showing up on how heating, cooling, mega Doppler. Is it a false trip? I don't know. Let's see. It looks like it's balanced to me, and the low-level shear that's coming in is definitely going to be something to watch. Classic, typical QLCS oh, tornado yeah. potential. Here we go. Moving into Delaware County. Let's go ahead and start getting ready. Turn on the lights here. Yeah. Benton County yeah. with no watch. Yeah. No severe storm warning yet. Nope. Which is interesting. Well, All right, well, I'm going to be turning this. Let me see if weather services said anything about. They're thinking about nothing. It's also, uh, it's also interacting with that boundary, too. Don't forget about that. So we've got interaction with the boundary. We've got a circulation that's starting to show up. Let's put a track on this. On, uh, on this activity. And so just to, by the way, this looks like as of now, it's going to be passing north of Siloam Springs. So we're going to put a track on this. It's, it's really tough to see on this graphic. Oh, look at that southern tip of the line that's starting to rotate too. I'm going to bring this up. So this is weather one. There's the southern tip of the line that's starting to ramp up. I just turned the lightning off so you can see more. Yeah, locations. yeah, sounds great. What radar are you? Oh, that is Fort Smith. I thought so. So Fort Smith is a little higher up, but remember, those mesovortices develop aloft first. They don't develop at the surface. So the mesovortices develop aloft, which is why on uh, Mega Doppler we've got it on the Fort Smith radar, and it's not it's not perpendicular. There he is. And so the Weather Service just said small couplets developing southeast of Maisie, and also north of Maisie. As well, they're starting to pick up on those. Yep. Oh, more of those de aliasing issues. Yeah. Looks like they're about to add hmm. a little bit more to the chat. They're typing. Oh, wow. That circulation is really starting to ramp up. So here's the deal yeah. Delaware County, yeah. this is going to be happening here that we're going to have a tornado potential for. Delaware County, yeah. and uh, that's starting to crank up a little bit. Should we update that live weather blog? Look at that circulation right there. Classic QLCS. And, and we know the ingredients are there. We got southwesterly flow. We got zero to three kilometer cape that's ramping up. We got all this stuff that's happening. And um, let me go, while we're here, and take a look at the storms in the river valley. We're not done yet either, but I, I do think that the energy is a little bit north of the river valley. So storm activity, unless it ramps up dramatically, river valley is probably going to miss it, which, by the way, I will say the HRRR did a pretty good job. Or wait, one of the models did. I can't remember which one. The name three kilometer did good on at least. You updated that. Uh, time. At no point did the do you want me to embed yeah, the stream? Update the blog and embed the stream. Yeah. How do I do that? Oh, wow. That circulation is really tightening up, and it is just classic. So let me show you what we're looking at here, folks. What, what We've got on Heil Heating Cooling Mega Doppler. Huh? 
What link do I use? Uh, use the Facebook Live link. Or you can use the Okta. Use the NWA um, homepage. There it is. Severe thunderstorm warning. Just getting issued now. Yep. Uh, it includes Salem Springs. Why is this spreading? I'm just tapping on Steam Live. With the weather live stream link? Yeah. You have to do it twice. Yeah, oh, twice. It's yeah. already linked on there. Yeah. For JBU students, that alert was real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's not a tornado warning. It's a severe thunderstorm warning. Uh, probably should have a tornado possible tag. We'll see what exactly what it what it has. We'll bring up INX here, and we'll take a look. Radar indicated 60 mile an hour winds and uh, less than quarter size hail. But uh, yeah, uh, well they got less than uh, penny and dime size, but uh, I think that's starting to increase as well. They didn't put a tornado possible tag, but they said intense thunderstorm winds can briefly produce tornadoes and da wind damage. Although a tornado is not immediately likely, it's best to move into an interior room. Yeah. I'm telling you this right now. This environment is going to produce spin-ups dramatically quickly. Um, zero to three kilometer low level bulk shear is at 60 knots. We already went through that. We already looked at all that stuff. And the line is starting to line up and orient itself with almost perpendicular on that low-level shear. So once again, Mega Doppler showing the north end of that circulation, another circulation that's popping up southwest of Locust Grove. Now, one of the things we're going to be looking for is a descending reflectivity core. What that is is on the southwest side of the circulation or the couplet, which is near Salina, and south and west or south and east of Shoto, um, that right there could be a descending reflectivity core. So let me do a track on these and take a look at what, what we got here. But it is going to be coming into Benton County. Um, I'm getting on this storm. So Josh Rugger is on this storm as we yep. continue to, to watch that. Now, I don't like how that that rotation is starting to show up kind of co-located as, as definitely a solid couplet. If we look at the radar, you're going to see bright greens and bright reds that are kind of right next to each other. This is an indication that this is starting to ramp up. So you've got the rotation. It hasn't quite reached uh, you know, the surface yet, but we've got the descending reflectivity core behind it. We've got the QLCS tornado potential. We also have nothing in Benton County, which is you can expect there's going to be something that happens. So the weather service says that the, they're going to extend the launch. You said that rotation was a legit attempt, but it looks like it's starting to recycle. They're mm -hmm. watching it. Yeah. Do you know like why the weather channel is showing that? Because it's computer models. And you know what computer models are? Trash. They are. Horrible. They're awful. I mean, there's got to be something done about this Especially because the weather channel it only uses like long range models. Yeah. So here's what we've got. Let's see what let's see what a computer model has. This is why I'm not even showing you the future track. Uh, so that's got a storm coming in, and then that's it. So I guess that's doing okay. And then additional storms popping up as well. So there's going to be multiple storms. So let's get to a storm track. That's what you guys want to know. That's what we're going to do here. I'm going to load up uh, Severe Weather 1 on this. Do you guys like Severe Weather 1? Yep. Severe Weather 1? Yeah. Okay. You should probably put up one and two. Yep, I am. Mean, I'm going to put that in Weather 2. Let's go ahead and get the iPad connected. Doesn't take long for these circulations to pop up, and I'm telling you, they're going to move quick too. <laughs> they're going to move really fast. I bet you the lightning is uh, pretty tremendous. We should check out our Weatherbug network cameras from Siloam here. It's five, right? It's six now. Uh, no, no. Uh, I'm excuse, excuse me. Yeah. Let me go to the. It's five is weather three. Yeah, weather three mega Doppler is six. Oh. Yep, presets and point that west. So we're going to bring that up here in a second. Oh, wow. Circulation ramping up again. All right. Here we go. OK. 
connecting on weather two. We have the correct pallets, right? Yep, got the correct yep. pallets loaded. Perfect. Yeah, iPad ready. All right, so here's the circulation. Here's the descending reflectivity core. I know this is still elevated. Uh, and if we look at the velocity image from, from Tulsa, you're not going to see the low-level circulation yet. That's because it's in the process of doing what in the world? Looks like the HRRR died out, which is fine with me. Trash anyways. All those models are just garbage. They did, but some of them didn't even show storms coming in. So, see if it continues on the next storm. All right. So there's Salina. So we're, are we looking at different tilts? No, it's 0.5. Okay, so 0.5. So a lot of a lot of spinning in the mid levels that are happening on top of that. Yeah, I'm gonna do a storm track on this too. So let's go to INX. So on the leading edge of the line, here's what we're going to do. Okay. Uh, still 50 miles an hour. So let's do a line. We already have that going 50. I got to zoom out a little bit so we can get the full full size of the line. And then we're going to zoom out here and show this on weather one. Okay, so bringing up weather one, stand by. Here we go on weather one. That's exactly what we're on. Let's draw this storm track and move it eastward. So this is the most dangerous portion of the line. And as it tracks, we'll do it over the next hour and a half to give you an idea exactly where this is headed. I'm going to take that a little bit farther north, too. So here you've got your areas that are going to be impacted. So I zoom in a little more, we'll get some a little more data here. So there you see the areas that are going to be impacted. Gravit coming in at just after midnight. Bentonville at 12.30. Rogers at 12.37. 12.53 a.m. in Bush. All right. So if we pan over here, you can get to see those areas that are impacted. But we do have a severe thunderstorm warning, meaning the storm is starting to ramp up. Circulation's really showing up There's on another Mega area Doppler. just north of that circulation. There's yeah. Near the, near, no, near the warning just inside the polygon. Right here. It's babbing up. Yeah. I'm also kind of eyeing one uh, just to the... Now, let's, let's do this. Let's switch radars. We're a little high, um, so I want to switch to Tulsa. We can start to see lightning off in the distance, too. So TBS is showing up on the, uh, on the radar from... Fort Smith. But let's see what it looks like now that the storm has moved east of the center of circulation. We can see. Yeah, you can see why they don't have there's the, the low level shear is not ramping up yet. So we are looking at mid-level rotation, which is the start of a meso uh, cyclone or a meso uh, basically meso vortex. But when you look at the low level shear, it's not really evident at the moment, which is why they haven't uh, prompted tornado potential. So this is the leading edge along the line. We're going to be watching this and see what happens if a, if a circulation can ramp up. So that's the Tulsa radar, and that kind of shows you how that really drops off. Your pegs look interesting. Yeah, that's what I've been watching. You got a little, bit of, and you got a little bit of a couplet. Yeah, take me into there. Yeah. Yep, right there, right on the southern end. Yep, right there is a little circulation. I was telling Josh about that. I was saying it's looking like there's a... All those little areas can have little spins in the atmosphere. So, yeah. See if you can see on the... Yeah, I don't think that is because it, it just kind of pops up. A little uh, sus. Looks like it. Yeah. So let's check out Decatur, our weather bug network camera from Decatur. We're looking off to the west. See if we can start catching some lightning. It's about to get pretty noisy. Uh, Van Buren, I don't know. The Van Buren may not get any storms at all. So, Josh, and Gravis. Okay. So the circulation in the low levels is not evident. Mid-level, mezzo, very impressive. 
which means it'll probably have some pretty incredible structure. So the only thing that's preventing it from tornadoing is essentially the orientation of the line. It's kind of more northeast to southwest, and if it's northwest to southeast, that would make it a little more favorable. Still a little ways off to catch lightning. Um, Pea Ridge is going to be in the path of this storm. Whether it holds together and remains severe, I think it will. Well, this kind of be fun for my folks. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the alias again. That velocity. All right. So continuing to watch that. So uh, let's see what the weather service, Stephen Pilt says. Um, hail risk for northwest Arkansas. We're looking at smaller hail. We're not going to be really large hail, hatched area hail. I don't think we're going to see that, Kayla. So northwest Arkansas is looking at storms in the next half hour. So let me um, let me take you through this here oh on God. what's happening. And also like disconnect this like dog. Did it die again? Yes. Yeah, it's the KVM at, 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 in the uh, rack room. That's what's causing it. It's the worst. 1129, uh, the weather service said surface winds in far eastern Oklahoma gusting up, gusting to near 20 from the south. That combined with the winds aloft is creating favorable wind profiles for rotating storms. Mm -hmm. Just not quite transitioning down to the surface yet. Mid levels rotating. Not necessarily as, as intense in the low levels, but uh, we'll see as that continues to potentially ramp up. So let's go to weather two. Here's a track of the storm so you know exactly what you can expect. So there's a look at the storm activity as we do have a severe thunderstorm warning that's just to the west of uh, Delaware County right now. But the warning does include Delaware County. But there's a track for the storm. Fayetteville fizzle, possibly. But as you'll see, additional storms are still remaining to the southwest. So although that line not as intense, but maybe a little bit of a circulation developing there. Surface winds gusting near 20. Yeah, let's see here what we got. Up one panel here real fast. Yeah. So a little bit on the leading edge there. Not really seeing anything there. Like you said, pegs is showing up, mm -hmm. but that's kind of weakened so far. Still some sizable hail with that cell, about quarter size, maybe a little under quarter size. So, yeah, let's go to spectrum width and see along the line here. Look at all the attenuation, really heavy rain. There's the leading edge of the line right there. So mm -hmm. let's go to see it right there. Mm -hmm. There's the spectrum width. And uh, I'm looking at stuff behind the scenes. So that is balanced. There's no doubt about that. Is Ford out of it? Yeah, you can see that the track of those storms in the Fort Worth area, uh, Fort Smith area, is not really, is not really great. Uh, so there's a different additional cells southwest, but I don't know. It's going to be a noisy one, though. That's for sure. Will it come to fruition in terms of uh, tornado potential? We'll see. We'll see. We know the QLCS conditions are definitely in place. Another thing, too, is don't forget that zero to one kilometer cape, not really in place yet, but it moves overhead here within the next within the next half hour. Yeah, within the next half hour, that zero to three kilometer cape will start ramping up. Cedarville will get some of the storm in northwest uh, Crawford County. But um, not as much. Yeah. So zero to three kilometer cable really ramps up over. It's I trending know. up to 125. Yeah. That's what I was showing earlier. So we've got to continue to watch. See, the, we're in a unique area where we have the radar beam in different locations. So I'm going to show you what it looks like here from that is so much attenuation. That's odd. Yeah. I don't know why that's doing that. That's clearly not a good signal right there. If we look at INX, look at the INX sweep. 
maybe a little bit that's starting to develop, and you can kind of see that right in this area right here, just southeast of Spavanaugh. Like also maybe areas. maybe a little bit of a circulation and a little bit of a circulation right there. So three circulations that are very minor but still possible along the leading edge of that line, just yeah. starting to cross into western Delaware County. Yeah, I'm still watching that southern one, that severe thunderstorm warning there. Yeah. The one that's northwest of Tahlequah. Yeah, the yeah. past two uh, radar scans have uh, Ooh, there's a little nub. More. You see that yeah, northeast of Wagner? Yeah, I was like, it's picked up a tad bit on the, the past two runs on the velocity. Mm -hmm. Same with the spectrum width. That velocity. Well, well you know, most weather app models barely even showed any storms at all in in the northeast Oklahoma area, uh, southeast of I-44. So, I don't know, Brian. We'll see what happens. But if we do look at the radar source from uh, you can definitely see mid-level circulation so we're continuing to watch this to see if it does ramp up into a low level circulation what does miami oklahoma look like for the rest of the night so miami is going to get impacted by this line so let's go back to the tulsa sweep now why does okay there's a problem with it when you click and it, and it goes to the uh, palette item, you know, like um, the uh, query. Mm -hmm. Peyton? Yeah. Well, some stuff doesn't have a query. Look at, take a look at that area uh, near the beach. It looks like there's a couplet starting to come together right there because the last scan has a little bit. I can see it. Yeah. Reds. I can see it. Up. Yep. That's that circulation, and that's from INX. So let's see what we have here. Still Southwest Missouri. Hey, oh, look at what we got here. So Benton County, Carroll County until 1 a.m. So there's the new watch for that. Oh, thank you for the for the tie. It's going to be the lightning tie. At the moment. You know, the tornado potential is possible. Okay, so let me show you some circulations here that we're watching. And we'll kind of fine-tune this as we like pinpoint. Fort Smith. Yeah, Fort Smith is quite a ways up on the radar beam, though. We want to look at Tulsa. So here's the circulation that's southwest of Pegs. And you'll notice here green colors and red colors. So red is rain that's moving away from the radar, and the green is moving towards, and there it is dying off. Here's another circulation that's trying to develop. This is west of Kansas, right along the leading edge. It kind of ramps up, and then it dies off. Well, hopefully that remains the case. Uh, and then we got this circulation that's starting to pop up to the north of OK. So uh, that is not as intense, but right along the leading edge of those, of those uh, storms, that's where you get those little reflectivity knobs. Doesn't look like much, but those could be some little brief spin ups, especially with the zero to three kilometer instability that are cranking up. I know, cross your fingers for a fizzle, fizzle, fizzle. That'd be nice. I'll say that one year leech, reflectivity wise, appears to be the most impressive little spin up area just because you have that notch along yeah. the leading edge. And that one kind of just spurred up in the last two scans. So hopefully that starts to. Wind down. But. Wind down. That's going to be taking it almost due east. It's kind of like east-southeast a little bit. Yeah. So there's that little bit of a circulation showing up right in here. So if we're tracking it, it's just to the west of Leach. I wonder if Josh is on 412. He's not, is he? He's in Grab It. Yeah. Uh, tell him to get south. Tell him to go south on 59. I hope they die. Yeah, little small rotation, Shayla, that's coming uh, towards Siloam. We'll see if it holds together, but it's right on the leading edge of the line in southwestern Delaware County. Now you can see that little reflectivity nub. Mm -hmm. Let's see what's happening. Still showing up. We'll set the storm motion from the warning, see if it changes. Not really a whole lot there. Still a little bit of a, a gust, a surge in the winds. So it could just be some strong, gusty winds, Shayla. Let me take your comment off the board so you can see what we're looking at. It's 
right here, just to the west of Rocky Ford and Leach. If we look at that area, uh, not super intense and impressive, but you can see those little spins along the leading edge. Now, I really think when those zero three kilometer Cape values crank up, that's when, as it's moving in, that's when things could get interesting. So we'll see what happens. A lot of people watching late at night, and rightfully so. There's going to be a lot more people waking up to here pretty soon. Well, first of all, the watch just probably set off the weather radios for those that have weather radios. Two areas of lightning that are showing up, no doubt. Um, let me bring up some weather cameras, see if we can start seeing some lightning off in the distance. So Salem Springs, we should start seeing this. Uh, what is the quality question? No, 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 no. No tornado warning that's issued at, as of now. It's a severe thunderstorm warning and a severe thunderstorm yeah, watch. Sure. Got a fresh track on weather one. Okay. Yeah. What? I don't see uh, a lot of lightning. Uh, off in the distance so weather one a new fresh track provided by zach gilday moving east at 50 is that correct gotcha. okay. yep yep maximum gusts just a little over 60 miles an hour so there's that upper level um energy that's swinging in and you can see the severe thunderstorm watch until midnight that does include southeast and south central delaware county and northwestern and northern adair county it does not include benton and washington county but uh wouldn't be surprised if that changes here still that little area yeah josh is dropping uh, down the sideline okay good because it's along the leading edge of that line that we're going to be watching yeah it's another little area that area near lost city looks like it's still hanging Where's on it? mm -hmm. Not going away, but it's also not looking more like an immediate. Yeah, it's not super ramping up, is it? No, no, it's just holding on. So got circulation west of Kansas. Yep. Yep. So we're looking at. Yep. Yeah, there's just to the west of Oaks, and then one southwest of that one. He's almost in Gentry. All right. So one of the things that could be be preventing this tornado potential is the. The zero to three kilometer cape is lacking, which is what what that's doing is that's creating a capped environment in the lowest because it's not really in place yet. The zero to three kilometer cap uh, cape, but boy does it ramp up as those storms come in. So I uh, wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing some increase in intensity of the uh, circulations. I mean, it is increasing just from one scan to. Yep. The last scan of this one. These are the ones that aren't very clear in textbook. <laughs> they just they just flat out aren't. Uh, but anytime you see those reflectivity knobs, they almost look like a radar artifact. This little like mini hook that you see right here. That looks like a radar artifact, but in fact, it's really not. Um, and that's what I found out a lot with QLCS uh, tornado potential. So we got Josh Rugger that's headed west on that from Siloam. Uh, let's go to uh, – let's look at that Siloam Springs weather bug network camera again. It's really wild is I don't see a whole lot of lightning, and that's weird because it's close enough to be seeing that lightning. I'm seeing it in the, a few occasional flashes uh, on the Pete Rich camera, but it's very hard to tell. Hmm. I mean, that is a live image. We can see the lights flashing. Yeah. All right. It's not very often, but it is occasional. Oh, that's starting to ramp up, actually. Which one is the, the one? Rocky, Rocky Ford. <laughs> see, it's kind of dropping southeast, yeah, it's right which turning. is unique. Right, right turning. Turn which is not favorable for the zero to three kilometer bulk shear vector. It, it needs to be moving east. That southwestern one also making a right turn. That's wild. Yeah. It looks like they're both doing that. Especially guy. Uh, yep. You can kind of see a dime maybe. Yep. 
on the last few images. So I just saw a flash yeah, of lightning. That little inf that little inflow notch also does not look as impressive on the reflectivity. Here's a look at uh, how heat and cooling mega Doppler. And again, we got the velocity image. This is the circulation that's kind of moving almost southeast, to be honest with you. You can see it right there on the leading edge. Just a small little low-level circulation, 2,000 feet aloft. Uh, from the radar in Tulsa, and there you go. When it moved southeast, it's kind of falling apart. So that would be great news. However, I want to show you this. This is a descending reflectivity core right here. You see that? Oh, yeah. That's going to be something to watch, which could end up eventually producing in the center part of Delaware County something interesting. Oh yeah, that's or definitely just, yeah, definitely a descending level. reflectivity core. So that can prompt mesoscale um, rotation. Also, it looks like this might be balanced too, to be honest with you, all the way down to Muskogee. What we mean by balanced is the shear yeah. is kind of right along the leading edge of the line, whereas you have cold pool um, dominance farther south. So. We'll have to watch the areas of the line from basically Delaware County all the way down to uh, Muskogee and Chicota. And I'll take the lightning off here. Yeah, it looks like that circulation has died. It looks like northwest of the Rocky Ford, there's an area trying to pop up. I see that. And it just popped right up there. the last scan. Yep. Doing what this one did a second ago when it formed. All right, let's go ahead and we'll just kind of fire off some questions here. Wind picked up in the fort. Is it possible anywhere in that track? Uh, so we don't really have anything to track right now, just a giant storm. We'll, we can bring up a new track on weather one. I think uh, got Zach that's going to be putting that up here real quick. Winds here in Bella Vista are calm. Humidity at 90%. Golly, Jeez. dew point 64, temperature 67. So that's pretty pretty warm and humid. Uh, pressure, 29.62. So people feeling the pressure <laughs> from this system for sure. Uh, sometimes these comments are, are a little bit later, 11.42, about five minutes ago. Don't know, Ava, what you want to know. I so want to know. Um, why is none of this on TV? Because uh, the threat is uh, still just a little west. Delaware County really isn't even in our weather coverage area. I'll be honest with you, it's not in our is not in our designated market area. So once it starts moving into Benton County, that's when we'll be covering it. Because uh, Delaware County people can see we are doing coverage on social media, and then we're going to be doing weather coverage live on TV. So that's why. Uh, how's it looking for JBU? Well, JBU is looking a lot better than the test tornado warning that went out earlier <laughs> today. <laughs> uh, that view is ominous. But, I, but what's weird is it's just not a lot of lightning. We well, you know the lightning's out there. Maybe not a whole lot of cloud to ground lightning. So I wonder how long that severe thunderstorm warning will last. Yeah. That is true. Clouds are so low and the air is hazy, so that may be blocking some of the light show. No thunder or lightning here in, in Gentry either. <laughs> That's You should do that anyways, uh, Chase. You don't even need the wind to blow that away. You should always eat the kids' Easter candy, <laughs> especially the peeps. Okay, cool. Pre appreciate that, Bradley. Never stop chasing. That's right. You're going to see probably a pretty good shelf cloud. Uh, we still have tornadoes in southwest Missouri. We're kind of watching this cell, but look at this. Uh, actually, that, that southwest Missouri storms weaken. That new tornado warning is in central Missouri County. It's not so. aligned, but that one near Rocky Ford just wants to keep pulling there's, on. There's a new track, right? Yep. You, uh, let me... Uh... Move it. Kind of shifted east a little bit. Still right around midnight, crossing the state line, 
and then moving into I-49 corridor around 1230. If we look at how heating, cooling, mega Doppler, there's the tornado warning. It's in central Lebanon, uh, basically central Missouri, just to the east of Lebanon. So there's that little cell. Yeah, I don't know. That's pretty much gone. You see it by Oaks. Is that yeah. what you're looking at right there? It's like, there's like just a like little bit. Like it just won't go away. It just won't go away, but it's not. Not it's not not immediate. super impressive. Are no. at, uh, now there is something person. down here by uh, Holbert that shows a little bit more, so we'll have to watch that as well. Are y'all looking at first tilt? Yep. Is it warm? First tilt from Tulsa. Yeah. Zero point five. I'm just kind of watching the second tilt to see if there's any. Yeah. That's kind of one that I'm watching. Yeah. Exactly. So all right. So well, the service just updated. The threat with this storm will be damaging winds uh, up to 60, 70 miles an hour. Just their map of where what they think the other guidance was. So it looks like some of the data is kind of lack. You know, some of the uh, ingredients are lacking, which is good. Um, and hopefully that remains the case because it would be nice if we go through this entire storm as it comes in, even though the low level instability will be increasing. And this storm doesn't do anything except brings us some rain. Uh, Madison County is it going to miss? It's possible. But remember that we still have that potential for, for storms. Now, the gravit camera is down. Um, fortunately, a uh, network issue with the state and trying to get that camera online. I can't get anybody to fix it. Uh because your weather kid, Kira, is tripping and won't go to sleep. So you're, it's going to be a noisy one here in, a, in about, uh, what, a half hour, yeah. I'd say, as it starts to roll in. So here's what we can do. Uh, Zach and Peyton and everyone else, I'm going to go tell Josh that uh, I'm going to get ready for an on-air cut-in. All right, Josh. <laughs> <is listening. laughs> okay. That's why he's – all right. Best director. That's perfect. So he's listening. He yelled yeah. uh, out, out loud. So let me know when, uh, Josh, well, we're going to be in a uh, national break if we've got him. And if we got him, I'll take him on KNWA. That way I can do coverage on TV, give you guys a heads up, even though this storm is going to be moving in. We're not interrupting your programming, uh, your late night talk shows, you know, because there's nothing super threatening at this point. You got a right. marginal severe storm. That's coming in, and we finally got some lightning that's showing up. But not anymore. <laughs> not now anymore. The camera's on. Well, we'll see. I'm going to leave it on there for here for a little bit. Here we go. I hear uh, the IFB coming on. You let me know. All right. So what caused this system to bust? All right. So, Adam, this is what the deal is. We had a lot of energy. There's no doubt about that. But the energy was lagging back. It's it's those lovely positively tilted troughs. It's just like the energy is just, just not flinging out, essentially. It's just kind of holding back. And when it does, then your storms don't develop. And uh, that's, that's what I've been mentioning all along is I just am concerned about positively tilted troughs. Yeah. They're always slower than you expect. Doesn't mean they can't bring significant severe weather. They're just typically always slower than you expect. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what this system does when it gets to South Central Indiana. Let's show you some of that too real quick. I'm going to keep that track up, Zach. We're not going to mess with that. But I am going to go to Weather 2, and we're going to take a look at the Storm Prediction Center outlook uh, for areas to the north. and. Yeah, it's been a tricky, severe weather season. There's just no doubt about that. Um, cloud cover forecast for the eclipse is going to be tricky as well. Let me get to weather two here and show you. There's the moderate risk day two convective outlook. Yes, the energy flings east, and there's the uh, storm activity. Moisture surge is definitely uh, very abundant. Let's go ahead and we'll look at the individual threats. There's the day two tornado potential, so this is a – Moderate risk driven by tornado potential. Mm -hmm. um, damaging wind potentials there and the hail potentials there. So it's all focused over Ohio. 
And for us, they had a 10% hatch, which is the kiss of death. That means... I means sometimes not, nothing happens. Mm-hmm. But then again, there was 10% for Joplin. So yeah. it's not always a kiss of death. There we go. It's a severe thunderstorm warning now, and I bet you this is for Benton County. So we'll take a look here. Yep, it is. All right. So time to go on the air, and we'll give people the, head, people the heads up. Now we got people that are starting to wake up and wondering, oh, what's going on? Flip so, radars or so what? Flip radars? Yeah, we'll flip Spare radars. I think so. Yeah, that'll work. Midnight 07.53. So let me give you the information on this severe thunderstorm warning. Uh, there it is for Benton County, and it goes until 12.45, so nearly 50 minutes or so. Um, and that does include basically almost entire Benton County. So if we pull off the information of the warning, there you see the outline of the warning. It also includes northern Washington County as well. Circulation's definitely showing up uh, aloft, but uh, man, just not necessarily showing up at all um, as it's coming in. So it's interesting. I was just, yeah. I, I don't understand that. Pretty weird. Yeah. Weird. But yet there's like so much intracaw intra lightning, but why isn't it showing up? So let's go to Decatur here. Maybe we can get something, maybe get a view of this narrative here from Decatur. There's some line there. Yeah. So this is looking west, due west from Decatur. So we got every 30 minutes until 1.30. All right. All right. So we got the ticker information at the bottom with the severe thunderstorm warning, letting you know exactly what the impacts are. And we're going to be doing a live weather update on TV here at uh, approximately... Uh, 1207.53. Now, you can see the TVS that's showing up, but remember, this is 6,000 feet aloft. So this is right at the level, and it's also parallel to the beam. So a lot of times, mesovortices don't show up very well um, 6,000 feet in par- per- parallel to the beam. Right. Um, so that's something to watch. So make sure we're watching the INX radar. Um, Josh and uh, Wyatt for that. Weather Service saying uh, they put a special weather statement for West Central Washington County for the potential for 50 mile an hour winds. So even if you're not in the warning, there's going to be some gusty winds there too. All right. So, yeah, right along the leading edge of that line, I mean, there's definitely some mid level rotation. I, w- I want to continue to watch this. Uh, on our Weatherbug Network camera to see if there's any possibility of seeing. Is that a still image? It is. Okay. It's a still image. Trash. Of Decatur? Yes. No? No, it is on ours. Oh, it is on the yeah. on OBS. Yeah, good old OBS. Those things don't work very well. So here's Decatur right here. Looking west. Let's see if we can get any view of any type of, uh, you know, sh- structure with this as it comes in. It's clear sky in Centerton a couple hours ago. Occasional lightning flashes in the distance. Nothing crazy. Feels great outside, though. Yeah, it feels definitely warm. <laughs> Don't have to worry about that being very cool. I was saying just earlier with uh, how humid it felt up there, I was like, it feels like Galveston. Yeah. Feels like the coast head towards Decatur. There's a new little area from INX. Okay. There's another area near Oaks, and then there's another one southwest of that. Yeah. So there's several areas that are starting to to show uh, spin up potential. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring up a uh, radar that has our Weatherbug Network camera on it. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look here at Mega Doppler. There's the area of um, concern that's coming into northwestern Benton County. I'm going to set up my uh, my live cut in too. So if you want to take over Mega Doppler real quick while I'm doing weather one, that'll yeah. be that'll be perfect here. Yeah. So the areas of concern we are watching. It's of course just some very very broad rotation entering uh, or crossing the state line. 
And again, some strong wins along this little part of the line. You can see in the velocity couplet. But again, going to be pretty noisy. Turn on the lightning here. Yeah, there's a good amount of lightning. It's kind of weakened the lightning a little bit. It is weakening, though, yeah. a little bit. It is still staying uh, fairly strong. Strong enough to prompt severe noise. thunderstorm potential. So, yes. Yeah. We're going to do a one panel, by the way. Yeah, I get ready to, to switch over. Um, yeah. When we when we do the cut, when we do our cut in, yeah, we'll do a one panel. But again, seeing this uh, kind of descending reflectivity core to the left, and uh, going to see a surge in the winds here, kind of along this line. Keep an eye out on those areas. Yeah. Let's see if we start to get something. All right. So there's the warning. The thunderstorm warning. Here's the rotation, too. You see, starting to strengthen a little bit far northwest Benton County. While that Again, rotation looks intense, remember that's 6,000 yes, feet. I know. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. This yeah. is very broad, mid level rotation. Huh. What? Okay. Uh, Abby had a good uh, comment on there. It says, a next gen call, but didn't say the message. Just press uh just say press to hear again and then no message but the call did happen that's good to know okay so i'll i'll uh, get with them tomorrow for sure and we'll let them know because we do have recorded messages hey destiny no doubt sometimes divine intervention can uh can play a role so there's no doubt about that all right so there's a look at uh, severe thunderstorm warning until 1201. We're still going here. We're going to put a track on this. I'm going to loop this. Put mega Doppler. Yeah. I don't know. I don't. Uh, it looks like we'll get some lightning and thunder and some activity, but mm -hmm. starting to doubt if it really will. It looks like it's kind of more cold pool dominated again. So. Like I, yeah, that area that was moving into Benton County with that very broad oh, rotation. I think it is starting to weaken a little bit. Doesn't look as impressive. Looks like it's almost. Yeah, right that's here. right. This area, almost one of the u most unique areas for yeah, severe weather see. forecasting. Josh, where are you looking? It'll be okay. It'll go away. Also, so yeah. yeah. There you go. So, well, like what area? Uh, okay, so we're going to do a track uh, here. The leading edge moving into Benton County. And what what exactly were you looking at there, Peyton? This so is uh, on the right side is yeah, Southwest City. Liquid yeah. hail differential reflectivity. It kind of shows what's actually falling. This is near pea-sized hail, if that. So that's what's actually falling. Yeah, five minutes. Go ahead and put the base velocity on there. I'm good. I'm golden. Gone. This readout, 27 miles an hour. And again, that's at six to seven thousand feet. Some areas are a little bit stronger, fifty-six Whoa. miles an hour. Super so. Again, fairly yeah. high up. Starting to notice a little bit. Uh, River Valley's got rotation. storms yeah. coming. River Valley's got storms coming. Yeah. So it's this is been... why you're not done yet. Um, more energy swinging in, and those yeah, storms already severe. You can see that swinging really fast. It doesn't even look like it's anything that it's severe. Mm -hmm. How is that cell going? Thunder. Yeah. It's in that area. Right, that so really now need the let's radar. take a look at the watches and warnings. So we got all that. There's the severe thunderstorm launch. Yeah, that one doesn't look like it. How long is that cut in, Josh? No, well, I mean, but how long is the national break? Probably two and a half. Okay. Well, <laughs> that's what, that's how long we'll go. Thank you. Yeah, you nailed it. I look at rundowns now. Oh, you can see the two and a half minutes? No, I just know how long our breaks are. Okay. I wonder if they issued that one in McAllister uh, downstream for that one that's near Springtown. Yeah, I think edge. so. Is that That's going to be a hailer, isn't it? Is that a splitter? What? Um, so are you on the Fort Smith radar? Yeah. Look at the storm southwest of Fort Smith. 
So, and there's two warnings on it. Yeah, so, uh, just do one panel. The other panel is very confusing on that velocity image. Yeah, so there's two cells right there. And then they, oh yeah, it is a split. Look at yeah. that. That's going to be a big hail producer too. All right, so slow down with the radar movement here a little bit, just on Mega Doppler, not as not as sudden movements. But there's the there's the left mover that's near McAllister. So if you put that into motion, you're going to see that that as it moves northeast, that is a that looks like a split, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. And the splits are what make the biggest uh, hail potential. So I'm going to put that on the storm track. Are we getting close, sir? All right. Now, here's my question. Why does that look so bad on weather one? In terms of the reflectivity, it's not impressive on um, radar scope. Oh, uh, because it's this cell. Yeah, it's anticipating it's this that cell. Yeah. Nobody is on it now. But this is what it looks like on here too. There's barely any DVZ wow. to it. But that oh, is that's intense. Yeah, that's a big hail producer. Okay, well we'll take a look at that. Sixty-eight DVZ. Holy cow! That blew up. How tall is it? Zoom back out. Uh, I'm gonna start off in. Uh, I'll start off in the weather lab. Yep. Josh is headed east on 412. Headed east. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah! Look at that when that short wave came through. Whoa. It's an explosion. You what? Man. Yeah. Yeah. Still some energy moving in. And we'll bring up the risk. So the latest risk still has that enhanced risk. Okay. All right. Very severe. Under PCR. Okay. Oh yeah. Flip, flip that over to PCR. All right. I've won two meteorologists Dan Stoff in the weather lab. Also have Zach Gilday, Peyton Langford, along with Wyatt Puck and Josh Weisel, weather interns. We're all tracking storms here. We've been doing that on social media, on Facebook Live, as well as uh, X, and you can check all that out. Let's take a look here, first of all, at a severe thunderstorm warning that has been issued. That does include Benton County, and it goes until 1245. So there's the information on the screen you can see. A lot of thunderstorm activity now just starting to nudge into the Bella Vista area as well as uh, the western side of Bella Vista and grab it. Good news is, is that we're not looking at any types of circulations that are prompting tornado potential. There could be some gusty winds along this storm along with some cloud to ground lightning. And we do have uh, some of our weather bug network cameras that are showing uh, definitely a lot of lightning off to the west on our weather three source. We'll bring that up here shortly if we can, but as we check out how heat and cooling mega Doppler, here's that thunderstorm that is severe. So we'll take a look at the information. This is for 60 mile an hour winds. Hail size is a little under quarter size. So we have less than one inch size hail. You'll notice that until 1245, that severe thunderstorm warning does include the I-49 corridor, Bentonville, Springdale, just a little bit north of Fayetteville, but there are additional storms that are moving in. So. There's the energy pushing through. It just doesn't have the right ingredients, it appears, as the low-level instability is lacking for tornado potential. We're thankful for that. But it, definitely some rain coming your way, some gusty winds, also quite a bit of lightning data. There's a look at live Doppler radar. You can see that energy shifting east. And if we track this storm, 
1226 coming into the Bentonville area, Springdale 1243, and just about one o'clock in the morning for Eureka Springs. So again, live Doppler radar showing that activity popping up. There were some confirmed tornadoes in Southwest Missouri. But another thing that we're going to be watching are some isolated cells that are going to be pushing into the River Valley. We do have that severe thunderstorm watch that goes in the area until one o'clock in the morning, possibly extending that. And it does include Benton as well as uh, Carroll County that's been added recently to that watch. Now, the, it looks like everything has been slowing down with this system as the energy is swinging in. But as you'll see here, when we zoom out on the wider view, after we check out these storms that are rolling into the river valley, this will be one that's going to be moving northeast that will have large hail potential. And we'll be tracking that on social media. So here comes the energy. You can definitely see that upper level support swinging through. And there is a look at that moderate risk that's been canceled to the west. And we still have that enhanced risk over our area. We'll be checking out those weather bug network cameras on our social media stream. So check it out live on knwa.com. All right, back up, and we're back up on our uh, camera. So let's let's bring up some of these cameras here as we bring up weather three, Peyton, and uh, Decatur has a really good view yeah. of some rain, some lightning, some Pretty strong winds. Yeah, yeah. All so right, we can get so, that up. So here we go on the Decatur Weather Bug Network Ooh. camera. Ooh. All right, let me go to weather yeah. one. Yeah. yeah, I don't know why that's why that's frozen, yeah. but uh, here we go. Now nah, we're finally starting to see some lightning. Cooper also. Cooper Elementary was not showing anything. Really? Yep. Uh, I'm watching it here. A little lightning. That's about it. Not what I'm looking at right now. Oh, never mind. What the? I'm now on the okay. Oh, I can see the flashes behind the camera because they're lighting up the building in the foreground. So that's kind of interesting for mm. sure. Oh, yeah, here we'll hold on. Bring that up full. You can definitely see some fairly strong winds. I'm going to bring up Weather 3 source. So we, we got that full screen. Yeah, let's right. go ahead and we'll bring this up in a different source. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Uh, Never mind. I'm too sure. That may be the uh, camera. That might that might be the end of right the there. Decatur City Hall camera. Yeah. Yep. Oh, it's back. Nope. Still nope. going. Woo. Oh, that was uh, pretty close. <laughs> Definitely some lightning associated with that. Yeah, see, that's so high up, though, those yeah. those areas of circulation. How does that look from Tulsa's radar? It's a little bit something, but it's not like immediate. It's not great. Yeah. By the way, Peyton, sorry about that. Uh, I just realized that it redirected me to Decatur, so. Okay, so here's what we can do. I'm gonna bring up um, another, bring up another camera here. I'm gonna be able to do this over here. So let me bring up uh, our Bentonville. So this is gonna be Bentonville full right here. And that's gonna have a good view looking to the west. So let's see if we see any type of base with this cell. Bring up our weather camera. Obviously, the microphone's not picking up, so you guys talk over in there. Yeah, so we're looking at Bentonville, Fulbright camera looking west. Definitely seeing some lightning monitoring line of storms making its way in. Taking a mega Doppler and show you that storm right now. So you're looking at a two panel of the reflectivity and the storm relative velocity. Definitely seeing um, potential area of circulation there. Yeah, again, this is still 6,500 feet in the air. So uh, not, not at the surface, but uh, definitely showing some signs. Still some worth watching. Circulation. Go ahead and switch it to uh, on the settings. Um, yeah, go to uh, Black Magic on the line two. Mic'd up on the board, so now everybody can talk, oh, and okay, then nice. that way, if I'm at the wall, you guys can still hear me. Nice, cool. Whoa, 
watching uh some let more. us know if you guys can hear us at all uh there might be another circulation um west of keefton let's see here you can see it on mega doppler right now we're, we're this is just it. northeast of shakota yeah, yeah um steven p was talking about it he was talking about that mm -hmm. okay i do see that yep I also see too the uh, circulation that's showing up that's right over to Cater. So that's that yeah. upper level spin in the atmosphere that is uh, that we got to watch as well. So I'm looking at that from the INX radar. So I've got INX pulled up in here. I think that line in Benton County is starting to bow. Yeah, and with that bowing, uh, Stephen Pilsen saying too. Yeah. yeah, with that bowing, that's where you're going to see some stronger winds. Yeah, we should probably look at base velocity and see what these winds are at right now. So we're going to check Ooh. out the how strong the winds are and the wind gusts. And uh, what I'll be able to do is we'll be able to bring up. So if you looks like. Now we're at base velocity. Uh, 40 to 50. Okay. Some places seen higher. But again, this is this is way above the surface. Yeah. How about that little? Yeah. There's definitely some turbulence in the atmosphere. You can you can definitely mm -hmm. see that. A lot of little uh just weak, very broad spins that aren't really going down to the surface. Mm -mm. But again, just a bunch of little spins. Are you on weather two or weather one right now? Mega Doppler on your source. Mega Doppler. Uh let's see here. Okay. That's that is weather. Okay, you're fine. That's good. You're on, if you're on Mega Doppler regular, then I'm gonna bring this up on weather one. Okay, perfect. What just happened? Um, I no longer have velocity. <laughs> Something wrong with the Fort Smith radar, Dan. No. Velocity is just like no more. Really? Like here it is. Uh -huh. and there it goes. Well, it's just there a product that's updating. I think uh, so, it's a good updating. Really slow. See if there's any type of structure at all. Welcome to Northwest Arkansas, where you got storms at night and you have absolutely no structure. It's a storm chaser's nightmare. <laughs> it's like it's just not the best place to storm chase. That's for sure. Is Josh seeing anything right now? I mean, he would have a better visual than what I've got. Let me look at where he is. No, yeah, let's see. Okay, I can definitely see the base. So if we bring up weather two, why don't you bring up weather two on the source, uh, Zach? Got it up. Okay, so this is Fulbright Junior High. So we can bring up all these little weather bug network cameras. Uh, so there's Fulbright. Take a look at a different camera here at the time. Uh, what about Bella Vista? Let's see if we got a, some lightning that's popping up here. Josh is still on 412, just west of Tawny Town. Well, I can tell you this. This isn't anywhere close to as electrified as uh, those storms on October of 2019. So not even close. Got to report to Bella Vista winds. Highly electrified. Yeah? 31? So that's under severe potential. Uh, you might be on the leading edge, and the, and the strongest winds haven't come through yet. We have to clean this weather. <laughs> Look at this iPad, how dirty it is. I can't even see anything. Oh, yeah. yeah. I want to wipe. You got some back there. Yeah. I'm going to clean this up here. Seeing some raindrops on that we, Bella Vista camera. We might have some uh, questions. You know, with I know people are wondering about individual cities, but. Uh, yeah, I want to just get up the Siloam camera. Here yeah. See what. Yeah. Allen Elementary. Definitely seeing a good amount of lightning. I mean, this is uh, this is on the low. Oh, that was yeah. You can see that. There you go. You can pull it up. Lowering there. Um, you got it on weather. Uh, Cooper Elementary here. Look Cooper. at that off in the distance. That looks a little suspect. Yeah. And if you look at the radar here, right on the leading edge of the line, there is a little bit of a circulation there. Let's keep up uh, Bella Vista. Because this is coming right towards Cooper Elementary. And look at this uh, little bit of a lowering here. Uh, 
Can yeah, you see that? The left side of the screen. On the left side of the screen. Let me move this weather mm -hmm. bug camera. Do we have that up on our source? Okay, here we go. Oh, I got it. I can I can control it. Okay. Oh man. It's right here. See how that cloud is extending down a little bit? Yeah. On the left hand side. A little bit of a lowering there. Let's see. Okay, we'll keep watching that. Let me know what you guys are experiencing. That's something interesting. You can definitely see the uh, feature right on the leading edge, right down in here. Yeah, we're not up on weather three. Correct. Oh, well, that's because we're here. Yeah, so let's do this. There we go. So this is weather three. No. Nope. That is just this. Is, this is the leading edge of that storm. So what we're looking at here on Mega Doppler, a ways up, but uh, this is the leading edge of the line, and so definitely shows an increase in lightning activity. And there was a little bit of a lowering, I think, but it's starting to die off as it as it comes through. That's why those cameras are so important. Yeah. Out in the field. Especially because the radar beam can't see super low levels. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you can see those those winds. They're coming out of the north. Look at those horizontal rain curtains, though. Mm -hmm. Those horizontal rain curtains are interesting because you can see how fast the winds are. So definitely some uh, rain that's coming down. Wind came through Centerton upwards of about thirty miles an hour. See if those winds start increasing a little bit because that's coming right towards Bella Vista. Whoa, it's really picking up. Yep. Hopefully I can spray that with <laughs> with spray away. Yeah. I think yeah. this line is starting to orient itself more no south, south west to northeast. Okay. No, what did she say? Oh. What's going on here? You are doing that with the iPad. Oh, yeah. Okay. My bad. Stand by. Ready? Just uh, cleaning the iPad. Go to weather one. Sorry about that. <laughs> that was bad timing. Yeah. I didn't think that was going to be pushing. I, I didn't think so either. Yeah, but it did. So a little bit. Check on that other circulation just northeast of Shakota. Eh, it's still pretty broad. Man, the winds of Bella Vista, Cooper Elementary. We'll pop that back up. Now, that Those is some strong to watch winds. By yeah. Bragg. Yes. Yeah, that's all I was saying. Just northeast of Shakota. Yeah. It's kind of the bigger town. Radar, um, the the Portsmouth yeah. radar site is showing about 68 mile an hour winds near Sand Hills. So that's like some interesting that. rotation near Silent Springs. Everything's showing up high. as rotation on yes, uh, Fort again. Smith's radar. It's interesting. It shows up on Fort Smith's radar, and then there's it a, doesn't at all on anything else. There's a TDS signature, but uh, again, you're still 4,700 feet up in the atmosphere. We can take a look at that camera as well. Yeah, let's do that. I'm going to bring up uh, Salome Springs. So this is going to be on weather two. Let's leave it on weather two. Should I spin it around? Because it's east of uh, that. Yeah, spin it around. All right. Yeah, we're going to do that. Oh, look at the flagpole. I can see it moving pretty good. Yeah. See the sheets of rain. Yeah, those rain curtains, those horizontal rain curtains. You know, it's interesting. Didn't the model show very little rain, or did they actually have rain? They had uh, a little over half an inch, close okay. to two thirds. Well, okay. They had a lot of, yeah, they had that. Well, I'm glad we went uh, 80% after midnight. Yeah. Because that's what we were saying is that this line would, would kind of hold on a little bit the, longer. The line is starting to slow down a tad. And... Mm hmm. Yeah, I don't know if that's uh, 
you look at that and you kind of see it, but it's not necessarily – wow, look at those winds whipping up, though. They're yeah. all out in the north, too. It's on the backside of the storm. Mm. So you're looking at Allen Elementary, our weather bug network camera. Still got to watch this circulation. I think the Bingo Square camera just left us. Did it? No, so. no. Let's see here. Or at least on my end, it, there's a flash and that's it. It's gone. Yep, it's gone. Yeah, yep. Oh, man. Lovely. Maybe it'll come back. Hope so. Well, Let's look at Fulbright here. See what we got from Fulbright. Radar, please. Yes, we do need to look at a radar. So here's what I'm going to do. We're going to bring it up on uh, weather two. Okay. So here's a look at the radar. Severe thunderstorm warning still remains until 1245. Oh, did you update that track for me? Zach? Yeah. Okay. But I think that might be a little bit. I think this line is starting to slow down to, orient yeah. itself some uh it is kind of an interesting of circulation yeah it is in Salem springs kind of got a descending reflectivity core just yeah, a little it does, bit to the west by call cord yep um Sorry, i mean I here's this was up i know I was zooming let's in see what fast. nws chat says it's interesting how the radar i'm going to look at the radar from inx because SRX has shown circulations along the oh, line man. all night. Asylum Springs. Yeah. Elementary. Flagpole getting whipped around. Yeah, that's the RFD. That could be an RFD that's developing. Yes. I'll show you what we're looking at here. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to bring this up here. Hold on just a sec, Zach. Yeah, yeah I can see INX, and I saw a little bit. Yeah. Not that that X that is an inflow. Um, that's inflow right there mm -hmm. into the storm because that's going oh that's going towards. So yeah. that's going to be inflow on the leading edge of that line. New severe thunderstorm warning for the River Valley. Uh, let's bring that up on weather. RFD one. is a rear flank downdraft. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't, didn't preface that. This storm's pretty intense, uh, and it's actually got a circulation that needs to be watched. Uh, that's north of Weber's Falls. That's going to be moving through Sequoia, as well as uh, parts of southern Adair County. So here's a look at that, as we got southern Adair County that will have the potential for severe okay. thunderstorms. That's got severe. Yep, that's severe the one wind. that we're that we're locked on yeah. here. Okay, so a couple things to watch. We've got a live update here coming on the news real quick as we continue to monitor those storms. We are watching that area of uh, rotation that's just to the northeast of Siloam Springs, not prompting anything yet. does have a TBS, but TBS is a tornado vortex signature, but I don't know. I have my questions about that just because – Really, everything has looked like a TBS tonight. Yeah. I'll bring up some weather cameras here in this live update. And two and a half minutes again. Put the cameras in quick. You don't have to change the source, which is nice. Okay. Northeast. So Fulbright. We'll look up Siloam. And there you go. Is Lincoln okay to go to bed? No, Storm's not even into Lincoln yet, so... And the leading edge of the line. Like you said, slowing down. All that energy is lagging behind. Uh, let's do a one panel here instead of doing two panel for uh, for the live update. Okay. And I'll be at the wall to start off. You know, that's, that's something very suspicious northeast of Siloam Springs. I agree. Well, that's going to be something got, to watch. I got the camera up. Pointed that direction. Spectrum width is is right there, uh, right on the leading edge of that line. Even from Tulsa, it, that's showing up. And if that if that rear flank downdraft starts to increase, that could be something to watch. And the way that the line is orient, oriented is north to south. That's definitely favorable for shear. Yeah. This could be some gusty winds along the leading edge of that. 
We coming out here, Josh? Coming out real soon here. Okay. Bring that up on the... Clear off the spray away. Yeah, boy, see a lot better now. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> Before, I couldn't even see anything on that iPad. Uh, I'm going to catch the cat nap. Call me if anything piques your interest. All right. It's Cody Hudson that said that. Joss so strong, sounded like a tornado. Who, where Bella said that? Where Where was she at? Bella, where were you located at? Because those winds are definitely cranking. It's it, it's increasing more and more too. Mm -hmm. Look at the spectrum width from Tulsa's radar. So any uh, Wyatt or or Josh, if you're looking at that, check that out. I'm looking at it. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely there. It's looking more impressive on the Tulsa site too, with the inflow. Looking yeah, a bit stronger. Oh, and then it just fell apart <laughs> that fast. Also, there's that area near Sand Hills. It's outside of the coverage area, but it, it, it looks like that might start to be producing a little bit larger hail. Yeah. The core is definitely stronger than it was a little bit ago. Also, too, northern Sequoia County. Josh, are we uh, missing our cut in here? Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, we missed. Okay, so let's go to let's go to P Ridge here. P Ridge is going to have a great view of this of this. Uh, yeah. So here we go, P Ridge. We can bring up weather too on our source, Zach. Got it. And we got a live look at P Ridge. The couplet still looks pretty interesting. It so does. It does. Yeah. And then go to the radar from Tulsa radar. Yeah. Let's see. It kind of fell apart a little bit, but it's yeah. got a little bit of a. A little bit of an RFD rear flank downdraft that shows up. It looks like the Paradise Hill wants them to blow out. Something to watch. Well, Might be seeing some power grout on P Ridge. Yeah. Got some comments. Okay. Um, power going on and off. Flickering. In P Ridge, very loud and windy. Yeah. From Hannah. Especially that was on the leading edge of that line, so that has mm. already pushed through the P Ridge area. Customers out, and that'll update. That was last updated at twelve. Yep. Okay, two minutes out. Got it. Oh yeah, that's no problem. <laughs> All right, so um, getting set up here. I'm getting set up for the cut-in, just to let you know in case you're wondering what's going on. Yeah, that rotation northwest of Gore might be getting a bit stronger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, looks, it looks almost like that's starting to blow out. Bring up uh, weather one if you can as a source, and then bring up the reflectivity. So I've got two cameras on there just to show you. We can have the radar and the cameras at the same time, but we've got uh, two cameras that shows you how winds are cranking up as well as uh, the heavy rain and lightning activity. And, and we, what we can do is, too, we can do like uh, four panels. Let's do some... Some four panels here. Discussion. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Up, yeah, yeah. Break that, bring that up full. Yep. Is that for us? Yeah. yeah. Was, was, uh, a few isolated strong gusts or hail may persist a few more hours tonight. Downstream watch, not expected. Tornadoes. Oh. Did it mention? 
Thought it might have. I say the storms for storms. Maybe. You know that isolated cell that's in northern Sequoia County. That's going to have to be something that's watched. Mm -hmm. and that, that's going to be coming right to our Cartwright Weatherbug Network camera too. Dan's got a tornado warning. Yep. For where? Hey there. Okay, that's the cell I just mentioned too. Yeah. All right. Yep. Let's go ahead and we'll go on, guys. We're going. Tornado warning. Let's start off in the weather lab. Yeah. All right. I was that was the one I was just mentioning. <laughs> Northern Sequoia County and Adair. Mm -hmm. That's a supercell. All right. You ready, Josh? All right. Hi, everyone. Chief Meteorologist Dan Scobb, Zach Gildate, Peyton Langford. We're watching storms. Now we've got a tornado warning that yep. just got issued mm -hmm. only a couple of seconds ago. This is for northwestern Sequoia County, southern Adair County. There's an isolated cell that started to ramp up its rotation. Let's take a look at it. And uh, first of all, there's the severe thunderstorm warning information, and that is for Benton County, and that's until 1245. But as we work our way south, you're going to notice the tornado warning issued until 115. This is an isolated cell. The in ingredients are very impressive for rotation. And this is the storm that's going to be tracking to the northeast. So this does include southern Adair County. As it makes its way east, and it's not out of the question that it holds together in Crawford County as well as southern Washington County, all this activity will be tracking across the state line as we'll be watching uh, this thunderstorm. Now, as we take a look at uh, weather two, and we'll bring up Mega Doppler. And Zach, in the meantime, you go ahead and do a storm track on that. So we got a two panel here, and you're going to see one cell that shows the rotation um, on the right hand side and the reflectivity on the left hand side of the TV screen. So we're able to look at the reflectivity, which is the rain, and then the velocity image, which is the way the rain is moving in the thunderstorm. There you see that circulation that's starting to ramp up. It is moving to the east-northeast. It is going to be tracking across southern Adair County and northern Sequoia County. We've got severe thunderstorm warnings as well in uh, Benton County and as well as Adair County and southern and central sections of Sequoia County. So it actually just goes to about Salisaw. So a lot of activity, a lot of lightning that's out there as these thunderstorms have ramped up. People reporting that very strong winds coming through northwest Arkansas. So we know the ingredients are there for severe weather. The ingredients for tornadoes trying to get going in northwest Arkansas, but just lacking the isolated nature of these cells. So, Zach, let me know when you got a storm track on weather one. We'll bring that up. In the meantime, I'm going to bring up some of our Weatherbug Network cameras. We're going to take a look, first of all. At, why don't we look at Fulbright Junior High? So this is looking off to the west, uh, just blinding rains, uh, strong gusty winds. Now this is already on the backside of the storm. If we look at our P Ridge weather bug network camera, you'll be able to see a little bit more lightning activity as well as uh, a little more um, uh, gusty winds as well. So there you get to see along the leading edge of the line. So Zach, let me know when you got a track here for weather one as that tornado warning continues to the northeast. So. Tornado warning now issued, and people have been reporting power that's been kind of flickering, too, in the Pea Ridge area. And uh, Pea Ridge definitely going to be, and there, there you see some of the lights off in the distance, and we've been seeing some of those lights flickering uh, due to lightning flashes. In fact, one of our Weatherbug Network cameras took a shot. Okay, so Zach has a zoomed-in view of the track and the most dangerous portion of this thunderstorm. This is, again, going through uh, areas of northern Sequoia and southern Adair County. There's the track, and the storm's moving to the east at uh, approximately, what is it, about 40 miles an hour, Zach? What's about, that latest? 35. 35. So a little slower than our line. Here's some of the areas that are impacted, and uh, you've got Greasy at 107, and it looks like uh, areas at uh, Candy Mink Park. So that's going to be in southern Adair County at about 114. So after midnight, and here it is Tuesday morning, April 2nd, and we've got severe weather potential. Zach? Yeah, so definitely if you're in the path of that storm, get to your safe place right now. Um, this storm again is traveling east 35 miles per hour. 
and it is um, ramping up, definitely showing signs of, of uh, circulation. And um, again, traveling east, if you are in the path of this storm, this is the time where you need to take that warning, get to your safe place. And uh, again, just, just a base radar indicated rotation. Again, it's moving to the east 35 miles per hour. So if you are in the way of Beaver Church, that's going to be barreling down that way around 106 a.m. Greasy just after that, 107. And then Candy Mink Park at around 114 a.m. So again, this is a tornado warning. Just got another severe storm issued. So yeah, that's for the eastern side kind of, of that line. Zach. Really ramp up, Dan. Yeah, we'll go ahead and we'll check that out as we look at the latest information here and click on the warning. We'll go to weather two now, and we can check this out on weather two. There's the severe thunderstorm warning as the the line is starting to move east into Carroll as well as northern Madison County. Really unique how that area wasn't under the severe thunderstorm watch uh, basically all night, and we could see the line moving in. But there it is, radar indicated 60-mile-an-hour winds, which is enough to cause damage, knock down some trees, cause some issues. We are streaming this live, by the way, and we're doing that on um, knwa.com. All you have to do is just click on weather in the weather live stream. You'll see it right up at the top, and that will give you some information on uh, what we have going on. But there's radar indicated. Hail size, not as much of a threat. It's going to be less than penny or dime size. Looks like we've got a new severe thunderstorm warning, and that looks to be for southwest Missouri as the line continues to make its way east. There you see Barry County and moving into the Branson area of Stone County. And so that's that basically southern edge of the line. So if we take a look here at uh, what we have with those storms, we'll look at um, here radar closest. And there you get to see without the warning information exactly where that storm is going to be transitioning. But we got to get to that back to that tornado warning. Zach, very in intense storm. A lot of uh, rotation showing up on Heil heating, cooling, Mega Doppler. So we got Mega Doppler loaded up on weather too. And let's zoom way in on this. You'll notice that uh, Peyton Langford has put a storm track on here. These little ticks represent where the center of the circulation will be traveling. And it me measures about 15 minutes. So in 15 minutes, it's going to be crossing into southwestern Adair County. And then within a half hour, right along, it looks like Highway 59, just to the north of uh, Stony Point and Greasy. And then it makes its way into southwest Washington County at about 45 minutes and then an hour basically in southwestern Washington County, very close to Devil's Den. So if you know anybody that's in the Devil's Den area, they're, they're going to be needed to be watching this storm very, very closely. Maybe some people are trying to camp out. We mentioned how this storm activity, we're not done. We weren't done, even though it was quiet all evening, and now we've got thunderstorms that are erupting. All right, we're going to bring up a weather a three. I'm going to be doing this on weather two. So this is weather three as we look at a multi-panel. And you're going to see a lot of uh, lightning off in the distance on some of those weather bug network cameras. Now, keep in mind, we've already seen this activity move east. And there you get to see multiple flashes happening at once. So on uh, NWS chat, they've been monitoring these circulations. They've been kind of ramping up and then they start to dissipate. And so we've got everybody that are monitoring the weather conditions, uh, monitoring what's happening in the River Valley as well as Northwest Arkansas. Let's go to Weather One. Zach, take us through a storm track on that tornado warning as we continue to tell people who's going to be impacted by this storm. Hey, Dad, yeah, so I got, I got a fresh storm track for you right here on Weather One. Again, this is a tornado warning. Storm is moving east, 35 miles per hour. Again, we the counties are, that are being are affected are Adair and Sequoia County, and you can see that track right there. Again, this storm. Um, yeah, showing signs of rotation, radar indicated rotation. 1259 is going to be in the area of Bunch. And then beyond that, Beaver Church. So you can see that storm track right there as the storm propagates eastward. And Greasy Church at around 106. And then 112 Candy Mint Park. So if you are in the path of that red polygon, get to your safe place right now because this is a life threatening tornado warning. And we have many more severe storm warnings across the area. But this is the one that we are concerned with right now because it is tornado warned. And we're seeing the velocity imagery. If we can take a mega Doppler, we got a double panel. We, we can show that side by side with the reflectivity scan and definitely showing the rotation. Um, 
Bring that up on weather two yeah, if we can up. here real quick. So here's a look at weather two, um, and there you get to see that circulation. So Zach, you were mentioning we've got side by side one that shows reflectivity, one that shows velocity, and that velocity signature still ramping up. And notice how that's an isolated cell, Zach. That's what we've been watching and we've been waiting for is these isolated cells, and uh, we definitely have the energy moving in now, no doubt about it. So there's that circulation as that continues to track northeast. Zach. Yeah, definitely something to watch. We'll zoom in on that and let's plot some streets on there too, if uh, possible. Oh yeah, you can really see that circulation becoming basically a tight couplet. Um, maybe not quite as intense as it was earlier. There you see some of the highways that are going to be impacted. Uh, U.S. Highway 59, U.S. Highway 100, and uh, State Route 82. Uh, just to the west of Adair County. So Cherokee County, uh, Dry Creek Bunch, those areas going to be impacted. And, you know, Highway 59, let's face it, that's not the best terrain to be storm chasing. I know a lot of people, storm spotting, storm chasing, is very difficult at night uh, to be monitoring uh, those latest conditions. But um, uh, at night, storms can be pretty dangerous. We do have our weather blog that we're continuing to uh, let you know about with uh, severe weather information as well. And uh, Peyton, I know you're monitoring NWS chat. You got anything new that the Weather Service is talking about uh, watching these storms? Uh, no, no, just the continued the tornado warning for Adair County and uh, Cherokee and Sequoia. And Josh Myers is at XNA trying to stream, but I cannot uh, pull it up. It's not loading through the chaser wall okay. or All anything. Right. But yes, uh, as soon as I get a speed up, I will let you know. Okay, sounds good. Right on the new radar image, uh, a pretty elongated circulation. Uh, the tornado vortex signature is actually not positioned in the proper location. It's not going to be on the west side of the storm. It's going to be on the leading edge of the storm. And you'll probably see this triangle start to advance eastward as new radar data becomes available. And there's that area of rotation. So this is a tornado that is radar indicated. Uh, it is going to be passing very close to our Cartwright Weatherbug Network camera over the next hour or so. So if this storm remains isolated, we could get an incredible view of this storm at night and get to see some of the structure associated with this storm. But this is just a tough area to, to storm spot. It's at night, it's very difficult to see these storms as they're moving in, but we do have storm spotters that are out in the field and we'll continue to monitor and, and track those conditions. Let me know, Peyton, if you do happen to get Josh Myers stream on that, and also if you're in contact with them, uh, let us know what we're seeing with those cells. So tornado warning goes until 115. Uh, we are watching that storm. That's uh, Southern Adair, Northern Sequoia County. Those are the areas that are going to be impacted uh, by this cell. So as we go back to the radar, we can take a look at the radar from INX, and here's the wide view. We got multiple severe thunderstorm warnings. Let's take you through them all now. Uh, first of all, starting off in extreme northern sections of our weather coverage area. You'll, you'll notice we've got a severe thunderstorm warning that goes until 1.30. That is for Barry County, and it's mainly wind driven. So 60 mile an hour winds, which is still enough to knock down some trees and uh, cause some po sporadic power outages. Got radar indicated for the severe thunderstorm warning that is in uh, Benton County and as well as northeastern Washington County. In fact, four counties in our weather coverage area included in that. Uh, Huntsville impacted by this storm pretty soon, and they're going to be on the southern end of the severe thunderstorm warning, and then Carroll County. So there's a look at that line. Let me go ahead and take the, the warning information off the screen here very soon, and there you get to see exactly where that warning is located. Let me pan down here just a little bit so you can get the radar view from Fort Smith. So we're in a unique area where we have really three radars and they're all kind of overlapping right over Northwest Arkansas, but they're all elevated. They're all higher up in the atmosphere. We are streaming this coverage. I know you might have some questions. We can continue to monitor that. Um, Wyatt or uh, Josh Weisel, if you're there, we can see the weather two stream. Uh, let us know if we're getting any um, important comments or reports from our uh, our weather coverage on our stream uh, through Facebook as well as knwa.com. Back to the warning now. We want to do a new storm track on it, let you know where it's headed as it continues to move east-northeast at about 35 miles an hour uh, for that tornado warning. So let's work our way down and show you there's the most dangerous storm at the moment prompting our live severe weather coverage with the tornado warning. 
This is, again, that storm that's located over northern Sequoia County, southern Adair County. It's just now entering into southeastern Cherokee County, so it's been kind of riding those uh, three county lines right there. We'll put that warning information back on, and uh, this is a look at the tornado warning. Radar indicated hail, not as big of a threat. All these storms have, haven't had the the large hail, and one of the reasons for that, we kind of lost our daytime heating. We lost our uh, main instability, and radar indicated for the severe thunderstorm warning on top of when it was upgraded with the tornado warning. All right, Zach, new track. Let's yep. take us through it as uh, we'll see those areas that are going to be impacted. Hey, Dan, yeah, so I got this track, a new storm track for this tornado warning. Again, counties that are included are Adair County and Sequoia County. This tornado warning is going to be in effect till 1 to 15 a.m. this morning. You can see that red polygon right there. Now, inside that red polygon, I put a storm track. Now, the uh, areas that are going to be affected by that track are in that red box in the lower left-hand corner of that, of that screen. Again, 12.57 a.m., it's going to be affecting Bunch. And then beyond that, Candy Mint Park at around 109. Cherry Tree at 109 as well. Bell School, 115. And then beyond that, it's going to be affecting Elm Grove Church at 121 a.m. So if you are in the path of this storm, get to your safe place right now. We have an um, acronym. I can show you that, that we use. Tornado Safety, we... We um, coined this term the the duck. So get downstairs if you're in a house. The best place to be is on the first floor of that building. So a basement is going to be a great place to be in. So get downstairs. That's what the D stands for. Under something that you make sure you cover your head because um, again these storms are life threatening. Get to the center of that building, underneath a staircase. That is going to be a, a great great place to be. And uh, importantly, keep away from windows. So Dan, these are just some tips that we'd like to say when we get tornado warnings. Yeah, and that's what we're seeing right now. That's great information. I'll step out of the way so you can read the whole thing. And we just got done talking at a, a weather talk, Shaw Elementary, as we we're mentioning this. Now that's in the Springdale, close to the Cape Springs area. Those areas not impacted by a tornado warning that's mainly going to be moving into northwestern Crawford County if it holds together. So, but uh, very um, important information, life saving information, and your proper tornado precautions. I want to go back to weather, if we can, weather two. And I know this is going to be not really seeing much right now, but uh, we've got our cameras that we can control. So, I'm going to go ahead and move this in a westerly direction just to make sure that we're looking in the right direction from our Cartwright Weatherbug Network camera. And uh, you can see the camera moving now. So we've got our uh, west view here as we uh, check out and see where these storms are headed. So uh, all of that, as it makes its way in, you'll start to see more and more structure. Uh, and hopefully that internet connection will hold together. So uh, a lot going on on this um, early morning, Tuesday, tornado warning until 1.15. Let's go to Mega Doppler and kind of analyze some of the latest data here and see if that circulation looks like it's kind of weakened a little bit. Wouldn't you say, Zach? And yeah, Peyton. looking a bit more broad, Dan, yeah. um, definitely can see that. There is not out of the question that maybe this tornado warning gets dropped and then we can continue our severe weather coverage on uh, Facebook Live and as well as our stream. But yeah, definitely not as intense as, as it was showing earlier. But, you know, these storms can cycle. They can ramp up pretty quickly. And the atmosphere, very ripe for severe weather potential still to this hour, even though it's in the early morning hours. We know this, how this works. You got to wait till the storms cross the entire weather coverage area before you can drop off of them. Still a little bit of a broad circulation that's making its way across Bunch right now and moving eastward uh, at about 35 miles an hour. So that's going to be moving across southern Adair County. It looks like some hail too. Let's go ahead and we'll bring up that hail indication on Mega Doppler. First of all, you can see some of the roads that were uh, showing you. So if you live in the 90,000 block, if you will, on Highway 59, that's going to be definitely the potential for getting some hail. And that kind of shows you that this cell is still an isolated cell. It's not completely done. It's got a little bit of small hail associated with it uh, to be watching. And you'll notice that that's the area that's under the severe thunderstorm warning. So you have a tornado warning and a severe thunderstorm warning because the severe thunderstorm warning got upgraded to a tornado warning. If you're wondering about what those hail sizes indicate, you'll notice about nickel to quarter size. So a Heil, Heil Megadoppler, Heil Heating Cooling Megadoppler hail tracker is showing 
that uh, that area of hail going to be moving in between Cherry Tree and Greasy as it makes its way to the east. So Greasy, we're going to be watching uh, that sell closely. All right, let's go back to our Mega Doppler source, and we'll look at the reflectivity, and we'll see if this storm starts to ramp up again. And so uh, there's a look at, uh, looks like circulation showing up. Let's see if we can look at the velocity image as we get new radar data. Looks like a hail core right on the leading edge of this. So we'll see if this starts to ramp up a little bit, but I wouldn't doubt if the tornado warning may get dropped. Uh, looks like a new severe thunderstorm watch just got issued. We'll look at the new data for this as uh, we've got the latest on the watches and warnings here. And just to let you know, to run you through, we got a severe thunderstorm watch. And we mentioned how that was going to be extended. What was kind of the trend the whole time is we've got these watches that have started and ended too early. So it's like we've just had a slowdown of the system. Peyton, you got any new information that uh, you need to let me know about at all? Oh, uh, yes. They okay. are think they're talking about the, the tornado warning, mm -hmm. and they're just going to hold on to it just a little bit more. But, yes, definitely lost its circulation, and it will likely be dropped. But, again, there's that small chance it could ramp up. I think they probably will just let it expire, or if not, drop it early. We'll drop it early, and, it's, yeah. and it goes until 115. And so there's a chance of a couple of radar scans maybe around – one o'clock in the morning, uh, they may drop that warning. So thanks for that information, Peyton. Appreciate it. We'll continue to monitor what we have. But uh, some of our Weatherbug Network cameras, again, at night, one of the best eyes out in the field that will continue to track these storms. So uh, as of now, just one storm of concern, that tornado warning. We do have the severe thunderstorm warnings as well. Uh, they are a little weaker. And we had the energy, but it just kind of lagged back just a little bit. So as we go back to our, let's go back to the satellite and radar here. We'll take a look at the, the wide view and we're going to be getting the new thunderstorm risk. And obviously it's going to be well east of us, but there's a little isolated cell. You can see it kind of popping up and then weakening. But as it makes its way into Northwest Arkansas, there still will be some energy that will be left over that we'll have to watch. Now, Josh, I know you've been monitoring Facebook live comments and uh, we've been doing that on our uh, weather two source. So you could just kind of chime in if there's anything that we need to know about, anything urgent that people are reporting at all, or if just uh, maybe some urgent questions that need to be answered. Uh, there's there's just several people that are kind of wondering about uh, the Pea Ridge and the Fayetteville area. Yeah. And uh, also, there's about 340 customers without power in Benton County as of 12.40 a.m. I've noticed a couple of people were talking about power flickering in uh, Benton and Washington counties as this rolls through. Yeah, so strong enough storms where they're they're kind of knocking down maybe some tree branches that have uh, got onto power lines and a little bit of issues with the power. But uh, and we we mentioned those comments about Pea Ridge having flickers of power as well. So there's going to be sporadic power outages. As winds are about 60 miles an hour, that's definitely enough to cause some issues. Goes until 1:30 in the morning. Let's zoom in here and take a look at uh, some of the activity. And uh, just to make sure those warning information doesn't pop up on the screen and block the radar. So we've got uh, as a switch to radar. See that? Just go one little one little area, and then you get two different radars. So what you're looking at here is the radar closest, which is from SRX. We just pan to the north just a little bit, and we get Springfield. Real unique area when covering severe weather. But if you're wondering, we got heavy rain that's coming through Rogers right now. Uh, we've got some heavy rain that's falling near Johnson, Springdale, but as far as tornado potential, not seeing it. So that's good news. As we take a look here at the velocity image, there's just really nothing of concern along it. Whenever you get those real bright, uh, you know, reds and even pinks, you start getting stronger wind velocities. And then when you see pink and blue right next to each other, that's when you really start to need to be concerned. So go back down to this tornado warning, and you're going to see those reds and greens showing up. Remember, green colors in terms of the radar, that's inbound velocity. And remember, we're looking at the Fort Smith radar, as you can see the sweep. So this is all rain that's moving towards the radar, rain that's moving away from the radar. Your circulation, which is rather broad, is right here. That's what prompted the tornado warning. We can actually look at something called shear tracks. This will show you what prompted the tornado warning in the first place. There you see that circulation ramping up off to the west, and the tornado warning was issued, and then it continued to track through Paradise Hill, and now it looks like it's starting to weaken uh, just a little bit. Okay, Zach, I'm going to pitch it on to you. You got some 
information along with uh, I expect a new tr a new tornado track. Yeah, Payne, what was that? You said that they were going to... Yes, it, uh, I'm seeing in Slack that they canceled the tornado warning for Cherokee and Sequoia, okay. so they just chopped it off a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Still uh, part of Adair County. Yeah, so, okay. so, Dan, it's still a tornado worn storm, but they chopped off the left half of it. Yeah. Um, still includes portions of Adair County. And again, the storm is moving east, 35 miles per hour. Got that fresh track on there. If you look at weather one, we have a fresh track right there behind you, Dan. Yeah, there you can see it. And uh, I'll let you take me through some of the areas. I want to go back real quick to weather two and just kind of point this out uh, as, uh, you know, Peyton and Zach, we were watching that circulation near Chicota, and then it was moving northeast. And you can see the track of the storm. So this kind of shows you the radar images that are updating. And now the very latest circulation still showing up as uh, on the western side of that warning. All right, now the track, Zach. Take us through that as it moves to the northeast at about 35 miles an hour. Hey, Dan, yeah, so this tracks um, the, the warning is still in effect through 1.15 a.m., and you can see the areas are going to be affected in that lower left-hand corner in that red box. If you were in the area of Candy Mint Park by around 104, beyond that, Salem Church 109, and then 110 Bell School. So pretty rural area, but again, um, if you are in the track, of that red polygon, you need to be in your safe place right now. And not only is the storm producing these uh, rot these uh, rotating winds, we're seeing some large hail too. So um, large hail, damaging winds, and some pretty heavy rain, lightning ongoing with the storm. So definitely um, worth noting. And, and again, again, because of the tornado warning, you have to be in your safe place right now. All right, going to bring up another weather bug camera here. Let's see if we can. See any type of lightning off in the distance. So we know the camera's live. We can see some flashing of uh, some of the lights off in the distance. Remember, this is high up, Cartwright Mountain, Artist Point, Southern Crawford County, or should I say Northern uh, Crawford County, uh, very close to the Bobby Hopper Tunnel. So um, this is looking to due west, and uh, we're checking out to see if there's any type of lightning. So that's uh, with that thunderstorm feature. Uh, no, looks like no lightning off of the distance. It's just a kind of a black abyss, if you will. Not much to see there. Let's bring up some weather cameras here in the Fort Smith, and uh, let's go with the Fayetteville area, first of all. So this is the Graduate Hotel, and camera's shaking around a little bit. Definitely a little wind, but nothing really to write home about. In fact, the severe thunderstorm warning doesn't uh, barely include Fayetteville anymore, and the storm's kind of moving east now. But uh, still some rain, some some occasional lightning. I didn't hear much lightning out. Uh, didn't hear much of thunder, meaning, uh, you know, lightning and thunder. Didn't see a whole lot of that in the Fayetteville area. And I don't know. Did you guys hear any rumbles of thunder outside of the studio? Quite a bit, yeah. Yeah? yeah I heard a okay. Probably a little bit. Uh, Miss Laura is showing a little bit of lightning. Okay. Turned it just a little bit so you can see it. It's not super active, but you can see a bolt every now and then. All right, so let's see here. We'll go to Miss Laura's historic site, bring up that Weatherbug Network camera here shortly, and uh, we'll take a look. Again, this is uh, very close to the Highway 64 bridge over the Arkansas River. I um, believe it's looking to the west-northwest. And, uh, yeah, a little bit of a slow Internet connection there, huh? So you can see uh, some of those uh, lightning flashes off in the distance. So this is in the River Valley, and... Let's go back to our radar to kind of give you an idea where all this activity is. So maybe a little bit of an increase in the circulation showing up in southern Adair County that we'll continue to have to watch. But I'll tell you what, we've got the path of this storm uh, going to be moving east-northeast. You can see in the Winslow area, Devil's Den, as we mentioned, there's that area of rotation. And if that ramps up a little bit more, then maybe prompting a new tornado warning across southern Washington County and northern, Craf northern uh, Crawford County. Let's look at the reflectivity there. You can kind of see right on the leading edge, just to the east of Highway 59. Let's zoom in here a little bit on that. That is that little isolated cell. And kind of uh, at times weakening, but also something maybe to watch as well. So. That's that isolated cell. So 115 is how long that tornado warning goes for. Surprised we can't see any type of lightning off in the distance from our Cartwright Weatherbug Network camera. It's kind of unique. Not sure why that's happening, but this is a, that's going to be in northern Crawford County, just south of the Bobby Hopper Tunnel. All right. 
Zach monitoring things. We got uh, uh, Josh Weisel on uh, social media stream. Anything uh, new? Any new information there coming out? Uh, no, no new Take information at, at this here. time. Uh, but there's a lot of people kind of wondering when they can go to bed. Yeah, in Washington and <laughs> County. So I don't blame them there. Uh, so I can tell you this: if you live in Salem Springs, good night. You're you're done. Storms are over. Uh, everything's kind of finished there, so you don't have to worry about that at all. I'm checking out this on uh, on the radar here from some different sources. So let's do a little radar tour, let you know who is it going to be impacted and uh, and who's pretty much done and over. And then we'll look back at that tornado warning, get a fresh track on that, look at the latest circulation. So Bella Vista, Bentonville, Springdale, Fayetteville, West Fork, everything to the central and western portions of Benton County, you're done. Uh, Northern Washington County, you're fine. Uh, just a little bit of thunderstorm activity now popping up, and this will be a little gusty winds in Eureka Springs, a little bit on the leading edge of the line that's going to be moving into northern um, Madison County and eastern Carroll County, but pretty much a lot of places going to be able to go to bed, no problem, so we're going to be fine there. Uh, going back to, oh, it looks like a tornado possible now. See this severe thunderstorm morning with a little funnel right there? That represents a tornado possible, and I'm going to imagine that's a severe thunderstorm warning. Instead of having the tornado warning, just because the circulation is weakened, we now have a severe thunderstorm warning that does include southern Washington County, northern Crawford County, and there you see the threat tornado possible, just because the circulation has been there. So the tornado warning is going to be expiring here at approximately 1.15 a.m., but because of that tornado potential and maybe a little bit of a circulation ramps up, just to have it in there, you got the tornado possible. And so that's something that, that's been added to the Weather Service's warnings uh, probably over the last few years. So it's what we call impact-based storm warnings. And it gives you an idea exactly where those storms are going to be impacted uh, with the polygon warning. And then on top of that, they add these what we'll call impact base uh, tags, so weather tags, so IBW tags. That lets you know there's a tornado possible, and that's the storm that we're going to be watching. Peyton, I know you got some new information. You're kind of giving me a little thumbs up. Uh, what, what you got? Yeah, that's what I was going to add is that they're about to change it to a tornado possible and again, there you see on your screen, 60 mile per hour winds, one inch hail, and of course that tornado possible tag because that low level shear is still starting to ramp up. We mentioned that earlier that around midnight to about one, that that low level shear would start to crank up and that would support some rotating thunderstorms. So we're definitely watching that closely as well as, you know, of course, the National Weather Service out of Tulsa as well. Yeah. So, yeah, isolated supercell. Let's put a little storm track on there, and uh, we'll do right on the southern tip of that cell, and we'll track it to the northeast. Let's go over the next hour or so, so you'll get to see some of the areas that are going to be impacted. I know a lot of information here. There's a severe thunderstorm warning with the tornado possible, as well as the tornado warning that goes until 115. These are the areas that are going to be impacted by the most dangerous portion of the storm. Bell School right now coming into your area. And uh, that is an under official tornado warning. But you got Winslow at 151, Winslow High School 152, Brentwood 156. I'm going to have to call Stormney in uh, southern uh, Washington County, my weather watcher uh, with Fray Not Farms. He's going to be right in the path of this storm. So we're going to continue to monitor and track that for him as uh, that storm makes its way east. Let's switch to weather one here so I can do some stuff behind the scenes, uh, some background information. Uh, and and yeah, the, Zach has another storm track kind of showing you a little bit of a wider view of where that storm is going to be impacted. Hey, Dan, yeah, so I got a fresh storm track on that storm. So it looks like they're going to let that tornado warning expire at 1.15 a.m. And then they did extend it as a tornado possible tag. So you can see it in the yellow. Uh, we're going to be seeing wind speed, 60 miles per hour, just breaking down those threats hail size up to one inch potentially and the counties that are included are Adair County, Crawford County, and Washington County. So again this storm has a history of producing 
rotation. So that's why they have that tornado possible tag. And this storm is kind of starting to speed up. Now it's moving east at about 50 miles per hour. So you can see that track right there. I made it a little bit wider. If you are in the locations of that red box, this storm is headed your way. So 110 a.m. is going to be around Oak Ridge School. Beyond that, Odell, 119 a.m., 123 a.m., Floss, and 124, Big Scuffle Church. Devil's Den State Park is going to be impacting Devil's Den State Park at about 1.29 a.m. this morning. And then beyond that, Winslow is going to be barreling down at around 1.37 a.m. And, and again, this uh, tornado possible warning goes until 1.45 a.m. this morning. This storm is definitely worth watching because it has a history of producing that radar indicator rotation. And we're watching many more storms. It's not just this one. As we go further north, we're going to be seeing some some uh, more some, some more severe weather. Yeah. Uh, appreciate that uh, report, Zach. Uh, great information. Let's go to weather two. We'll take a look here at the shear track. There's the very latest as it's about to cross the state line, making its way into southwestern Washington County as well as uh, northwestern Crawford County. So there's the circulation that shows on the radar shear tracks. Uh, I'm going to look at this velocity signature here on Mega Doppler. We'll probably bring that up here soon. It looks like it kind of is tightening a little bit, maybe a little bit more what we call rear flank downdraft that could be developing. So I'm going to bring this up on Mega Doppler. There's the hail core, Evansville, just to the south of Evansville, that's the area of circulation that's going to be moving through. Again, not strong enough to prompt tornado warning potential, but definitely something that the Weather Service is watching. So you just chime in, Peyton, when you see something on NWS chat. Also, if we have any type of reports that are coming out, as well as uh, more power outage reports. Any more on that, Josh Weisel? Yeah, as of uh, 106 a.m., Benton County was reporting around uh, 2,202 customers out. That was a big jump from earlier, which yeah. was around 300. Yeah, that is a bigger jump for sure. No doubt about that. Um, and uh, how many, any power outages in Washington County? Uh, back in Washington County, the last update was around 19 customers were without power. Okay. So yeah, clearly the storm has impacted Benton County a lot more, which is where it was starting to move in. So uh, we're going to get a good view, like I said, of this storm as it comes through, unless it's shrouded in cloud cover, which is always a possibility, especially with, you know, the moisture, the instability that we have in the atmosphere. And we'll take a look here um, on weather too. I want to bring up our weather bug network cameras on some of these. So first of all, let's take a look here at Mega Doppler. We'll bring up again as we look at our uh, some of those cameras. So let's bring up our cam. And we'll take a look at that Cartwright. Still trying to get a view from uh, Cartwright and Mountainburg. So there's that cell. Just don't see any lightning with this, but this could be because the camera image is a little bit slower. So let me try adjusting the, the view here and see if we can get any type of view. So, yeah, it looks like it's moving a little slower. Why don't we bring the Cartwright Weatherbug Network camera on uh, Weather 3? Yeah, I can see Peyton adjusting that right now. We'll bring this up on weather three. Let me know when we've got it on full screen and we can take a look at that. So, all right. So here we go as it's connecting. Yep. Got it full. All right. So here's a look at Cartwright. You can see the lightning off of the distance. I'm going to go ahead and move the camera over to the right just a smidge. And it looks like, yeah, there you get to see it. a little bit of a delay with uh, definitely the, uh, the internet. Obviously, it's going to be a little slower with the storm rolling in. But there's that lightning off of the distance. So let me push my computer out of the way so you can kind of see what, exactly what we have going on. I'm going to step out of the way. This is at night. This is going to be our best view of this isolated supercell. I want to make sure that this is exactly facing west, due west. So we'll wait and see the camera pointing west. And there we've got that west view, looks like. Looks like it says southeast view. That's not what I want. I want a west view. Oh, I can hear the rain coming down now in the Fayetteville area. But uh, tornado warning is going to be dropped here very soon, and then we're going to go on our uh, – if, if a new tornado warning gets prompted, we're going to you know go back on the air. But in the meantime, eh, I don't know. I think I want to stay on this. It's 1.13 in the morning. We have the tornado possible. 
There is a circulation associated with this. I don't want to drop off of this, even though we have a tornado warning that's about to expire here in one minute, just because by the time that if it does get issued as a new tornado warning and starts to ramp up pretty quickly, then that energy as it makes its way east could really be a, a, an issue developing that storm pretty quickly. Um, something's going on with our camera locations and our views. I'm going to go back to our weather th uh, three source here and check that out. Oh, larger hail too. Hail core is increasing in size too. Don't know what's going on here. Let's go presets. While you're doing that, Dan, I can take yeah. weather one and do another storm track for you. Okay, sounds good. So you got another severe storm warning. Now they're going to drop that tornado warning at 115, but they did extend it as a tornado possible. So still showing signs of that circulation. And again, if you're in the path of this new red polygon, this storm is going to be heading towards your way. So it's producing some large hail, some damaging winds, and this severe storm warning is going to be in effect until 1.45 a.m. this morning. Counties, 8 Air, Crawford, and Washington County. So uh, the areas that are going to be affected are in that uh, red box. So Devil's Den State Park is going to be impacting that area at around 1.26 a.m. Beyond that, Blackburn at 1.28 Winslow 134 and then Brentwood at 136 traveling further east remember this storm is kind of sped up a little bit earlier it was going 35 miles per hour now it's going about 50 and low gap church by around 139 and then sunset by around 142 so if you look at mega doppler you can definitely see the hail up to maybe even up to hen egg size hail. Yeah, and so, weather too. Yeah, so it, it has see. increased in size, Zach. Uh, we've been checking that out. And so, yeah, you take control of that. Yeah, we'll zoom man. in a little bit. And Devil's Den, like I mentioned, you have uh, vehicles in the Devil's Den area. This storm's going to be impacting you. And I think that hail core increasing too, that uh, might prompt maybe even a considerable severe thunderstorm warning. So this. The storm's intensifying. I think you're going to be hearing this on NWS chat as they're watching this core uh, starting to develop a little bit more. There's that hail indication. Just to give you an idea of what you're looking at, this is our mega Doppler hail tracker. And you're seeing when you get to quarter size, then, you know, when we get a lot of purple shaded areas, then that gives you an idea of baseballs. If we roll over that, I think it's just a little over two inches right now is what we're seeing uh, with that cell. So, yeah, you roll right over the two. With the mouse, it'll let you know. So about 2.21, so a little over two inches, which is hen egg size. We'll continue to watch that. One of the things, though, when a storm has bigger hail, that gives you an idea that maybe, you know, it's something we need to watch because it could be a supercell that's rapidly intensifying. I actually need to call my friend on this, Zach. I'm going to mute my microphone. This is right in his path, and uh, I want to give him the heads up because this storm is coming right his way. His knee, by the way, was at a 9.5 out of 10 with this storm. So hand me my phone if you can. It's actually it coming like uh, right towards Josh Rugger's way because oh, he's, da he's down there in Winslow. Yeah. He's in the Winslow area? Yep. All right. Well, in the meantime, we might do a live stream then with him. Okay, Zach. Yeah, we had the hatched area for that significant hail, and that's what this is. That's that Let's pink. I'm going to take off the weather wall. So Josh, you can, can take off the yeah. weather wall real quick. Okay. Yeah. He's got it. Yeah, so that that pink, that that is hen egg size hail, two-inch diameter hail. That kind of hail can be life-threatening. If that hits you, that, that that is not good. So definitely take take this warning seriously. Again, we're not just seeing hail, we're seeing some rotation. So it's not a tornado warning, but it is tornado possible. So right now you're looking at the hail and the hey are you in winslow the, um largest hail is right in the center that pink again up to two inches and that orange color that is any anything from one inch to up to two inches and so that you look at the hail core right there again this is all associated with this big supercell making its way through adair county and you can see it it's going to be heading towards devil's den state park Winslow beyond that. And again, we're looking at the at the reflectivity right now, but now let's look at the the um relative storm relative velocity. A little bit um 
range folding here, but again, it's still broad circulation with this. And that's why we're on this storm. Yeah. National Weather Service gave it a tornado possible tag because earlier during the evening, this storm was tornado warned. Not anymore, but if you look at weather one, Peyton is making a storm track on that right now. So we're going to get that up, and there it is right there. So, again, this storm is moving to the east at around 50 miles per hour. If you're in the path of this storm, um, get ready to get into your safe place. It's, it's not tornado worn just yet, but it's going to be impacting Devil's Den State Park at about 1.28 a.m. Beyond that, Blackburn at 1.31 a.m. And then come Winslow. So if you live in Winslow, 1.36 in the morning. That is the time frame where it's going to be impacting the forecast area. And um, again, we have that significantly large hail. This storm might be upgraded to a considerable severe storm warning because of that hail size. And then beyond that, 1.40 a.m. Brentwood still in that warning polygon, low gap church at around 1.42 in the morning. And then sunset at 1.44 a.m. And then beyond that, Arnett Church at 146, and then 147 Hazel Valley. So again, that tornado warning was dropped, but this is a tornado possible storm traveling to the east at, at uh, 50 miles per hour. And um, this warning will be in effect until 145 a.m. in the morning. So that is the storm track. Now let's take Mega Doppler full. You can see this big supercell making its way through. And, and this storm is producing that large hail. We'll see if that hail has um, gone down in size. So we're, we're, not, we're not seeing the significant hail anymore, but still one inch to maybe even up to two inches for that hail. It's in a pretty rural area right now, but um, this storm is heading towards Devil's Den State Park. You can see that new scan right there, still seeing that hail. Now, because we have a new scan, let's look at the velocity. Um, can still see it there. Definitely a bit broad. Peyton, is the NWS chat having any comments about this storm? Uh, nothing at the moment. Does have, the newest update is canceling the severe thunderstorm warning for Carol and Madison? I know that's a lot further north, mm -hmm. but I uh, just update on all the severe thunderstorm warnings across the coverage area. Yeah, that's a good idea. So let's let's just zoom out. Let's 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 head north. So so that is a tornado possible down in southern Washington County. Now let's move up to our northern counties. Barry County, that that storm seems to be to be moving out of the forecast area. So so still storms ongoing in northwest Arkansas, but but the main storm that we are watching is in southern Washington County. And you can see the algorithm is showing some signs of circulation. A lot of interference there with that range folding. Mm -hmm. um, again, hail is still going to be a big factor for us. You can see the hail core right there. It's in a pretty rural area, but again, the storm is traveling east 50 miles per hour, so it's traveling pretty quickly. And, and it's looking like it's taking a more northeasterly track heading towards Brentwood. So we might want to get a new storm track on that one. I did just get a new one because it is down to about 45 miles per hour now. Okay, so it's slowing down just a bit. Again, we're in south central Washington County. And you can see that supercell right there. Producing some damaging winds. There's the circulation on um, Mega Doppler. So, again, tornado possible. It's not tornado worn yet, but that could change. And that's why we're going live. That's why we're on this storm. Um, we, act we actually have the... Um, hail graphic up there right now so so let me, let me let me just show you the hail again yeah so the hail this is some pretty significant hail you can see the color panel up to one inch to maybe up to two inches in size for us and again the storm slowing down a bit moving to the east at around 45 miles per hour there is a velocity right there so torrential rain being seen and in the darker pinks that's the hail core right there Heading, heading towards the Brentwood area. Let me um, zoom in on that one. Can get some streets up there. So there's Interstate 540. It's going to be trekking across Interstate 540 pretty soon here. Zach, real quick, I was just going to change the banner real quick. 
Okay. There we go. Yes, yeah, so you're looking at the reflectivity of this severe storm making its way across southern Washington County. The storm is producing hail, damaging winds, and it's been showing some signs of rotation. So that's why we're on this storm. You can see that banner um, above or uh, below Mega Doppler tornado possible. And, and here's the hail right there. So again, it's going to be making its way across the Interstate 540. So you don't want to be out traveling right now, especially in southern Washington County, because um, this storm means means business. Devil's End State Park. It's gonna it's gonna be in the way. Um, Payton, why don't you get on Weather One and make a storm track of this so we can get a fresh track? Of yes, fresh locations. track. Speaking of that, they continued the severe thunderstorm warning, so it, this will go until 1:45 a.m. Now we'll go ahead and get a fresh track on that. Again, the, the warning still says it's moving about 50 miles an hour, so we'll go back to 50 miles an hour, still moving kind of east northeasterly direction. There you go in the fresh track if you take weather one. So we can take weather one. Josh, we can look at that track. There it is. Yeah. So again, this is a tornado possible severe storm. That might be showing some tighter rotation on this storm. But again, we're seeing the hail and this is the these are the areas that are going to be affected by that hail again devil's den state park at around 1 32 in the morning beyond that blackburn the uh, hail core kind of taking a more northeasterly track heading towards blackburn and winslow going to be affected at around 140 beyond that brentwood 143 low gap church 146 wyola 147 and then hazel valley by around 1 50 a.m so if we take Mega Doppler, we can kind of see the the velocity data is a little bit muddled, but just to the northwest of Devil's Den State Park, we're kind of seeing that rotation is starting to tighten up a bit, and and that's going to be heading towards Winslow. You can so, see it's approaching I five forty. So so we got I five forty. The storm is going to be trekking right across I-540 pretty soon. And then beyond that, Interstate 49. But but we're looking at the storm relative velocity and the rotation. You can definitely see it there just to the northwest of Devil's Den State Park. And now here is, the, died on the IFB. here is the reflectivity. You can see the – guys got a new scan. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah, so still a little bit broad, but tornado – again, it's not a tornado warning. It's tornado possible. That's why we're on the storm. The, re the reflectivity really looking a bit muddled, Dan. But um, yeah. we're, I think that last scan, the velocity scan, the rotation was a little bit tighter. This looks a little bit more broad. But, but again, um, now it's kind of to the northeast of Devil's Den State Park. What we have to Winslow. watch, though, is the, all this right here, this is rain that's rapidly moving towards the radar. So this is what we call kind of like a rear flank downdraft potential uh, that as the storm's moving in. So this is uh, something that we're going to have to watch on that uh, leading edge of the storm. So we do have Josh Rugger, by the way. He's been tracking, monitoring these storms. So we've got our entire weather team. Josh is out in the field. We do have him on the phone if we could bring him up. He's been talking about how the lightning has increased. If we can, while we're talking to him, let's bring up our Weatherbug Network camera at Cartwright Mountain so uh, so we could take a look at that. Uh, and, Josh, tell me exactly what you're seeing with this cell. Looks like lightning is definitely on the increase from what we're telling. Yeah, absolutely. The lightning has definitely increased over the last uh, several minutes, Dan. It's weird because I've been chasing all day and I haven't seen a whole lot of lightning strikes, which is something you certainly expect when you do a chase, especially with a storm system like this. But uh, this is different. This is one of those isolated supercells that have a little bit more energy to work with. And I did have to take my uh, escape route south uh, to avoid some of that hail. So I'm just south of the Winslow area right now, uh, just past the Bobby Hopper Tunnel. But I'm on the back end of that storm, it's kind of elongated, it looks like, on radar right now. Haven't uh, been able to see a low ring. Obviously, this is uh, one of the most difficult parts to chase <laughs> right here in northwest Arkansas. We yeah. are right 
backpack up in the middle of the Boston Mountains right now. But it's difficult to get on exits. It's difficult to get on those back roads. You have to be very careful. You have to be very safe when you're chasing out here for sure. Um, so I did have to, to take my escape route south. I know Frankie Shepard is trying to get right in the middle of that hill core. I do agree with you, though. We were talking uh, offline. It looks like that storm may have dumped its hail core. So maybe not seeing that large hail potential anymore. Of course, I'm not in that yeah. area of the storm at this time. So I can't tell you for sure. Uh, but uh, definitely a, a broad area of rotation that's trying to get going uh, just off the west of Winslow. I'm about to surge back up to the north and kind of check out the storm on the backside. Uh, but again, I, I just uh, am heading southbound right now along Interstate 49. Uh, just south of the Winslow area. Okay, appreciate that. We had our Weatherbug Network camera while we were talking to you. You mentioned the lightning. Oh, of course, now it lightnings too. Uh, we just saw that on our uh, Cartwright Mountain Weatherbug Network camera. It almost looked like a black screen. There wasn't much going on, but I think, number one, it's shrouded in clouds. The internet connection is very slow right now. Uh, so basically, you're not seeing any type of lightning flashes at all. But uh, there is a look at the, the tornado possible uh, for that storm, live radar winds showing Devil's Den State Park really getting them the brunt of the action. How are the winds right there where you're at, Josh? And tell me, first of all, exactly where you're at. Yeah, right now, so I am uh, just south of the uh, Bobby Hopper Tunnel now. Okay. I just got south of Bobby Hopper Tunnel. So everything is, is pretty calm where I am at this time. Uh, Let's again, put up the I'm, reflectivity real kinda, quick. Yeah, okay, I'm go, go ahead. I'm kind of in a spot right now where, you know, obviously <laughs> the next exit I can possibly take is the Chester exit. So uh, I'll have to surge back to the north again to get on the storm. But uh, when I was near um, when I was near Winslow uh, with uh, Frankie it's just about five minutes ago or so, uh, definitely winds were starting to pick up just a little bit out ahead of that storm. It was very difficult to see if there was a lowering or not because, like you said, there's a lot of clouds that are shrouding everything right now. You're, you're talking about the lightning. I have noticed the lightning ramping up, but it's just very muted by the cloud cover. You know, it's, it's very, very weird. It's a very, very weird system. But, again, I'm just, just now south of the Bobby Tunnel, um, kind of you know, moving south along Interstate 49 and uh, trying to find a spot where I can get northbound again and, uh, and get the storm. All right. Appreciate it, Josh. Yeah, keep it. Keep us updated. Stay on that. What we're going to look here at, uh, let's look at our satellite and radar here if we can, and we'll look at the amount of lightning strikes. I'm going to zoom in on this cell. So this is not the reflectivity, but this is the composite reflectivity. Uh, definitely lighting on the decrease. It only shows about six cloud-to-ground lightning strikes, but earlier the storm had uh, definitely a lot more lightning with it as uh, you can see some of those lightning strikes, 27, 19 for one isolated cell. And it uh, looks like the lightning is dropping off. Definitely a sign that maybe this is starting to weaken a little bit, but there you see still a couple of more lightning strikes that are ahead. So also the hail too, not nearly as big as it was earlier. As uh, we take a look at, um, as you'll notice here, uh, hail indication uh, as we look at how heating, cooling, mega Doppler, little bit of the boundary right there, so that's probably going to lessen the tornado potential. If we look at the reflectivity to velocity, you'll notice the velocity has weakened just a little bit. Uh, there you see Frankie Shepard as well, one of our storm spotters that's uh, tracking these storms. There you see the hail core that's about to move over the Winslow area. So, uh, Zach, we want to do another storm track. What about the cells, too, that are in Benton County? Have they weakened? It looks like they've died off, and I think those severe thunderstorm warnings are going to be expiring here real soon. We could scroll up there and take a look. Yeah, still, yeah, that severe storm that was in Barry County has moved out. And still, northwest Arkansas, Benton County looking pretty quiet. Um, but the area of concern, definitely southern Washington County right now for that tornado possible severe storm. And even behind that storm, there's some more activity starting to ramp up. So we're definitely not done yet. But as of right now, no tornado warnings, just that tornado possible. And, and we're on that storm because it's had a history of that indicated rotation. Uh, you might want to hunker down for this cell. Is it right over you right now? Yeah, so we're zooming in on that storm in southern Washington County again. Crossing over Interstate 540 right now. And let me get rid of that. Let me show you the hail indicator still showing some... Pretty large hail, one inch to maybe even up to two inches of hail, about to pass over Interstate 540. 
heading right towards Winslow. So here's a storm relative velocity showing that rotation. So still pretty broad, um, not really clear if there's a tight area with that muddled signal with that range folding, but definitely seeing the rain, definitely seeing the damaging winds. And again, this severe storm warning will be in effect until 1.45 a.m. this morning. And we can see it traveling through Southern Washington County. And if you can take weather one, you can show you all the details with that, with that severe storm warning. There's a tornado warning coming. Tornado warning coming? Yeah, I, I was monitoring the chat while looking at the meso analysis and the, the uh, what's I'm gonna call it? It's moving into a more favorable environment. Uh, that, that low level, yeah. uh, that zero to three kilometer mixed layer cape, still at about 75, got that shear vector out of the southwest at around 45, 50 knots. So, yeah, starting to uh, line up. Yes, starting to line up. It's moving to a more favorable there environment. Right there, there you see the tornado warning on your screen. All right, so Ron, Ron Weather One, new tornado warning has been issued. Counties impacted are Madison and Washington County. This is going to be in effect until 2.30 a.m. in the morning. So this is the time where you have to get to your safe place right now. If you're in that red polygon, you can see it right there. This is a brand new tornado warning, and it is impacting Madison and Washington County. And you can see it hot off the press. That is a new tornado warning. Uh, the the um, storm is entering a more favorable environment, and it is expected to strengthen that rotation. So that's why we're on this storm. And we're seeing that rotation. We're seeing it impacting southern Washington County. Right now, it's in southern Washington County. Pretty soon, it's going to be entering Madison County. So um, I'm going to get a track on that storm. But right now, we're going to take Mega Doppler and show that circulation is starting to start, starting to definitely starting to strengthen here's the normalized rotation there and back on the reflectivity we can see it over brentwood so if you are in brentwood get to your safe place right now remember the duck acronym get down under something and center of the house and because uh dan yeah jo i'll tell you this we still have josh rugger that's on this storm now that it's tornado warned let's see if we have any new information so we've got him on the phone or line uh, Josh, let me know what you're seeing here. It looks like that maybe the circulation, the rotation is starting to ramp up again. Uh, tell me what you're seeing visually. No doubt about it, it is ramping up, Dan. And I'll tell you what, I'm traveling northbound now along Interstate 49, uh, getting very close to the Winslow area once again. I'm here at mile marker 40 uh, right now. And uh, I'm just now passing back into Washington County. And uh, I did see a visual of a lowering. Okay. Uh, just off to the north of my area. Uh, I was right over the Winslow area. Uh, it was a definite lowering. I did not see, uh, you know, obviously it's very hard to see in the mountains if there's any touchdown if you're, you know, a little far out. But there was definitely a well-defined lowering, a well-defined wall cloud uh, just off to the northeast of the Winslow area. Again, I'm traveling northbound along Interstate 49, and I'm right now uh, just passing through the Bobby Hopper Tunnel. So I'm going to get a, another good view of this in just a few moments, but uh, about two minutes ago, I saw a lightning strike that showed that well-defined lowering All right. the Winslow area. Awesome. Appreciate it so much. Again, we have that Weatherbug Network camera from uh, Cartwright. Let's point it to the northeast. Let's see if we can get a view of this cell as it comes in uh, to southeastern Washington County. But there's that new tornado warning. Always great information. Josh, stay on the line because these storms can develop rapidly. Uh, they can intensify rapidly. I do want to do something here. We're going to go to, I know we're on weather too. I got to look at a different radar because we're getting a lot of range folding in the area. And I want to look at the velocity image here from a different radar because it's just not really showing a lot of uh, areas of rain that are moving away from the radar on the eastern side of the couplet. We're getting a lot of the towards, but we're losing the radar data. And boy, the circulation is ramping up. I can see it out of the corner of my eye. Um, and uh, let's take a look at the velocity signature from I and, and there it is right there. You can definitely see circulation. So this is a different view. I'm going to show you what I mean by this. So this is what we were looking at with the velocity image. See all this purple right here? That purple represents range folding where you aren't getting very good radar data, and so we're not able to see those winds that are racing away from the radar located in Fort Smith. If we switch the radar and we take a look at the velocity signature, 
uh, from uh, INX, which is a little higher up in the atmosphere, but there is the couplet. Notice how the orientation of the couplet is a little bit different now as it's moving away from the radar in this location towards the radar in this. There's your area of rotation and your spin in the atmosphere. So this is a storm that is ramping up. Josh, rotation increasing dramatically. This is going to be tracking as we go to uh, uh, Witter, Japton, St. Paul, southwestern Madison County. This is not going to be impacting Washington County for Fayetteville. It's not going to be in, uh, impacting Sonora. Uh, none of those areas will be impacted, which is going to lead us to the next thing. One of the best ways to know if you're in the path of this storm is weather call next gen. And boy, this storm is ramping up, guys. A very intense storm that is really starting to increase its circulation more and more. It's interesting, though, how we're not getting a lot of data uh, from what we're seeing. Josh, are you still there? Seeing any I'm still visual? Here, Dan, on and, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, could, I, I haven't gotten a great visual. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. I uh, just got just got my tornado warning alert on my phone, so I hope I'm still on. Uh, but uh, I'm about to take exit uh, 45 uh, into Winslow right now on Highway 74. Okay. So I'm um, just on the backside of the storm right now, just off of the southwest of the circulation. Of course, this is this is going to be a little tough because I'm going to get into the trees here, but I'm going to try to stay on the backside of the storm and, and see if we can get another uh, visual. That I haven't had a good lightning strike as of late. Uh, but again, uh, the last good view that I had of it, there was a well-defined wall cloud, a well-defined low rain. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I can see it on radar right now too. On the corner of my eye, I have it on my windshield here and I, I can see it ramping up. Oh rapidly. yeah. It is right. definitely ramping up. We can look at the lightning counter and you're going to see a lot more intense, uh, activity with, uh, the sweeping radar. But there's a look at that area of rotation. Um, and, uh, you can see what we call a tornado vortex signature, very poor radar data in that area where we're getting a lot of range folding uh, from uh, the eastern side of the circulation, but definitely an impressive storm. We're trying to see if there's any visual, but I, I just don't think this camera is doing it justice because the internet connection is so slow. Zach Payton, I want to do a storm track on this. I know you've got the latest. I can see that. And uh, um, Josh, I know you're monitoring conditions. Just chime in whenever you get anything new. All right. Zach, we're going to send it on you with the latest storm track. Hey, Dan. So, yeah, I, I think the latest scan shows that couplet kind of starting to tighten. Ooh, so man. the um, velocity the uh, velocity signature definitely showing that rotation. And, again, this storm is right now it's in southern Washington County making its way towards Madison County. You can see the circulation right there. It's kind of right in between Wyola, kind of Hazel Valley, kind of right over that couplets. And this storm, again, is traveling east 50 miles per hour. So that's the fresh storm track. This is where that storm seems to be taking its easterly track. Church of Christ, 1.53 a.m., 2 a.m., Ogden Church, and 2 a.m., oh. Witter. So get to your safe place right now. This storm is life-threatening. This is a tornado warning, and this storm is, is um, heading right your way if you were in that polygon. So if we zoom out, we can get the info on this storm. Uh, hey, Zach. Yeah, Dan. I want to bring up Mega Doppler again because this storm is about to put down the tornado. Uh, this rotation has increased dramatically. Uh, now, you'll see the circulation doesn't really show up, but I want you to go up one degree in tilt as we get rid of the range folding, and you're about to see one intense circulation. So what you're looking at, radar uh, winds that are moving away from the radar and towards the radar, there's your couplet, there's your circulation. You have to go up a degree in tilt in order to see that. If we look at the normalized rotation with this, Again, here's your tornado acronym, downstairs, under something, center of house, keep away from windows. Uh, there's that ro radar rotation that's showing up. Let me give you an idea of what this means. So you'll notice you've got tornado possible in the yellow shaded area. This is not exactly the way it, it's, uh, it pans out, but tornado likely in the red shaded area and a strong tornado in parts of southeastern Washington County. This is moving over an area that is definitely susceptible to seeing a tornado potential. So let's put on some uh, roads on here if we can, Zach, and take a look at the latest if that if those are popping up. So we got Olive Road. I know these areas. Uh, you've got uh, several areas. Uh, there's Brandon Mountain Road. 
boy, you talk about a tornado breeding ground in southeastern Washington County. Those are definitely areas that could be impacted. And uh, let's continue to see if there's any type of debris signature. Be looking at that, guys, to see if we're – oh, it looks like PTDS is showing tornado potential. In fact, uh, as we take a look here, let's let's check this out. Yes, I think we do have a confirmed tornado, and that's going to be showing up. you got to go up one more tilt. This is debris that's getting lofted in the air. There's your circulation. If we look at our tornado detector, you're going to notice uh, there it is. We've got it detected. I think the circulation ramping up. You can see the line underneath that triangle. This is an area that will most likely be experiencing tornado uh, uh, potential. Uh, Josh, let us know if you're seeing anything in terms of this storm. Uh, it looks like maybe we've got a tornado on the ground and we're picking it up on a tornado on the debris detector. Uh, Dan, the velocity couplet doesn't look to be co-located with the reflectivity. But uh, Well, that again, though, we're getting yeah. bad radar data in the lowest levels. So that I just true. would be cautious on that. Uh, and the, uh, the circulation in the lower levels as we go up in a couple of tilts, you're right. There could be a little bit of what we call non-uniform beam filling uh, as well as some side lobe contamination. That is always a possibility. But let's see if that continues to translate eastward. Let's put the uh, correlation coefficient on there and let's see if we can see uh, those debris signatures. Yeah, that's a little bit messy for sure. Let's go down in a couple of tilts and see if we can see anything that's uh, showing up on there. So uh, nothing really as of now. So maybe maybe a little bit of a false trip potentially. Let's go back to the reflectivity and the velocity image. Let's do a split screen on here. Um, so like you said, yeah, the velocity image and the circulation is well out ahead of it. Uh, so I think you're right. Good, good call. Good call, Peyton, on that. And uh, go ahead and elaborate, too, what you mean by that with the reflectivity and the uh, velocity signature not being co-located. Right. So we can actually take camera one over on Ox 3, and I can show you what I'm talking about here. So we have the mega Doppler. We have the tip. This is where your tornado would be located. This is where you would see that tightest rotation. But as you can see on velocity, it's way out ahead. It should be closer to down here, but it's way up here. So that just shows you that there's a little bit of side lobe contamination where the beam, it's not just a nice solid beam. There's a little bit of waviness on the edge. So it's getting those false trips. And I think that is my, what, that's probably what we're seeing right now. Of course, if we get a couple scans later, and of course, as Dan mentioned, when we go up in tilts, it's not really a problem. But at the lowest tilt, we are seeing that maybe a little bit of contamination. There's the next scan on your screen, and it still looks to be out ahead just a little bit. So I think we are seeing just a little bit of contamination. Well, let me go up in tilts and see what we can see. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. All right, so right now we're on the lowest tilt. Now let me go up a little bit. I'll uh, take a mega Doppler. We can, take, we can go back to camera one with um, Peyton showing it. So again, he, Peyton, here is the next tilt up. So get a little more located yeah, yeah. that's a little more co-located mm -hmm. right on the eastern end of that but uh I, i'm pretty cautious about that that circulation looks pretty intense and like you mentioned the env environment that's showing up uh, does support uh, rapid tornado genesis let's continue to monitor conditions here on nws chat yeah so. i'm gonna go back and look at the chat All right, so really great uh, analysis there, Peyton. Appreciate that so much. And uh, sometimes you got to go up and tilt just a little bit to get the latest view. Um, so I will say that the tornado detected was uh, maybe a little premature. So, uh, but sometimes you get that location uh, area with the storm. But Peyton handling that, saying you know that was exactly where it was uh, not associated with the reflectivity. Josh, I can hear you in the background. I know it's tough to keep up with storms in this type of uh, evening, or should I say early morning, in this environment, in the terrain. Uh, tell me what you're seeing with this storm. Anything visual? Well, right now, Dan, uh, Dan I'm in, uh, just getting outside of downtown Winslow, and I'll tell you what, it is uh, just nothing but trees and nothing but hills. At this point, I'm about to turn left on the U.S. Uh, 71. And at this point, I think I'm not going to be able to catch up to the storm. Mm -hmm. But I will be able to go along the path, and, and we'll see if there's any damage as well. So we'll be the first uh, to, to see if there's any damage on the path of the storm. I know uh, I heard you guys in the background talking about everything. It's, 
kind of tough for me to look at radar right now, honestly, because I'm focusing so much on the road. Yeah, very good idea. Wet, uh, hydroplane potential definitely there for sure. So just trying to be very careful, trying to be safe right now. Uh, but I am, uh, you know, to be honest, I'm falling behind the storm quite a bit. It's, it's very difficult during the early morning hours to, to keep up with that uh, in this area of the country. Uh, but uh, I am now on U.S. Highway 71, so I just got on 71 right now. Uh, in about 3.4 miles, I'm going to get back onto Highway 74 again. Uh, so we're just going along the uh, the path of the storm, trying to see if there's any uh, signs of damage or anything, and mm-hmm. then we'll, we'll go from there. Okay. Uh, but just keep it a close up on things and just staying safe. All right. Well, appreciate it. We'll continue to keep you on here, but uh, if you start to lose it too much, just ch- kind of chime in and say, Hey, we're jumping ship on this one, and uh, rightfully so. It's going to be tough to keep up. Now it's going to be crossing uh, into already in southwestern Madison County. There's the tornado warning that's in effect. I know you guys are wondering where this is headed and how fast it's going to get there. So we're going to have Zach Gilday give us a storm track. Let me know when you're ready as we uh, track the latest with this. I do want to bring up that velocity image as we look at uh, now it might be a little more co-located. Uh, with the velocity image. So let's check this out here if we can bring that up. And so still a little bit of an interesting radar data where you're noticing um, towards away circulation, not really co-located with the TVS. So it looks like still some, yeah, that's definitely a a messy signal for sure. So we're going to continue to monitor the southwestern flank of that storm. Sometimes what appear to be couplets are essentially not. And so that's something that... uh, that we'll watch. I will say this, we have uh, also to uh, a weather product that is our um, uh, basically a storm net. Let's give this a, a look if we can and see what it shows for the tornado potential. We'll, uh, we'll check that out. That'll be something maybe uh, that we can look at. So stand by here. I know you got the new track. Uh, we'll take a look at that and uh, that's going to be on weather one. So let's bring that up here. Um, before we go to storm net, let's do a track on this. So there's a new Updated warning. Zach, take us through as that storm tracks to the northeast. Hey, Dan. Yeah, so this is a um, tornado warning. Again, this is going to be in effect until 2.30 a.m. this morning. Radar indicated rotation with this tornado warn storm. Here's a fresh track. We've been looking at that rotation, and and some of the scans have been a bit defined. That latest scan um, kind of upticked that rotation just a bit. But you can see if you were in the path of that red polygon, you need to be in your safe place right now. This is a life-threatening tornado warning. And I put that storm track in there. That's that red triangle. Taking a look at that. If you are in any of the areas, uh, Church of Christ, 156 a.m., Ogden Church, 2.02 a.m. The storm is coming your way. Beyond that, Witter at at around 2.04 a.m. Venus, 2.09 a.m. this morning. Venus Church, 2.09 as well. 2.10 a.m. Reynolds, and then beyond that, 2.15 a.m. Weather. So if you are in those areas, you are under a tornado warning, and you have to be in your safe place right now because this is a radar-indicated rotation storm, and, and it's, it's had a history. It's been it's been tracking across southern Washington County, making its way into southern Madison County, and um, d- definitely um, worth watching here. Dan, you seeing anything on the um, velocity scan there with the Mega Doppler? Yeah, I still get that uh, iffy data in the lowest tilts. Kind of interesting. We've been dealing with a lot of radar issues in the lowest tilts, at least for uh, KINX, which is the INOLA radar as well as SRX. It might be because it's just so there's a lot of moisture in the atmosphere and sometimes you're getting uh, a lot of returns off of those weak signals. And also, as, as Peyton mentioned, that um, silo contamination, which is something that we were seeing. But there's a track of the storm. Uh, let's go to, if we can, I wanted to go to weather uh, two. We'll take a look at tornado safety. This is, gives you an information on what to do. Uh, this is your tornado precaution. So you want to get as low as you possibly can. We always tell the kids downstairs, you got a, a bedroom on a second story, you get to that first story. Under something, you want to get under the pillows, blanket, a mattress, a helmet for the kids if you're at home or adults. Center of the house, you want to put as many walls in between you and the outside as possible and keep away from windows. Those windows will open, the tornado will open it for you. So you make sure that you want to uh, avoid that. So Looks like we do have a storm net, something that we're beta testing, if you will. Uh, we'll bring that up on weather one. So here's the probability within the next hour. It, it shows that, yeah, we already got a tornado warning, but it kind of only keeps it at around 20 to 30%, it looks like. 
uh, for the area. What about the three-hour um, tornado potential? We'll check that out, and uh, there, there it is moving off to the northeast. So kind of on the lower end of the ratings, and uh, yet the storm definitely showing still the potential for uh, tornado potential. So uh, let's go back to the reflectivity now. We're starting maybe on that southwestern flank. A little bit more of that circulation. Is that a little more co-located? Still out ahead of it, but uh, maybe a little bit more. Looks like that cell might be on a weakening trend. Let's go ahead and we'll look at the velocity image here. And still kind of elongated, if you will, not a very tight couplet in the lower levels. So we're losing some network connectivity, says uh, Tulsa National Weather Service. So here we are at 151. Uh, but there's that area that we're watching the radar winds that are moving real rapidly towards the radar and then away from the radar. So there's your circulation. Uh, Witter, you need to be taking your tornado precautions. There's that uh, starting to ramp up maybe a little bit. That was a little more co-located, uh, especially on that eastern tip of that supercell. What do you guys think as we're looking at that? That core looks a little more impressive and we'll see if that mesocyclone detection algorithm is starting to show up on that yeah i think so dan to the southwest of witter um need to be getting to your safe place um the storm the circulation is definitely there um it's not confirmed yes but um keep that in mind it, it could be so we, we're going to be watching the storm again moving, moving pretty quickly 50 miles per hour to, to the east we got dan's looking at the normalized rotation yeah. right there yeah, you don't want to, like, like I said, you don't want to, got to watch out for this. Let's put this into one panel if we can, um, first of all, just to give you an idea. So there's the one panel. There's the cell that's coming in. Witter, you need to be taking your tornado precautions because this storm's moving east quickly. Uh, our Huntsville weather bug network camera is down, unfortunately. We just had some bad lucks with some of these cameras, but there's that circulation associated with this cell that we really need to be monitoring. And I think this is ramping up a little bit. We'll continue to, to watch and see if that circulation does in fact start to increase in intensity. So one isolated cell, are we seeing any additional development out west? And uh, Josh, I know you're continuing to monitor those Facebook Live comments uh, as we have a lot of people watching the stream and rightfully so with severe weather, there are a lot of people that don't have to be watching anymore if they're concerned about severe weather. What are you seeing? Any comments at all that are uh, pressing that need to be answered uh the one comment that i'm seeing kind of repeated by numerous viewers is wondering who's in the clear and who has to stay up over the next couple of hours okay. downstream from these storms that are headed to the east everybody in northwest arkansas in benton and washington county storms are done you're still seeing some isolated activity but that's not really going to do much carroll county you're done this storm that's moving uh, west northwestward you know it is going to get a view of this good storm <laughs> that's our gaither mountain weather bug network camera uh, but uh, we're going to be pointing it southwest you'll be looking into a tower however we will get a, at least a better view of the lightning with that approaching storm i actually want to bring that up right now if we can oh oh hey josh what you got uh yeah i i actually did have a bit of a visual on the storm for once oh you did okay on the back side of it um but i will say uh upon further review because i'm on the back side of the storm i think that was uh, uh oh okay we're in some damage now okay so we, we've seen some damage a little bit of tree damage now where oh, i am okay uh tell me exactly want, where you're yeah, at so, so we know and we can co-locate it with the circulation yes yeah so right now uh i'm located on uh U.S. Highway 71. Uh, I'm heading uh, north towards the uh, Elkins area right now. Still trying to figure out where I am. I'm right now uh, just off to the uh, south of South White, Heart, uh, White House Road and County Road 118. Um, I think I'm near, uh, let me see here, I'm near Greasy Creek right now. So I'm behind the storm, uh, but uh, when I was looking at the uh, lightning flashes, I actually think I saw... Um, some classic scary looking clouds. Uh, so I think we saw some scud on uh -huh. the back side of the system. Uh, but you could definitely see the structure of the storm, which I will say the structure of the storm is very, very impressive. It's got that kind of classic supercell look to it on the back side. So uh, again, I'm, I'm getting a better visual of it now, but I think upon further review, what I was seeing was uh, just scud 
and maybe not the Lorraine. I think the Lorraine is a little bit too far east of where I am right now. Uh, but definitely still uh, very impressive. I have noticed a bit of an uptick in the lightning once again. That was how I was able to get my visual yeah. of the storm. I did see a little bit of tree damage uh, as well. Well, uh, uh, describe that tree damage. Describe that tree damage yeah, so that you were a, seeing. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, it wasn't just uh, – there was large limbs uh, over the road. Okay. Uh, and uh, yeah, along uh, U.S. Highway 71. So this was, again, near the Greasy Creek area and uh, County Road uh, 118. Mm-hmm. And uh, there was uh, large twigs across the road. Um, hard to determine if that was uh, straight-line wind damage or not. But as I keep driving north now, I see a couple signs that are uh, facing a different direction as well uh, than okay. they normally do. Okay. So there, there might have been uh, maybe some, uh, what it looks like, maybe straight-line wind damage because it looks consistent. It looks like it's in a uniform pattern uh, facing off to the north and east. Uh, but now, now starting to see a little bit of sporadic damage okay. uh, showing up now. Just to the, uh, this is the south of the Elkins area again. Uh, that particular damage is there, County Road 118 on U.S. Highway 71. All right, so I see you east of Brugger, uh, Brentwood. I see you east of Brentwood. I want to do this real quick. Let's put on the normalized rotation and then let's click the sigma, uh, so we can get essentially the track, the maximum track. So go ahead and click that sigma at the top of the screen. Uh, on the mega Doppler source. And what that's going to do is that shows you the rotation track, essentially, kind of like MRMS uh, tornado tracks that uh, meteorologists look at. So let's zoom out here just a little bit. And uh, there's Josh Rugger located right in this region. And let's zoom in on southeastern Washington County. And I, it looks like maybe a little bit of a rotation track. Keep in mind that there's that circulation that might have been rolling through. Uh, let's look at the PTDS, too, on this same uh, version here. Let's see if there's anything that shows up. So maybe a little bit of activity right there, but that doesn't look like a very classic, what we mean, uh, tornado debris signature that's confirmed by the radar, uh, known mm-hmm. as a TDS. We'll zoom off to the east and zoom out here a little bit. and But you'll notice that it does pick up on a little bit of that damage, so um, at least potential damage. So that's something that we'll look at. Uh, One more thing here. Let's look at the reflectivity, and that will show the storm track over time as it makes its way through. That's definitely the brunt of the supercell, and that's why we're seeing uh, the the most likely area for damage. All right, let's get off of that maximum signal location, and there you see that supercell. Still tornado warn. Tornado warning goes until approximately – well, Zach, you got the latest information here. I think 215 – if I'm not mistaken, or maybe 2.30. Hey, Dan, yeah, I got a fresh storm track on that. Josh, okay. if we can take weather one, um, got that loaded up. So this is a tornado warning. You're looking at Madison County. Just got a new scan right there. This warning is going to be in effect until 2.30 a.m. this morning. This is a tornado warning. So if you were in this red polygon, you need to be in your safe place right now. And I did make a storm track. We just got a new scan in, and – this track has taken us to Witter. So actually the, the brunt of that circulation should be over Witter right now. And then beyond that, weather is 212. So the storm has kind of increased in speed, kind of going east at around 55 miles per hour. And then uh, beyond that, Elkhorn Church by around 2.18 a.m. So we did get a new scan. We probably should look at the velocity imagery. So if we could take Mega Doppler, we can look at that right there. And, and it's still looking a bit broad but we're still tracking it. That circulation looks to be just to the south of Witter, making its way east. Let's take up weather too, real quick. We're take up weather too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can you you can see it right there. Now the uh, circulation is the um in the area where we see the the, the green meeting that red just south of Witter. That's the area that we are looking at. That's why the storm is a tornado warning because we're seeing that circulation. And again, if you were in that red polygon, if you're in Witter. Weather is need you to take your tornado precautions right now, even if you're in Red Star, because this, this storm could make a southeasterly track. Dan is circling it right there. That's where the circulation is. So, again, um, just south of Witter, the storm is traveling east, but that doesn't mean it's going to continue traveling east if you were in this red polygon. So, it seems to be heading right towards weathers. So, you need to be in your safe place right now. We have the acronym. Ooh strengthened a little bit more strengthened a little bit yeah you can definitely see it now it's kind of to the southeast of winter you can see dan circling it right there 
Now, let me go ahead and put that on there and show you exactly what we're talking about. So there's the area of rotation. Brighter colors now showing up, which means a stronger velocity signature of winds going away from the radar, winds going towards. Now, this is one thing that we can do here. We can take a look at the velocity signature on um, – on, uh, uh, so this is SRX on uh, max. So this is our max signature. Let's go ahead and we'll click this. And we're going to do a query here as we take a look at the velocity signature. So I'm going to go ahead and hit right on the gate to gate. So velocity is about 58 miles an hour away from the radar outbound. But the gate to gate shear is approaching 141. So that's uh, pretty intense right there. Then you can see uh, velocity showing up at 108. Now it's just one pixel. but Something that we need to watch, meaning there's a mid-level circulation that's really starting to ramp up. Josh, are you getting a visual on this? I can still hear you in the background. You're still um, monitoring the storm. I know you got a visual on it not too long ago. It had a lowering, a uh, potential scud clouds, maybe even a little bit of a wall cloud. Are you seeing anything now at all by any chance? Not at this time, but I will have a better visual within the next five to ten minutes or so. Because uh, right now I'm traveling northbound along uh, State Highway 74, and then I'm going to get to the Elkins area and then turn south and east. And once I turn south and east, I'm going to get a much better view of the storm again. So right now, I'm kind of traveling a little bit uh, vertical to the storm off to the north right now. I know it's moving off to the east, but unfortunately, I don't have a road network that goes east right now. <laughs> there's, um, there's no road so network. Yeah. yeah. It's no just road network. Exactly. Winding roads. Yeah. yeah. Northwest Arkansas, you want to yeah. be a, a, a real accomplished storm spotter? Uh, come to Northwest Arkansas. If you can spot storms in this area, then uh, you're a really good navigator, that's for sure. It's a, it's a difficult place to, <laughs> to track storms, no doubt. But we do have some of those roads that are plotted up on Mega Doppler as we're getting kind of pinpoint now that we have a good idea of the circulation. So if you live on Penn Mountain Road and Madison County Road 3345, 3350, 3375, if you're hearing some of these roads and you're like, that's me. You need to be taking your tornado precautions. But what we mean by that is uh, duck, the acronym duck, downstairs, under something, center of house, keep away from windows. This is a radar indicated tornado. However, Josh, you did mention that you had damage. Still early to say if it was a uh, potential circulation that came through or tornado damage, but uh, still something that we need to obviously monitor. I was absolutely through the path of the storm. That is for sure. Yeah. Uh, but you're right, like you said, you know, and, and I was looking at it, it was it was very uniform, which you typically see uniform damage in terms of the way it's facing with uh, straight line wind. Um, however, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean there wasn't an area of rotation that passed over there. I, I have no doubt that there was, uh, but at least in that particular spot, uh, again, near County Road 118, I think that was straight line wind damage based on what I saw. I want to bring up something here, Josh. Appreciate that report. We're going to bring up our Gaither Mountain Weatherbug Network camera in Harrison. Now, the camera technology has gotten better over the years. So what we're going to be able to do is uh, let's go ahead and point this to the southwest here as we track these storms. So this is our Gaither Mountain Weatherbug Network camera. And uh, we'll take a look here. I'm going to bring this up full as we look at uh, one, three. Yeah. All right. Go ahead and uh, we'll bring that up. And I could control that, by the way, but uh, go ahead and move that to the southwest. So we'll take a look here at this camera. You'll see it move live on screen here. And uh, there you got. So I know it's going to be looking a little bit more into, you know, a tower, but let's uh, maybe take it just a little bit more to the south. And new tornado warning being issued. This is likely for Newton County right here. We'll take a look at that and get you the latest information on this warning. There it is. Uh, and that's going to be a a view of this storm as it comes into southwestern um, sections of, uh, well, northwestern, excuse me, western and northwestern sections of Newton County. So Newton County still in our weather coverage area. That's why we have that Gaither Mountain Weather Bug Network camera. It's going to be looking to the southwest as this cell is uh, starting to increase in intensity. It looks like the radar data might have done something interesting right there. Yeah, huh? I think we're having an issue here with the radar data from Fort Smith. Okay. They've been saying that they've had some issues with uh, uh, kind of some power surges and some of the other activity that's going on. So let's switch radars here and we'll take a look at it from INX. INX a little bit farther away from this storm, but there it is until 3 a.m. Look at this, 208 
uh, Tuesday morning, radar indicated Newton County uh, circulations is definitely there. It is something that we're going to have to watch. And I, I want to bring this up here if we can here. Uh, we got weather one. Let's bring it up full screen if we can on Gaither Mountain. Uh, so I can kind of uh, we'll move around here and we'll take a look at this here. So let me go ahead and adjust this. Yeah, we'll take a look at Gaither Mountain, bring that up full. We're going to do this on Weather 3. So this is one of our newer weather bug network cameras, and we're looking off, you know, into a tower. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to move the camera over to the southwest. And uh huh, what is that? That pole on the tower? Well, I don't know. Um, no, I was looking off of the distance. It looked like the cloud. Uh, so what is that that's there? A, that's the pole. Oh, yeah, it is. All right, good deal. That was pretty <laughs> nerve-wracking there. I mean, in SLP, scary-looking pole. Scary-looking pole. I see that, yeah. That's funny. Here's what I saw, by the way, just real quick with the contrast. I just want to let you know. This is what it looked like. This looked like the lowering right in here. Let's bring me up on the weather wall. This looked like the lowering right here, you know, kind of like the base um, and, and the contrast. Not the case. Uh, you're right. That's just the, <laughs> that's just the, that's just the tower. Uh, Josh, you, you, uh, I hear you kind of chiming in. Let me know if you got something, need to say anything. Yeah, just uh, right now, uh, I'm seeing a little bit of just leave debris now, a lot of leave debris on the road. Okay. Uh, right now, I'm traveling, um, I'm traveling uh, on uh, State Highway 74 still. I'm about to get towards uh, State Highway 16. I'm just off to the south and east of the Elkins area right now, uh, near East Black Oak Road. Uh, so I'm traveling eastbound right now on uh, State Highway 74, about to get towards uh, State Highway 16, and uh, definitely, you know, seen a lot of leaf debris. I haven't seen any serious debris since I was here uh, County Road uh, 118, but uh, starting to get uh, closer and closer to where that storm actually moved over areas. So as I uh, it's a little bit farther east, I, I don't have doubts that I'm probably going to see maybe a little bit more tree debris in the leaf, so I'll keep you posted on what I'm seeing. All right, sounds good. I can tell you we saw a tower right in the way. It looked like a, looked like a storm off in the distance, but uh, clearly not. So um, all right, here's That's a look. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes tough to see at night. I know those cameras can see the base. So there's the circulation. Uh, there's the uh, rotation that's still showing up. You know, this rotation is no laughing matter as we uh, zoom in on Mega Doppler. Let's bring this up on Mega Doppler full. Uh, that's pretty intense. Weathers, you need to be taking your tornado precautions immediately. That circulation is co-located with the uh, storm. This is probably one of the tighter couplets that we've seen throughout the night. Low-level winds are increasing. The storm taking a little bit more of an easterly track. These are some of the areas that are going to be impacted. It's too far away to, to actually visualize uh, with our weather bug network camera at Gaither. It would have a better view in Huntsville, but Huntsville's camera is down. So these are the areas that are going to be impacted. Madison 3655, uh, Madison 3625, State Highway 21. All those areas are going to be impacted, and we need to be watching for potential debris. So uh, Josh and uh, as well as uh, Wyatt, if you're still here, Wyatt might have went home. It's an early morning, but uh, there's that circulation right there. Let's continue to see if we've got any type of debris that's showing up. Because that's, uh, kind of, that's the kind of circulation that can ramp up pretty rapidly. And before you know it, you got something that's uh, showing up. No, no debris yet, no debris signature. Still a ways from, away from the radar. So if we do see debris, we know that we have a circulation that's uh, prompting lofting debris several thousand feet in the air. Don't see that right now, though. Still having that issue with, uh, uh, with the radar, aren't we? Let me take a look here at what's going on. Looks like uh, weather two. Um, I, yeah, okay, never mind. My computer, my iPad, I'm going to have to reset that. Zach, let's take us through a storm track on this, on live Doppler radar, as we continue to monitor the latest. It looks like you've got a new one here on weather one. Take it away, Zach. Hey, Dan. Yeah, I got a fresh track on that storm. So this storm is moving from Madison County into Newton County. This is a tornado warning, and it, it, is, it is fresh off the press. So... It's going to be in effect till 3 o'clock this morning. If you are in the red area, you need to be in your safe place right now. This is a life-threatening tornado warning storm. Radar indicated 
And you can see if you are in the areas that are indicated there, definitely um, need to be on alert. Weathers and in about one minute. So you need to be in your safe place right now. This is a life-threatening storm. Beyond that, Box 3, 2.21 a.m. Mount Sherman around 2.33 a.m. 2.34 a.m. Union Hill School. So this storm is moving pretty quickly and moving east at about 50 miles per hour. Jasper, 2.37 a.m. Pruitt around 2.41 a.m. Hasty 246, Yardell 250, and then Western Grove. A little might be um, there at around 2:45 a.m. If it doesn't change the uh, path, but again, this is a easterly track and and a life-threatening tornado warning. Uh, we, we're looking at the velocity, but if we look at Mega Doppler, uh, if we're looking at the reflectivity, if we look at Mega Doppler, we can see the velocity might be starting to. Take me off of the more. wall, guys, so when I walk in front, uh, we don't have me walking in front of the wall. i got to continue to monitor the weather uh, uh, as well as NWS chat. Thank you. Appreciate it, Josh. Sorry, Zach. I'm, I'm trying to see here, and Peyton was mentioning, too, how uh, some of the radar data is down. But uh, go ahead, continue. I'm sorry. Yeah, so there's a little bit of an issue with, with um, the Fort Smith radar. So right now we're on the Tulsa radar. And again, this is a tornado warning in effect till three o'clock in the morning. The storm is is making its way from Madison County into Newton County. So you know, if you are in the path of the storm, this is a life-threatening tornado warning. You need to be in your safe place right now. And if you are in the box of the areas listed, um, the storm is headed your way. So it's going to be an area boxy at around 222. Mount Sherman, 233. Beyond that, Jasper, 237. So we're moving pretty quickly at about 50 miles per hour to the east. Pruitt, 241. And then Hasty, 246. Beyond that, heading towards Western Grove. So we're on this storm. Um, it is showing that rotation. And it's also producing some hail, some damage you wind, some, some uh, torrential rain. So definitely have to keep an eye on that. And um, Peyton, I see you at Ox 3. Do you have anything to add here? Uh, yeah, we can just have me up with the radar loop behind me, but there is, and Josh Weisel, the intern, showed me this, there is a massive radar outage, probably around 60 to 70% of radars across the country are out, just to name a few that are out around us. Little Rock has been out since uh, just after 1 o'clock. Springfield has been out since one, uh, about 12.50. Tulsa is still up, Fort Smith still up, but Shreveport, a little further south, that's down. You go up towards Kansas City, that's still up. But just to name a few, there's a lot of radars down around us. So we're going to have to be mindful as we go on and keep track of these storms that these radars could go down. And we'll definitely have to keep you updated because this is just a nationwide problem of a lot of radars being out. Yeah, thanks, Payne. Yeah, so it seems to be an issue not just unique to us. It has, seems to be happening around the country. Not a good time for that issue because we have a life-threatening storm, and you can see it right there. We're looking at southern Madison County making its way into Newton County. Weathers, the storm is passing through. Beyond that, it's going to be making its way towards Mount Sherman Union Hill School. Put that tornado track on there because – the, this is where the storm is going. The storm moving pretty quickly. You can see it, another scan right there, making its way into Newton County. Again, it's going to be in the Jasper area by around 2.37 a.m. This tornado warning is going to be in effect until 3 o'clock this morning. And uh, beyond that, it's going to be heading towards Hasty, 2.46 a.m. And then eventually heading up into the Western Grove area. So um, the storm could change direction, but right now it's on that easterly track. And you're looking at the reflectivity right now that the center of the storm seems to be making its way to the east of Weathers. And I'm looking at the Mega Doppler. If you can take that up, I'm looking at the velocity scan right here. And it's kind of looking like the rotation might be getting a bit more broad, but these storms tend to cycle. Um, that circulation could intensify. So, again, we're, we're looking at the Weathers area making making its way into newton county we're seeing the velocity we're, we're definitely seeing a couplet um might have been a bit stronger on a few previous scans but we're on this storm it's about to enter into newton county and if, and if we look at the reflectivity we can take a wider view and see really where it is so it's about in the eastern portion of madison county making its way into newton county ponca you are in that tornado warning, Jasper, Parthenon, and 
beyond that western grove is going to be on the far eastern fringes of this tornado warning. It's going to be in effect till three o'clock in the morning. Here's a wide view of what we're looking at. Beyond that, we're seeing, or behind that, we're seeing some activity too. Nothing of, of that nature looks to be warned. So that's why we're just on this storm. We've been on this storm for about an hour and a half, maybe even up to up to two hours because the storm definitely showing that rotation. We can do a two panel box right here. So the, the main center of the storm seems to be making its way from weathers and might even be taking a more of a northeasterly track towards, towards um, Ponca. It's kind of hard to get an exact track of this storm. Yeah, it, that, that last scan kind of had it making a little bit further of a northeasterly track there. So around this storm, tornado warning, if you're just hopping on, this storm has has had a history of rotation all the way through southern Madison County. Now we are in Newton County making its way in. And if we take weather one, I can show you the storm track that I made. And we can just scoot that over just a bit and get some new times because the storm is moving pretty quickly. And, and again, this warning is in effect till 3 o'clock in the morning. We're in Newton County. And this storm is making its way eastward. Jasper at around 2.30 8 a.m. Pruitt 2:43 a.m. Yardell 2:51 a.m. this morning. So you need to be in your safe place right now. This is a tornado warning. This is a life-threatening storm. And we can get up the acronym. This is what we say. So again, if you were in Newton County, stand by while it, while it loads. The acronym is DUCK. So you need to be downstairs. You need to get so downstairs means the lowest floor of your building. If you're in an apartment building, you need to be on that first floor. A basement is the best place to be. You need to be under something, cover your head. If you have a helmet, you need to put that on because if something hits you in your head, that, that could be it. So this is a life-threatening tornado warning for Newton County. Center of the building, best place to be uh, underneath a staircase. Usually that's in the center of the building. And keep away from windows. That is a really important tip. You do not want to be anywhere near a window because the storm may open up that window for you. Hey, Les. Now we can go back to the radar. Let me just – actually, let's just take Mega Doppler while that loads, Josh. So we're looking at Mega Doppler right now. So, again, the circulation making its way. Now it's kind of to the east of weathers. The storm might be making more of a northeasterly track towards Ponca. So, again, we're in, we're in Newton County. And I could take velocity full there. So let me go back a few scans. You can see it. It's kind of it was kind of taking a more of an easterly track through weathers, and then the past couple of scans might be taking it a, li a little bit up to the northeast. So still having some issues with the Fort Smith radar. I'm gonna load up the Tulsa radar. Stand by. Fort Smith radar does still show it's up as of right now. Hey guys, make sure that we don't have Cody uh, Hudson's screen because uh, he he's right on the storm. So um, his dot yeah. is green, and I'm talking to. Uh, I'm. I got I got him up on uh, weather two. Okay. So we got a screen. We also have Les Murphy too that's calling right now, and he's mentioning the sirens are going off in Jasper. Oh, we just got a lightning strike that I saw on uh, our weather boy network camera from Baker Mountain. You can definitely see that pole uh, in the tower off in the distance. Hey, uh, hey Les, uh, take your tornado precautions, man. This is coming. Towards the Ponca area as well as Jasper. In fact, it's uh, it's making a beeline for Jasper. So, yep, yep. It did. It made, made the right turn. We're watching it close. So, uh, let's go ahead and uh, um, uh, if you want, uh, I'm going to text you a phoner line and you can give that information. Uh, you can give us a call. All right. Yep. I'll text you that number here shortly. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Sorry. We're in the middle of live coverage. I tried muting my microphone. I know it's not working. I don't know. I don't know why if I mute my mic, it still is on. But Josh, if you hear me talking, you can just uh, mute the mic. I know you're balancing everything right now so you're looking at a two panel of 
of a reflectivity and velocity. We can see that circulation, definitely a tight couplet to the southwest of Ponca. So if you are in Newton County, if you're in the Ponca area, the Jasper area, the Parthenon area, Compton area, you need to be in your safe place right now. This is a life-threatening tornado warning in effect for Newton County. And this will go until three o'clock in the morning. And, and then this storm has had that rotation for a couple of hours. And, and at this point in time, the rotation seems to be the tightest as a new scan right there. Um, again, still making its way to the east, moving pretty quickly. So this storm is no joke. It is not moving slow. It's moving quickly. You need to be in your safe spot. You can see where it is right now. The, the velocity couplet is south of Ponca. It's going to be making its way towards Jasper. Peyton, anything in the NWS chat? Are they ch talking about this storm? Um, no, nothing new recently. All right, I'm going to take velocity full so you can get a good view of where that couplet is exactly. Don't forget it's the National Webster South Little Rock now on the chat. Okay. Yeah. okay. So we're looking at the couplet on Mega Doppler, and, and while you can see that, I can get a fresh storm track up. Yeah, here's a, here's a reflectivity. This is a tornado warning. We're in Newton County. Circulation's really ramping up, uh, and uh, Jasper right in the path of this storm. So we've got Cody Hudson. Do we have his live stream? Oh, uh, Cody Hudson. Yes, we do have it up on weather too. Let's go ahead, and you can bring up my microphone. So yeah, I was just sorry. I was talking with Les Murphy. He's calling. It says tornado sirens are going off in the background. Uh, and uh, that's in the Newton County area. And uh, this is the track of the storm as it moves to the northeast. And so we're having them call into the phoner line. You can see Jasper High School is going to be impacted 237. So you have about 10 minutes or so before this storm moves in. And uh, we don't have anything confirmed. This is radar indicated, but the circulation has ramped up a little bit. Uh, it kind of goes through cycles a, a little bit uh, as, we, as we watch the circulation. As you mentioned, it's there, kind of weakens there but it looks like it was kind of ramping up uh, probably at its strongest so here's weather two stream this is from uh cody hudson one of our storm spotters if we can go ahead and bring up weather two the circulation just really ramped up in the last moment so uh we're looking off to the west this is just to the south of jasper looking west high up on a hill we'll see if we had any type of visual uh with the storm coming in uh but south of ponca if we look at mega doppler too I'm going to bring up a, a, a standby here. We're going to put up a storm track, Mega Dopplers, with his live stream. So there's that circulation. A new update should be coming out shortly, and the couplet ramps up pretty dramatically, as you'll see here in just a second, once that new radar image uh, becomes available. Uh, I think you're going to see a much tighter couplet. Um, so, uh, there, so there you got a little bit of lightning off of the distance as we're seeing that cell. Um, and by the way, if uh, Josh, if, if we do get that phoner line uh, from Les Murphy, uh, let me know. You can hear those tornado sirens in the background. He can kind of give us some information on what he's seeing. I appreciate that. So, yeah, let me go to the latest radar image. I don't know if that's what we're seeing. Go to uh, Tilt 1, too. Make sure we're on Tilt 1. We should be seeing a lot tighter of a circulation on this. Well, I'm going back in time. Now I can go okay. forward. Okay, go forward. And this is tilt one, yep. south of Ponca. Interesting. Okay. Timestamp is about 2 224 in the morning. So yeah, that's that's what current. I'm seeing too. Interesting. Well, there you see the lightning off of the distance. So we have Cody Hudson, one of our storm spotters. And you can see him located just to the south of Jasper, looking off to the northwest as the circulation is making its way eastward. And that's going to be moving pretty much towards Jasper. Let's put this into motion. Why don't we put this as a – there, that's a, that's the couplet that I was letting you know about. And for some reason, it took a long time to update. But there's that circulation that really tightened up. A lot of lightning with this too as well. Yeah, that is making a beeline for the Jasper area. So definitely something to watch for sure as it comes in. You can also see those low-level winds increasing as well as that circulation makes its way east. So I know that uh, Newton County is, uh, you know, on the very fringe of our weather coverage area, but here's the deal. It's early in the morning. This is a dangerous storm. We know people can watch us on our stream. We also know, too, 
that at times they can pick up our signal. Uh, and so that's why we're covering this storm as it continues to move through Newton County. Plus, we have eyes out there in the field on this storm uh, watching it closely. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, – oh, yeah, lightning bolt right there. We're going to bring this up full in the meantime just to kind of check this out uh, as we get some uh, more intense lightning that continues to come in. Uh, go ahead and mute my microphone. I'm going to give a, a less a, a call here or at least text them uh, to, to give us – You can take weather one, Josh. I got a fresh storm track on that storm. So again, we're looking at Newton County. This is a tornado warning in effect till three o'clock in the morning. Radar indicator rotation. Storm is moving pretty quickly east at about 50 miles per hour. And if you are in that red polygon, you need to be in your safe place. This is a life-threatening tornado warning. And it's moving pretty quickly. It's going to be in the Jasper area by around 2.37 a.m. Jasper High School it's going to be right in that area. And then Jasper, 2.38 a.m. Beyond that, Flatwoods, Hasty, 2.47, Yardell, 2.51. And then beyond that, at 2.55, it's going to be in Western Grove. So Western Grove on the eastern the eastern fringes of this tornado warning. And then this, this storm, the history of the storm, it's been showing signs of rotation in Washington County. It went to Madison County. And now we're in Newton County. And the storm is back to being a tornado warning. So that's why we're on this storm. You can see the couplet. If we, if we can take a look at Mega Doppler now, Josh, we can see the latest velocity scan. And it, definitely that looks to be a bit tighter. So we're looking just to the southeast of Ponca. That is a tight circulation. And this storm is making its way east right towards Jasper. So Me Me Mega Doppler, if we can take that, Josh, it really shows that um, circulation. So we're looking at the area where we have the green and that meets that pink. That is the tightest circulation. We're looking at weather one right now. Yeah, he's got it now, weather two. Uh, we also have a storm spotter too, Cody Hudson. Uh, so, Zach, we want to get some information out in the field. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll go to that. Uh, Cody, I know you're on this storm south of Jasper looking to the west. This circulation really tightening up. Let us know if you're seeing anything and what where you're at and what you're seeing right now. Well, I'm about probably three or four miles. Oh, there's a large semi. I don't know if you could hear that going by. Let me clear. Let him clear. Uh, I'm about three or four miles south of Jasper, scenic point, just on Highway Seven. Uh, can't really see anything. There's some uh, clouds kind of blocking blocking my view. Uh, lightning seems to be picking up quite a bit here. So. So far, I haven't seen anything, but I'm definitely keeping my eye out. The rain just started here, too. So, Okay, so we do have a report from Les that the sirens are going off in Jasper, rightfully so. In fact, that circulation <laughs> yeah, is headed here, right actually. for Jasper. Uh, we don't have a visual on the storm from our Gaither Mountain Weatherbug Network camera. You can definitely see the lightning on the increase, though. Uh, no doubt about that. So. If you do see anything, chime in. It's going to be getting closer and closer. You're going to have a view looking straight north. How's your terrain looking north uh, with that cell? Um, it's going to be good. It's going to be, you know, I know we had that problem with the, the tower kind of blocking that south view. So I'm going to be com almost completely the opposite of that uh, of that tower. So yeah. I've got a really good view to the north and, and east um, overlooking Jasper, back towards Harrison and, and up that way. So I'll have a good view as it passes over me here. And, um, well, I thought I'd seen something. That, there's some like mid-level clouds that are kind of blocking. I can see some structure, but nothing that really sticks out to me right now. All right. Let me go ahead and we'll bring up the radar. So very, very tight circulation, probably one of the <laughs> tighter ones that we've seen. Uh, and uh, this storm has been persistently showing rotation, and that's why they've had the tornado warning continue to extend into. And, and then there's a new update right there uh, as we update the storm track. Uh, is that the updated storm track to warning right there, Zach, it looks like. And, yeah, that's that circulation. Peyton and uh, Zach and along with several others here monitoring the latest weather conditions. Josh, are we seeing any reports from Newton County at all? Uh, yes, we will. Hang on. Before we get to that, we do have photos from Ryan Limery okay. of uh, damage in Garfield. Really? Okay. From the straight line winds. Okay. That's good information. We can type that into NWS chat here. Yes. Do you mean, do me to pull it up on weather two? Uh, yeah, not right now. Not right now. Uh, yeah, not right now. We've got his live stream. I just want to watch this here just in case, cause we do have a, a current tornado warning. 
Um, so, and Cody, we still have you on. And the, the looks like the circulation is to your northwest by about, oh, I'm going to say 10 miles or so, approximately. Okay. And we'll take a look I, I here. I turned my camera. I tilted my camera up a little bit so you can get that a uh, little bit better. Uh, there's, the lightning seems to be backlighting it pretty good, so I tilted it up a little bit so it'll be in, in view there. Okay, sounds good. And you're looking right now in which direction? Let's step out. Currently, of the way I'm here. looking. I'm looking due north a little bit. Uh, if I turn to the more to the west, you're not really going to see anything because the trees. But I'm looking about due north at this time. All right. Let us know if you see any type of power flashes off in the distance or anything like that. So. Okay. When it when it gets a little closer, I'll uh, you see that there's that that row of fence up there. I'll push up a little bit further, and that'll give me a little bit better get a little better view down off in the valley. I'm just leaving myself in a position if anything were to change significantly, I can shoot straight south if I need be. So. Okay, sounds good. I'm going to move this camera just a little bit south so we can kind of get the view from Gaither Mountain. Now, here's the deal. Once we get east of that uh, Gaither Mountain site, we've got an amazing view once it clears the pole uh, looking off to the southeast. So we'll be able to see some, uh, hopefully, some of the structure. But uh, continuing to monitor this, uh, if you're just joining us, we've got a tornado warning in Newton County. Uh, it's in our weather coverage area. Uh, we do have people that monitor um, weather conditions there in the Newton County. This is an early morning tornado warning. Uh, we're approaching here a little after 2.30, almost 2.40 in the morning, and uh, multiple storms uh, that have moved through and uh, lightning increasing. Circulation still very evident. Isolated supercell coming through Newton County, moving right towards the Jasper area. So Jasper needs to be taking your tornado precautions. Looking at the radar again, too. We'll continue with this stream. I'll step out of the way just so we don't miss anything that's happening with this storm. Uh, but uh, definitely an intense intense lightning show. And uh, let's see if we can see any visual on our Weatherbug network camera from Gaither Mountain. It's at night, you know, in the early morning hours, tough to track these cells as they make their way east. So uh, let's see here. There's a look at that cell. You out, Josh? I'm out. All right. Thank Jacob's you. Jacob's taking over. Thank you for your help, sir. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thanks for all your uh, hard work, ma'am. So that's our director, Josh Marshall, uh, always putting together um, all the information and, uh, and and doing the technical directing. So uh, there was a lot of lightning right there. We're going to bring up Weather 3 here real quick. And this is our Gaither Mountain Weatherbug Network camera. Some of those lightning flashes, not really seeing any structure associated with it. It's a little bit south of the camera, but you can definitely see some of the lightning flashes off in the distance. Uh, we're pointing almost straight south now with that camera as uh, we're getting a little bit better of a view of the cell as it comes in. Just it, Zach and Peyton and, and uh, Josh, it's just tough to monitor these storms at night, especially as you're spotting trying to track the latest and uh it's just tough to do yeah so you can big see some flash of the lightning. right there big flash yeah mm. still some intense lightning and lightning is uh not decreasing at all that's definitely a sign that you've got uh intense supercell the camera move it over just a little bit here let's hey, Dan, see I'm starting to, i pushed up a little bit further i can see the uh the, the base of the storm right now oh you can uh, okay yeah, about where the uh, where the circulation would be is probably just be about coming into view of where I'm at. I've got a uh, there's a large observation tower up here that kind of blocks my view, so I'm going to sit here and watch it. But I've got a good view; I can see the base of it now. Oh, I see it on the left hand side of your stream. Yeah, you see that. You see that. Uh, I don't know. If, yeah, you can see it probably in the flashes. There's a tower right there. Uh, I I would guess the circulation's about right behind that, about to come into view. On the left-hand side of your screen, right? On the stream? Yeah, correct. Okay. Correct. Gotcha. And then that's a fence off in the distance that's at ground level. So, Yeah, I'm sitting up about uh, – well, there's a good uh, CG right there. I'm sitting about 2,100 feet or so. Uh, just on the other side of that fence is a pretty, pretty uh, sheer drop-off. So I've got a good long view here. Gotcha. Yeah, we're continuing to watch these storms and, and cells uh, 
trying to look at the stream here uh, with with the sweeping radar, but I don't see it. Jasper needs to be taking their tornado precautions. Uh, I was just talking to Les Murphy, and uh, you could hear the sirens going off in the distance. Uh, watching that cell, maybe a little bit of a weakening of the low-level circulation on the last radar image. You can kind of see that off in the distance. Zach, why don't you take us through a storm track real quick as uh, we continue to monitor. If we could do a two-box with uh, Zach and then also have uh, the uh, Weather 2 stream, uh, which is uh, Cody Hudson's feed, uh, and take us through exactly where this storm continues to be tracking. Hey, Dan, yeah, so if we can take weather one, I have a fresh storm track. You can see Cody Huston's feed right there. He's looking north at that storm. You really can't see much right now. You can only see things when that lightning flashes. It is, it is dark and it is cloudy, and we are seeing this supercell pass through. And Jasper, I, you have about a couple minutes before this storm is right on you. So you need to be in your safe place right now. Take your tornado precautions. This storm is barreling down at you. We're under a life-threatening tornado warning. I got a fresh track. You can see that track if you take weather one. Let's go ahead storm, and bring that up full. This yeah, storm is going to be, yes, yes, take it up full. It's going to be in the Jasper area in, a, in about probably less than one minute. This track is about one minute old. And then beyond that, it's going to be impacting Flatwoods. Hasty 250 in the morning. Yardell around 254. Union Church 301. That's a bit outside the warning, but again, this this storm has, has been rotating for a very long time, and right now we're under a tornado warning. It's going to be in effect until three o'clock in the morning, Jasper area. This storm is about to be right over you. We can see the latest circulation scan. If we can take Mega Doppler, I think that's loaded up on weather too. It is now. We yeah. we can show you that um, velocity couplet. Now it's just to the west of Jasper. Storm is moving fast, moving around 50 miles per hour to the east. And Jasper, you need to be in your tornado safe place right now. Beyond that, it's going to be making its way further east. Again, we're in Newton County. Taking a closer look, I could probably plot some roads for you. If you are in, if you were in the area of this storm, it, it is heading right for you. This is a tornado warning. We're in Newton County, Jasper. It's going to be right over top of you. Probably, if 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 it if it already isn't, it's going to be over you in like one minute. Beyond that, Western Grove is on the far eastern fringes of this tornado warning. And here's the reflectivity. You can definitely see this strong storm making its way through Newton County. Uh, hey Zach, I want to bring up real quick Gaither Mountain. Got an amazing view of the base here. Uh, let's see if we can get it again. Uh, so some several lightning flashes as the storm gets a little bit closer. This is going to be one of our uh, basically best views besides Cody Hudson's stream. Um, and uh, there you see again that Weatherbug Network camera looking south. Lightning flashes. If we want to get a kind of a reference where this is at, again this is Weather Three. Uh, we're looking from Gaither Mountain, which is in southwest Boone County, straight south on that cell. Did get to see a little bit of the base. You can see the clouds moving as well as I appear on the screen. But you'll notice here right off in the distance, there's that low-level base and also the storm motion that continues to race off to the east. So I'll step out of the way so I don't block anything in case we get a view of some lightning. Um, and uh, I'll continue to monitor this. Don't want to there was one flash that lit up the entire sky and you can see that base off in the distance. So there's definitely a ragged base with this storm. Did not see any type of uh, tornado extending down. Now it is obviously late at night, so we don't know exactly what's happening underneath the, the radar. Um, but uh, sometimes you get, uh, you know, circulations that do touch down and they don't get confirmed, especially at night. So continuing to monitor this activity, but uh, we'll see, we'll let this go a little bit longer and then uh, we'll do another storm track on this. So uh, there's a look at, again. All right, Dan, I just got a pretty good view of a little uh, of a lowering. Okay. Uh, it's not too much of a lowering, but uh, just Latin kind of seems to have died down a little bit, but there's definitely a lowering in that base. It looks like it's directly over uh, just north of Jasper. We still have your stream up here. I think that's yeah, it. Let me, let me Did you in. zoom in a little bit? Some, yeah, let me let me get positioned because I'm at a kind of at an angle right now. Okay. So let me get get turned here. There's definitely a, a pretty good 
heavy rain uh, base, it looked like, too. All right, this is one so of our me, storm spotters, Cody Hudson. And... Yeah. I don't know. Is that his live stream here? Yeah, we're still showing that. But I'm not seeing a whole lot of lightning. Have you seen any flashes recently? It, you talking to me, Dan? Yeah. Uh, no, yes and no. It's definitely – it's definitely died down versus what it was 10 minutes ago. But uh, that lowering should be about middle of my stream, maybe to the right, just a little bit, just above. It would be above that fence that, where that fence is at. All right, let's see here. We can see you moving now as uh, you're getting into better position. It's just, just kind of, yeah, yeah, kind of tilt down so we know we can at least see a, a fence line. And uh, yeah, see, I, I tilted it down. So I just, well, but there we go. We'll see you delay. zooming in a little bit. It's kind of tough to see, obviously. I don't want to step in front of the wall just so I don't want to block anything. But I think this storm might be on a weakening trend, and hopefully that's the case. Right now it's moving east of Jasper. Uh, Western Grove still in the path of this storm as it continues to move eastward. Hey, uh, go ahead and mute my microphone. Uh, I've got uh, Les Murphy calling right now. So. Yeah, so looking at the latest velocity scan, definitely seeing a little bit more broad of a rotation signature. So if we can take Mega Doppler on Weather 2, we can look at that. We can definitely see the circulation is definitely becoming a bit more broad. And you can see here's Weather 1. We, we got the storm track up. So again, we're in Newton County. This, this storm is making its way. Right now, it's kind of starting to depart from the Jasper area. Still, if you're in the Jasper area, you need to be in your safe place, but this storm is going to be making its way towards the Western Grove area. So um, we're in Newton County. This uh, tornado warning is going to be in effect until three o'clock in the morning. So if I can get this track on there, you can see it right there. So the storm is moving, moving pretty quickly. It's moving at about 50 miles per hour towards the east. And it's going to be heading down towards Yardell at about 2.54 in the morning. Beyond that, Western Grove at around 2.58. So on the eastern fringes of this tornado warning, we have Western Grove. And... Here's, here's Mega Doppler. I got Mega Doppler up right now. So here's the latest velocity scan. Might have weakened a little bit. We can kind of see the circulation being a bit more broad, but we're smack dab in the middle of Newton County, making its way towards the Western Grove area. So Jasper, kind of on the western edge of the of the circulation, is still not out of the woods yet. You need to be in your safe place if you're in, if you're in Jasper. But Western Grove, you need to get ready for, for this storm. It is going to be heading your way. And, again, it's moving pretty quickly. It's, uh, it's going to be entering a pretty rural area pretty soon. Um, can plot some roads if you were in the area. There's a latest velocity scan, and that might even be a bit more tighter. So we can do a double box here showing the reflectivity on the left and the velocity on the right. And the circulation definitely seems to be pretty tight. So, again, this is a tornado warning, radar indicator rotation. And this storm looks to be headed right towards Western Grove. So it should be there at a little bit before 3 o'clock in the morning. So I think we just got another tornado warning. Um, let me get a data set up, and I can take you to that. Yeah, then. New tornado warning, Boone, Newton, and of course, Cersei and Marion County as well. He can unmute me now. Yeah, so that's going to be on. Um, just talking to Les Murphy, he says that uh, uh, Jasper fared no problem, uh, but there's a look at that new tornado warning till 3 30, and there it is for the Western Grove area. And what's interesting is that uh, the other yeah, radar data uh, not showing up on some of the reflectivity. So we're still having those issues with some of the radar uh, areas not loading up. Let's see if uh, Little Rocks is loading up. Yeah, Little Rocks down too, huh? In terms of radar down. Yes. All right. Well, in the meantime, I'm going to see if we can see anything on the Weather 3 stream. So let's go ahead and we'll bring up Weather 2 if we can. We'll look at our Weatherbug network camera. Uh, looking off of the distance, 
These are where storms typically ramp up as they get east of the terrain. And when they start to get now into the uh, flatter part of the valley of northeastern Newton County, as they make their way into southeastern Boone County, that's where those storms really start to ramp up. So this is Gaither Mountain looking southeast from Harrison. Boy, you can definitely see that cell off in the distance. This is the first time we're able to see the structure. And lighting is definitely on the increase. So uh, this is a storm that we can't. We can't, you know, let our guard down on this one. Neither can you in the Western Grove area. And we do have. Yeah, uh, and I've got a good view towards yeah. Western Grove, and it, it the rain has definitely increased. So, if, if anything were to touch down, it's definitely going to be rain wrapped. It's there, be rain wrapped. There's yeah. just there's too much rain right now. Yeah. Wow. You can see the updraft, though. Man, that is wild. Look at that from our Gaither Mountain. That, that's those new cameras that I was uh, wanting to see. Yeah, that's the isolated cells, and this is exactly why we've got one. Thanks to Jason Briscoe for uh, setting up this. But, yeah, that, that circulation is still showing up, and uh, sometimes they can really ramp up when they get – you know that, Cody, better than anybody. As they make their way through the terrain, they start getting the unimpeded flow and the flatter landscape. Those tornadoes can oh, really start to ramp it, up. And it seems to be the same track every time, too, you know. Down east of Madison County, over Boxley, towards Ponca, towards Jack. It seems to be the same track every time. Yeah, absolutely. So Cody Hudson, one of our storm spotters, as uh, he's been monitoring these storms and tracking. Jasper's okay, though. But, yeah, that circulation still showing up pretty tight as well. So uh, we'll continue to monitor the latest. Don't want to lose our Weatherbug Network camera from Gaither Mountain. Uh, we'll watch this a little bit more because this is sometimes – you can tell a lot by the storm just visually on what you're looking at in terms of what the rotation looks like visually, a uh, wall cloud if there is one, lower cloud base if it's rain wrapped. Uh, but that is uh, definitely not easy to spot the lowering, that's for sure. And you mentioned that that is definitely the case uh, with this cell. Circulation is ramping up though, Zach. We got a fresh storm track on there. Let's go ahead and we'll I'll bring up weather one if we can, but also keep that weather camera in the uh, in the view if we can in a two box so we can get a storm track on that. Okay, Zach. Hey, Dan. Yeah, I got that storm track up right now. So at Western Grove, this storm is going to be in your area um, in less than five minutes. So maybe even as little as three minutes. So you need to be in your safe spot in your safe spot right now. This storm is making its way east um, quickly at around 50 miles per hour, kind of taking more of a northeasterly track actually, and is heading right towards Western Grove. So if you're in Newton County, Boone County, and you are un and if you are in this red polygon, you need to be in your safe place right now. This tornado warning is going until 3.30 a.m. this morning. Radar indicated rotation with this life-threatening tornado warning. And again, Western Grove, this storm is headed right to you. So that's the storm track beyond Western Grove. Going to be moving into Duggar at around 258, Yellville 316. Beyond that, Marion County Regional at around 324. But that circulation is definitely pretty tight. So I can mega Doppler up on weather one. You can see it right there. So we got a double box. We got on the on the left, we have the reflectivity. On the right, we have the velocity. And just to the southwest of Western Grove, we have that tight velocity couplet, and that's making its way right towards Western Grove. So we can take velocity full, and we got a really good view of that couplet. Maybe to check out our tornado detector and see if that shows anything. Still pretty high up, you know, Still, in terms yeah. of that uh, radar beam. But look at the normalized rotation. You can definitely see a signature yeah. right to Whoa. the southwest of Western Grove. You can see an inflow tail, too, on our Weatherbug Network camera. So uh, I want you to bring me up on Aux 3 when you can here real quick. Uh, oh, yeah, that circulation definitely ramping up, which is typically what happens as they make their way east. So if you bring me up on camera one on Aux 3, this is our Weatherbug Network camera from Gaither Mountain. Some of the things to show you here. Uh, first of all, uh, you'll notice an inflow tail. This is where you have that inflow that's starting to move in uh, to the area. But that's a look at, you can see kind of a little bit of an inflow tail. The lowering that's associated with it would be underneath that. 
Sporadic lightning flashes will let you see that activity, um, but uh, that's kind of what we're looking at here. There you go. You get to see some of that inflow. And the circulation really ramping up, but I'll step out of the way here so you can see that again from our AUX-3. Very impressive lightning activity from Gaither Mountain and gives you a good idea of what that storm looks like. Circulation ramping up too as well. Is Little Rock radar still down, Peyton, as yeah. far as the data is it, concerned? It's Man. still down. down. My Man. goodness. That's an unfortunate time for that to happen. Springfield is down as well. Springfield and Little Rock would be the closest radars. It's kind of in that radar hole, but thankfully Fort Smith is still up. Gotcha. Yeah, circulation still showing up for sure. Shows sure a pretty strong gate to gate shear here. See if we can see anything visually. Just got a brand new scan. Ramping up even more. It's hard to tell because it's, it's, it's so high up. Yeah. And it's moving to that range folded area. But Western Grove, you need to be in your safe place right now. And then beyond that, Valley Springs, Everton. Wow, yeah, you can really see that, can't you? Impressive supercell. Not seeing any power flashes underneath. That's good news. That tells you, well, one, we don't know for sure, but uh, if you see power flashes, you can definitely confirm something on the ground. We're not seeing that, though, so that's good news. Hopefully. Circulation is definitely there, so, yeah, we really need to watch that. Now, good news is, is this is going to be uh, moving out of Newton County. Bad news is it's still going to be in northwestern Searcy County and then make its way into uh, Marion County as well as Baxter. So we're going to watch all that activity that's going to be making its way east. Again, the severe thunderstorm uh, that's uh, prompted a tornado warning going to be for uh, – Marion County and Southern Marion, Marion County, getting out of our weather coverage area. And then after that, some additional cells that are popping up, a little bit of lightning. Don't see a whole lot of activity with them. Maybe an isolated supercell is trying to develop in Madison County. Uh, we'll have to watch that one. Not exactly positive if that will end up uh, prompting more tornado potential. Probably not. So that's our weather bug network camera from Gaither Mountain. If you're just tuning in, hearing this in the morning, got a storm rolling over you. Can see some visuals of, of this, but uh, not clear cut case with this supercell. All right, Zach, send it on back to you. You'll uh, take us through the tornado warning and then put a new storm track on that as we continue to monitor the latest. Yeah, Dan, just put a brand new track on that storm. So, again, we're looking at um, this tornado warning is in effect till 3 30 a.m. And the counties that are in our forecast area that are included in this warning are Boone and Newton County. The storm is making its way from Boone County up, or actually from Newton County up into Boone County. So storm is moving fast, so around 50 miles per hour to the east. And again, if you are in the red polygon, I cannot stress it enough. You need to be in your safe place right now. This is a life-threatening tornado warning in effect till 3.30 a.m. this morning. And it's going to be in the Davis Church area, actually, right now. So if you were in that area, get in your safe place. Beyond that, Duggar at around 2.56 a.m. this morning. Yellville around 3.14. And then Marion County Regional at around 3.22. So it's kind of in a radar hole now because we're, we're entering the Little Rock area and that radar is down. So we're looking at the Fort Smith radar. Here's the reflectivity. You can, you can see this storm making its way to the northeast, kind of making a more of a northeasterly track. And again, if you were in this red polygon, I cannot stress it enough. This is a tornado warning, radar indicated rotation. You need to, to take your tornado precautions right now. It was going to be in the Yellville area around 314. Beyond that, Marion County Regional around 322. So this is the reflectivity. So if you go to the velocity, we can see that circulation making its way through Western Grove. And it's about to enter an area where we see some range folding. So that's not a good spot to be. But the storm is moving from Newton County up into Boone County on this northeasterly track. Pretty soon, as Dan mentioned, it is going to be out of the forecast area. 
But as of right now, portions of Boone and Newton County are still under a tornado warning. And that's why we are on TV. And here is a brand new scan. And it looks a little bit better on the Mega Doppler. So I can bring that up. You got it right there. Um, circulation seems to be to the north of Pindle. Um, so again, um, the main circulation looks to be to the east of Western Grove, making its way to the north of Pendle. Keep in mind, we are way high up in the atmosphere here with this radar return. So um, where it is at the surface is going to be a little bit different. So if you're in the Western Grove area, the Pendle area, you need to be in your safe spot right now. The storm is making its way to the northeast. Everton, you need to be in your safe spot. Beyond that, Yaleville you need to be in your safe spot as well. So, Hey, Zach. Yeah, just, Dan? Just wanted to let you know, I got a report here from a ham radio operator. Terry Atwood's been monitoring and talking to ham traffic. Says that the storm actually went a little slightly north of Western Grove. That's what we've got from the report. So uh, that is slightly to the north from the Western Grove area. But look at that weather bug network camera. Still showing, though, that base off of the distance as well as the supercell thunderstorm that prompted the tornado warning. And so it looks like here, here's another report coming out, reports hail intermittent. So we have a little bit of small hail that's happening, strong sheets of rain and gusts and intermittent wind. So that's a live report here from the Western Grove area. We also have Alexis too, that's a frequent visitor on our Facebook Live. She's in the Western Grove area. And uh, I know she's always concerned about storms. Uh, Josh, are we seeing anything from her? Anything that she mentions at all on uh, on that social media stream? Uh, Wonder if we're seeing that from uh, from Alexis. Yeah, because um, I know she's wondering about that. Mentioned earlier around two fifty one, uh, the the winds were getting crazy around there. Yeah. Um, oh, nothing really. Just a few minutes ago. Yeah, nothing really after that. All righty. Well, I think these storms are starting to wind down and beginning to move out of the area. I do want to take a wide view. Yeah, look at that off in the distance. You can really see that base. Uh, every time lightning happens, I'm standing in the way of it. So I'm going to get out of the way. We'll see if we catch one more flash. It gives you a good idea of the storm structure. After that, uh, we're going to take a look at the wide view of the radar. There are additional storms that are moving into Newton County. However, they are not severe. They probably already overworked the environment, and the storms are starting to weaken. So early morning here, folks, 3 a.m. now um, on this Tuesday, April 2nd. And I'm driving down to Fort Smith in a few hours uh, to talk about the total solar eclipse of the Fort Smith Lions Club. So, uh, Zach, I'm going to need some uh, some of that caffeine. <laughs> to, <laughs> yeah, to might want to wanna start drinking coffee. Yeah, so uh, – I think this storm's starting to move out, even though the tornado warning officially includes southeastern Boone County and southeastern northeastern Newton County. It's pretty much out of the area. So I don't think we're going to have to deal with uh, tornado coverage anymore for this. we got additional cells that are moving out. We're going to return you back to programming. So that's the end of our severe weather coverage. We'll for wrap it up and finish it up online as well uh, for those that are still monitoring and watching weather conditions. But first of all, thank you so much for the reports. Thank you for watching your Weather Authority team. Keep it here with your Weather Authority team, and we will keep you advised. Thank you, Zach and Peyton in the Weather Lab. Uh, we'll send it on back to programming. Uh, Cody Hudson calling again. Let me go ahead and get one real fast. What up, man? So we just got off the air. Um, let me stand by. Yep, we got it. Yeah, so we're still tracking storms. Um, the severe potential seems to be dying down. 
again, we're tracking still tornado warning. The storm seems to be moving out of the forecast area. That's why we dropped off TV. But Peyton, as we expand the view, there is still some activity off to our west. Yeah, you can go ahead and show them that. Yeah, so there's still some more storms. We're not yet done this evening. We're looking at Madison County, the Witter area, St. Paul area. Now, these storms are not severe, but we're still seeing some activity on this early Tuesday morning. Now it's 3 o'clock in the morning. So we had a tornado warning. It is moving out of the area. That's why we dropped off the air. And be, besides that, pretty quiet. So we got some activity in Madison County making its way east, but those are not severe. Zach needs a, a back rub here. Yeah, for some reason, my neck is kind of getting I, a little bit tight. I know, me too, man. <laughs> me too. Yeah. All right. Well, here's the deal, man. I think we're going to wrap it up. Oh, my goodness. So, yeah. So, basically, long story short, they were close to tornadoing. Might have done it in eastern, southeastern Washington County. I think there might have been something maybe that briefly touched down there. If not, it was really, really, really close. But uh, what's happening here? <laughs> I'm just messing. Yeah, this is some of those damage from, like, the Garfield area. Whoa. Well, that's a shed, though, huh? Yeah, it's like a mobile home and a tree was uprooted. Wow. That was uh, from Ryan. Ryan Lemery? Yeah. Boy. Ah, so uh, this is Melvin. Um, I'm very sure it just went north of Western Grove. Yep, it did. Just north. So, anyways. All right, guys. Well, man, radar going down. Technical issues. Um. Lots of uh, storms that, that were tornado warned and kind of doing it uh, one man band in the, in the director's uh, booth in the, in the control room. So, yeah, we were pretty lucky because Missouri had tornado warnings, but no data for over two hours. <sighs> yeah. yeah. Little Rock went down at like 12, 25. Yeah. And they haven't been back up since. Uh, we were pretty much the only two radar sites <laughs> in the entire South that were still up and running. <laughs> That's a God thing. That's uh, lucky right there. Wow. 4,000 people still watching? <laughs> what? Good okay. Is that, is that right? <laughs> I think so. Eclipse coverage? Yeah. Hey, you know what? <laughs> Barbara, check this out. This is for you that are still on here waiting for what the cloud cover forecast looks like. <laughs> We're going to get the new uh, Zero Z model data. Huh? Yeah. See if it's Let's check this out, and then we're going to shut it down, man. Gosh, i got to get up before you know it. I've got to drive down to Fort Smith. i got to put on a Eclipse presentation for the Fort Smith Lions Club. Well, if anybody can do it, you can do it. Good old Marty. Don't even go to sleep. Just keep going. No, Honestly, you can't I'm do that. At this point. You can't do that. I feel like it'd be a 10 uh, I can't, Barbara, right now message you. But uh, but I can hear just a little bit. Um, well, I don't know. I'll be, I'll barely be able to find you on social media. That's just the way Facebook works. I don't know what's going on. Morning in the UK, Leslie. Well, morning here. It's eight o'clock over there. Yeah. About Storm is weakening. Yeah, it's pretty much done. It's moving into Yellville right now. But uh, let's check it out. New model data. I haven't seen this. You haven't seen this. Nobody's seen this. So, yeah, no. <laughs> so here's a look at uh, the cloud cover. There's the storm. We know it's going to rain on April seventh, but hopefully this gets out of here. Hey. Okay, hold on. We're moving along. Oh, what? Oh. We might have to get north of that. Yeah. Ohio? No. So Kentucky. Uh, we might have, might go to the Missouri Boot Hill. Uh, yeah. Who knows? It's still a ways out. That's not a far drive. I'll do that. 
Good morning from Ohio. Hey, what's up, Karen? Hey. I want to be in Ohio today. today. There's two oh, yeah, pretty today. serious yeah. severe thunderstorm yeah, warnings. You need to be weather aware today, Karen, in just a couple of hours. Yeah. Man. Well, look at the latest risk here. I haven't even looked at it. Wow. Seattle. Better watch them from all over. How about that? So, anyways, there's the eclipse coverage. Uh, and you'll notice here, 1 p.m. Gosh, why is it always going to be so close? So, that's the newest one. And it brings quite a bit of cloud cover along the track in the south. What's the DFS today on that? That's what we're looking at here. Nope, radar outage is not, not improving. improving. Probably a lot of conspiracies already on Twitter. <laughs> Weather Twitter. I saw someone earlier that were like, Houston, we have a problem. But like, Houston like... was one of the few that is still up. That's, <laughs> yeah. All right, so here is Sunday. There's the low. Oh, get out of here. Kick out of here. Get out of here. No. That's not back um, wrap around. So. Hey. Oh. We could have. Oh my goodness! Getting dry slot. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Perhaps. Not the model showing a dry slot. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, that's a low. Nah. I don't know. If it could be that, actually is better now. So the GFS is better. The European's not. When before a European was better, and the GFS was not. So who knows? It's garbage. Flip flop and like still second. Check Houston, Texas. It is clear. So, flip a coin. That's what it'll be. That's the uh, totality area, by the way. Hey, we have a Yellville viewer, Dan. Keith yeah. Wilkerson. Okay. I live in Yellville with a tornado warning. I can't get any news. So, there's no more. Um, the warning should be dropping off here pretty soon. Let's switch radars. Oh, I can't, right? I was gonna say, yeah. Can I do no. any of the Springfield? It's no. down. That one's Springfield's been down. down. That one's been down for almost two hours now. Yeah. Well, Heath, this is Most what you got, man. That's it. It's a little tiny cell. But uh, it, it looks like this is going to be getting dropped, essentially. You know what we can do, though? Let's play around. Yeah. That's not. Why aren't those updating, man? That is annoying. All right. Back to weather three here. Say this, I'll say this, that thing definitely had a run for its money. Man, that was a supercell, wasn't it? Yep. Oh, how embarrassing was that poll? On the on the TV, it looked it looked like you could see the opposite contrast. Oh, I know exactly what you were seeing. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you, like, though. They were like, that's, that's a poll. You know what's funny is uh, that that happened to me before. Not that, but do you remember the water tower, like over the summer? Yeah, that water tower that looked like a wedge. Yeah. Hating that Joker story. What the? So here's. No go. Oh yeah, SLP scary looking pole. Yeah. Yeah, scary looking pole. That was good. Uh, it did look scary. I like that. It's a SLP. SLP is sea level pressure. <laughs> no, well, SLC is a scary looking cloud, and the SLP is a scary looking pole. Um, Perry County, so Southern Illinois, got a tornado warning till three fifteen. There will also be a comet on the same night. Yeah, the comet. Uh, I'm gonna have to check that out because I might be able to see that. Um, Let's look at the the risk for you guys in Ohio since you guys are still on here. But yeah, I'll be watching this weather close to tomorrow because my brother and his yeah comment twelve p by the way. So there's no way to know what uh, what's going to be happening with the eclipse at this point. There just isn't. But let's look at the risk. We know that we can check that out, and then we're going to shut it down. We got to get going. But boy, thank you so much for watching. My goodness. Yeah. A lot of, at three in the morning, everybody's going to be dragging B U T T tomorrow morning. Including <laughs> M E. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'll get enough rest if NATO lets me sleep. All right. So there it is. 
Oh, they extend, they uh, extended the moderate mm -hmm. down the uh, into Kentucky. Cincinnati, WKRP. It's Cincinnati. Don't call it the Cincinnati Reds. Nope. Nothing. Yeah, there's the Reds right there. So there is a look at the risk. That's a moderate. We'll see if everything comes to fruition or if this is uh, kind of weakens. 15% tour makes its way all the way down through Tennessee, well as northern. That's a big deal, man. Northern Alabama, northeastern Mississippi, and northwestern Georgia. That is a uh, pretty big 10%. That's huge. That is. Wow. It's got to be one of the, the wind? larger ones I've seen. Oh. Yeah, wind and hail are both at 30. I think this is going to be oh. an afternoon, evening event. Yeah, I honestly really don't know. Yeah. There's a large hail risk. I think one of the models earlier, like they triple R showed a bunch of supercells leaving Indianapolis into Ohio around 00Z. Zero, zero, well, we do have a lot of people on here. There's a couple things I want to mention before we shut it down. Is number one, how many of you are going to see the total solar eclipse? Let me know. Yeah, if we're going to try. My hand's raised off the screen. How many times have you seen a total solar eclipse? I would love to know that as well. Because I heard Mike Bettis do a story, said one out of 10,000 people see a total solar eclipse. Really? That's about how rare they are. Well, we got one in five. I'd say that's pretty good odds. Oh, I've never seen one. I haven't either. Y'all? Nope. Um, there you go. That's one in five. Now, does it count? Uh, Marshalls? No. No, no. no, no. Do, does it count? Weak sauce. <laughs> does it count if it's if it's cloudy and you're in the path of to totality? No. I'd say no. No. Because you miss you miss the event. I heard there's like a shadow. I, I think it still counts. Nope. Yeah. Nope. You don't get. <laughs> they don't get to see the glow when it like instantaneously. What? That's like when you're lifting and you have half-hearted do a set does that count i wouldn't know you wouldn't know you wouldn't know it because you do that <laughs> oh, man. um but anyways so that's one thing i want to let you know is that a total solar eclipse is amazing if you can get to see it uh hopefully a cloud cover aren't going to be an issue yes you're in indiana going to get hit with storms potentially the risk is a uh, is definitely Indiana and Ohio. Hopefully that fizzles. I don't know. They'll probably have more than we did yeah. because of the terrain difference. Whew. Just Tennessee in here. Yeah, Indiana is kind of on the western fringe of this. Should be dropping that warning here soon. I keep forgetting that there's a camera active on these, so when it keeps flashing, I'm like, what is that? Uh, so Jeffrey says, seeing a total lunar eclipse. That's like um, seven out of ten, in my opinion. Electric out here. I don't think I've ever seen one. A, a lunar eclipse? Uh, maybe they're, one. I've that, seen like three lunar eclipses. They're okay. Total solar eclipse though is like ten thousand. I think wasn't there one um, in two thousand seventeen? No, a lunar eclipse, 2015. Oh, there's a lot of them. We have lunar one. eclipses happen all the time. I'm pretty sure I saw one. I don't, I don't know if it was total. We had a lunar eclipse the weekend of the 24th and the 25th. Uh, just... Fayetteville will be able to see a partial eclipse and only a partial eclipse. You won't see anything more than that, unfortunately. It'll you be... got to get to the path of totality. It'll get dark, but it's not the same. It won't get as dark as you think, though, to be honest with you. Yeah, it's, it's like kind of that grayish tint, right? Yeah. Everything is closed because of the eclipse on Monday. So you saw one in 2017, but did you get to totality, not just a partial? If you saw a totality, then you're probably going uh, crazy because you know, hey, I want to check this out. So that's number one. There's a look at the path of totality. You can see it over northwest Arkansas, missing northwest Arkansas. But anywhere within that shaded area, 
that's where you have the totality. That's the shadow of the moon. We're less than a week out, and the forecast is iffy. So we're going to have to continue to watch that. I really hope that it clears up. I really do, too. That would be amazing. Got solar filters for my camera, and I was like, I can't use it. (laughs) I know. The last few days, I haven't been able to test anything out with the sun. Um, So it continues northeast. There's Illinois, southern Illinois. Yeah, everyone's clear from the storm. There's some isolated storms that are out west, but yeah, these aren't these aren't anything to worry about. Honestly, this tornado warning is probably going to drop off too. And that's out of our weather coverage area, Marion County, as it moves into Baxter County. But there's a look at uh, totality as it runs through Indianapolis, Cleveland. Buffalo, Watertown, Burlington, yeah, and continues northeast. Maybe we need to go to St. John's. Pretty sore when you do deadlift your car. Right. It feels like it. Go up there. Sure, it feels like it right now. Here. I, mean, I got hey. I'm squats in right now. It there feels like what? Clock in, clock well, out. I, I, didn't, clock out, clock I didn't stop uh, for like four straight hours. Like I was just going. You never got out of your car? Never got out of the car. Oh yeah, yeah you're but, but I mean, I had, to, I had to stay in the car to keep up with everything. Yeah, it was everything was pretty fast. Yeah, and with the with the road network like we have, we got Josh Rugger in. We saw four thousand people on the stream. You know, by the way, if you typically watch the morning show, I'm gonna have the same tie on. It's the same exact tie I had on yesterday. I have not brushed my hair since yesterday morning, so you got uh, nice calic action. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so oh, enjoy. <laughs> Enjoy. Well, you can't fight them, Calix. You can't. No, they're They're undefeated. They'll fight back. They're like Nick Saban. They're like the Nick Saban of Nick Nick Saban of (laughs) this hilarious. Now we've got this whole house. Okay, so last thing, Al. How about this, man? The weather mafia right here. The weather posse. Hey, look. Hey, don't don't mess with family. This this my family. You bust. You busted my. You know what? (laughs) Hey. I'm going to get a text phone call from a mafia member. Uh-oh. I'm going to get a text from, like, the garbage. My bad. Disposal thing. Well, <laughs> maybe you'll get a text or call from Weather Call Next Gen. That's well, my last thing here. That's my last segment. You uh, need to talk to them. Yep. What happened. Yeah, find yeah, out there, why there, there it was wasn't. Than, there was more than just one comment. Yeah. Uh, saying that it wasn't working. Calls, yeah. but no message. Okay. Yeah. So we got to work on the message. We will. But. You got the call. That's one step. And we'll give you the message. But it provides up to the minute phone calls, text, emails to keep you safe during severe weather. There's a way to sign up if you just go to knwa.com and then go to the weather tab. And uh, it really is good. It's a good service. Yeah. But yeah, the, the message that should be a recorded message, maybe something went, went bad on that. My two favorite things is that it only calls you if you're in the polygon. Mm-hmm. So normally when they issue warnings, they'll just say like, for example, Washington, Madison County, like a storm moving through there. If you're only in the polygon, that's when it will alert you. So if you're outside the polygon, you won't get that alert, uh, which means that's you know, huge. there's no threat. You don't want to get big. a call if there's no threat. Obviously, you don't want to just be woken up. And they give you the all clear call, too. That so, is that's, that's one of the huge. most important things. Yeah, so if you're in shelter or whatever your safe space is, you want to know if it's all clear? I'll tell you when it's all clear. I'll show you something here, and then we'll shut this down. So if we go to six hours here, go back to the radar. So let me give you an instance here where weather call would call you, but the weather radio, you know, would go off, but weather call wouldn't call you. So let's say right here, severe tornado warning. Okay, here's a tornado warning issued for southeastern. Washington County at 1.35 in the morning. Well, Springdale, Fayetteville, uh, Cincinnati, uh, Evansville, Dutch Mills, uh, Sonora, Springdale, Tawny Town, you're all getting a weather radio to go off because it clips the weather county. Just again, this was earlier this morning. This is not right now. Yeah, this is 1.35. For anyone fading in and out of sleep. Yeah. (laughs) 
However, weather call would let you know, and it would call you only if you're in, in the path of that polygon warning. So it tells you that while you're not going to for sure get impacted, like uh, St. Paul, for instance, was a little south of the storm, it still is very close and too close for comfort. And the email send you live radar updates too, as well as lightning. Ooh, like that. Like that. <laughs> that was a big, big, uh, big, a flash. big flash. Yeah, that warning's about to drop. I should have been recording. There really wasn't much to see, though, was what? there? Yeah, uh, it was it was okay. a whole structure. Once it, I, uh, it was okay. You saw the SLP. Yep. Yeah, scary looking pool. <laughs> a lot of structure. All right. All right, guys. Well, we're going to wrap it up. I know you got to get to forecasting. Um, I got to go. Got to get to. What time is your talk? 11.30, but an hour drive. Oh, well, lucky you. It's not bad. Why? Wyatt? What oh, wait. No, I got to take my son to school. Oh. Wyatt's got school. That's in. Uh, Wyatt's going to get ready for school in an hour and a half. Three hours. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh. Oh. Everybody's going to be still up after this. Does the storm exactly. also move too? Uh, yes. Exactly. The weather rate, the weather service will update the polygon as it tracks to the southeast. That's a wicked light. That is. Wow. It may not be constant, but it is good. What a weird system. Well, we'll send we'll we'll, we'll send it off with that. How about that? Yeah. This was a weird system. It's like barely any lightning, and then it ramp up and go away. Just it's just because it's of the positive, positive tilts. It's positive tilt, man. Yep. Positive tilts or chair rash. All right, guys. Well, thank you for watching. Really, really appreciate you guys being on here. Have a good morning, and we'll see you later on today. Josh, we'll see you in, in about an hour and a half. If, you, Heck yeah. <laughs> if you're still watching. Woo! I don't blame you for that. <laughs> All right. See you guys later. We'll, we'll let you uh, watch a few more lightning strikes.